moves in mysterious ways. Like the CS2 movement. And they can't even get that right, can they? There's the flash, that's gonna catch Crims out, they're gonna push on through. MBK gets one, but Crims with the spray down! He gets himself the triple! To get you, you know the way it will spread. Man, 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 man. Miss so Dredd. Da, 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 da. Okay, okay. I don't have time to talk to some deadbeat, salt of the dirt, water guy. <laughs> oh. The rabbit on the sourdough was exceptional. Catch all of the constantly happening CS here. It's all here, and it's all CS, always. Congratulations, Mr. Nafli. Support and quiet for the And he's ending world never fight. Never fight. I can't understand it. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Get down, boy. Oh, Captain, my Captain. All good, bro. Chill out. Do you sacrifice? Because the team was functioning really, really well. Why do you do this? I just keep jumping, 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 and looking, and looking, and Can I just take, can someone take a photo of my face? Is that, is that all we're doing here? Right, and a right is one that is afforded to all. Should age determine expectation? Breath. Or well, breaking bad. Okay. But did you know the fake flash play has a long and storied history? Day off. Mm -hmm. Wrong answer. Start doing push ups. Hello? Come one, come all to the annual ESL Butt League! Welcome back to CS Psychology 101. A figure jumps through the smoke. Delta! Art unloads the Bald man bad. Yeah. What the fuck? How the fuck else would you do this job? Monster energy and bananas, my friend. But you don't have to remain unsatisfied. FPS dysfunction is nothing to be ashamed about. So ask your... Warm it up. How long? Yeah. yeah. You gonna tell me that this game is ready? I never said that. Let, let's hear about this tournament and we'll see. I beat your way. Hey guys, what's up? Hey bro, nothing much. Why are you even here? 23 for party! Hey, hey, hey! Talking of inappropriate, why don't we finally release the sex tape? Oh, oh. To get this number one spot. Я думаю, я не знаю, но не понимаю, что сказать на английском. Я не понимаю. Thank you very much, Shira. Thank you for your time. It's an absolute catastrophe. Why so serious? I'm just gonna slot this in here. Look at the whole thing. Beautiful. Alex, hello, hello. You a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Investment. Those ah! skins, they're okay. Socks aside to who I am, it's a fashion statement. It's not like I'm gonna slip and fall in the ocean or anything silly. Ah! Chad? Oh He's gonna throw the AWP in. Oh my god! Shit! Oh, what? Okay, now do it again. When we make that stadium a library. Oh. There's only one sound you'll be able to hear. Old flavor of crims. Now that is a grape, ladies and gentlemen, that has been with us for years. Oh, don't worry that it's getting old, it's getting old. I'm starting. 
I don't want to be this kind of people who to, to be recognized every time I go out or something like this. Zippy, can I call you Zippy? Actually, my name is Chipex, so... Zip. Yeah, I just, think, I just think Zippy's got like a cooler ring to it, you know, like for the, for the youth. And the pelts. Ooh, it's a bit off to the right. It's a bit off to the right. ...as the crims... <clears throat> the crimson jelly. Well, this is gonna be really easy. Maybe slightly embarrassing, but that's nothing new. Like what? Like this! That's just my regular accent, mate. That's just how I sound. Finals, Pronex and Crims. They just need two kills here and they will win it. For the second time, Pro... 47 kills. 23 deaths. Or should I say, 4, 7, 23. Weird timing. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Sorry about this. I've... I'll never forget when uh, we had no toilet paper during COVID. Uh, it was a bit hard. Uh... We all went outside, but James never had that problem. It's our first date. So oh, okay. Push on vodka then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> People need me, man. My people need me. Yo, 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 yo. I don't know, bruh. Bruh. Whoa! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Inhuman reactions! Nice braise on it. it. It was very nice. It was almost like pulled pork in some ways. Wow. Yep, that's I it. don't think you should touch it. I don't think you should. I think this is... This is I have masturbated before. Oh, a bit, bit partial to the old hand-to-hand -hand combat then, I understand. Mirage, one of Counter-Strike's most notorious maps. May the Lord save their souls. Father. Tomorrow night on ESL Pro League, it's the clash of the international squads. And now the, the winning smile. Hey, why do you... My friend, I'm here to save you. Don't go. I don't want you to go. You've done so much. I know, I know. It's more red than Harry is, and that's unfortunate. Back then, technology was different. Keyboards used a PS2 plug as USB wasn't widespread. Fun at EPL and break a leg. <laughs> at Bristow Potteries in Malta ahead of the playoffs of EPL Season 17. And I'm here with Chief Pothead Jackie. Good evening, fellow gamers and worldly citizens. Far too long has the strategy of this nation led. And if there's one thing I love, it's big piles of greed. Does your moisturizer suit your narrative? Open wash. I don't know why I say watch. Like, I want to put the tea. Is that open wash? I want to put the tea. I don't know why, my. Do 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 Is that what you wanted to do, Elvis? Don't look That's at me! That's my job! Look That's my job! Look forward! Side there, look at that. Coming out of that, that's a bit of a money- I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Shadows of ourselves. the age where everything in Counter-Strike is a challenge. Someone calm and collected. Many run. <laughs> this is impossible, honestly, I have no clue. Oh, uh, Giga Chat, Hooksy, Giga Chat, Hooksy, Lord, Lord Hooksy. Not today, Phil. Mm -hmm. 
and he said, Why so serious? Why so serious? Is back on the menu! Yes! Woo! I'm really good Next. at this. I just started. I guess we need Apex. KNG versus Config. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whoa. Nico is the in game leader. Yes, I know. I see. I, yeah, I mean, someone's probably going to get kicked tonight again. You may see a plaster on my hand. Let's just say this is no longer a vegetarian dish. It was CPL winter 2002. Zaiwu was two years old, and Monacy wouldn't be born for another two years and five months. Finish him! Finish him! Holy f he's fast. Don't actually kiss me. No, I'm not gonna. But, but like this, How so close like, can we're shaking. I get? You can get to my cheek, you can get close. Yeah, yeah, I you, can't you, lean all that way, bro. Me. So close. Oh my god! Oh, well, it's actually Mac, mate. Oh, mapped. Back in the day when we used to play, it was really passionate, but man, seeing in the kitchen bringing that magic. <laughs> and most importantly, it's the first ever fucking major win for Nico. Yeah, we just kicked everyone, basically, and then we... we... Waiters, you are clear. I repeat, you are clear. Get the fuck in there. That looks absolutely, oh, vile kind of looking, but that is what we want. King 40 has got him hunted down, time is up, oh Some God. of them simply yeah. random. What? Is what? <laughs> Just like a prison, there's extensive evidence of segregation within the facility. He, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's one with the blade, as you say. I am from London. <laughs> Today we're going to be taking a look at the best region in the world, with North America locked and loaded. Why be a future star for just a year, when you can be a future star forever? Please welcome the newest member of our team, Map. It's a long time without CS, but I need you to focus. Show us what you got, show those bots what you got! Take a look at this. Mm. This is bigger than my head, nearly. It's heaven. Hold up, what happened? Just hell. I will personally find you and I will eliminate you. And trust me, because I know me. Henry! Henry! It's so. the under, now it's the middle, and okay. then we have the top. So that's the scientific yeah. uh, name for the hair. Exactly. Yeah. That's close. Oh, that's really close. With CS2, you'll be standing tall, polishing your trophy in no time. Say the future doesn't fit you. Oh no. Ooh. So you feel like you found home? Yeah, until I'm kicked. <laughs> now we're cooking, bro. Look at that go. Oh, green mounting. Look at those wheels that chewing up. Your time starts now. so necessary that most people don't even think about it. Well, we really backed up for this one. Oh, oh my god. That's, that's the number one player in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Measurements. Measurements, yes. The measurements never lie. Never. Like a pendulum where all the swings are blessed, but to play in this part fights for its time in the sun. Wasn't it you two who have flown out to Seattle by about? Look at you two complaining about who's gonna squeeze into each other's hole first. <laughs> of course. Talk ties. Now let's talk lows. If any cold callers. Perfect, actually. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna, we're gonna pump this flower. Chill defense against the four symptoms of underachievement. Zero to six. Zero to six? You bite. Not only does it have strength, but it has power. My inventory looks different every single day. I just turned 30. 
and I can't even spray anymore. These, these, these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> With only one true allegiance. And now we're gonna have to lock you this up. This one's throw for Dr. Eddie! Really? Really? Could have been a lot worse, could have been a lot harder. I expected a bit more pushback on the UK Counter-Strike. Now my question regarding that is when are you gonna, you know, shut the fuck up about this Blaine? Ich weiß, es ist schwer, aber wir schaffen das zusammen, Alter. Hashtag gemeinsam, wir können das packen. Tell me about I'm about to lump 20 on. Cool? Look out for a few surprises. No, Chad. Is that a raincoat? Yes, it is. Dank, dirty banana. So this type of banana, this is... Oddsy. Keep his eyes glued exactly where you want them. Secondly... This time we'll make a mistake. We're now falling. Gonna break through. He's on his left foot here. Didn't quite get the ball past the left. Working in the shadows and the shallows. The salt water croc. Of ever shifting tide. Glass of warm milk. Little Kool-Aid. Why do you never even communicate anymore? They might be rushing, eh? And you'll just sit there in silence. Fucking Americans. So loud and obnoxious. They will fix it with a patch on the tent. Patch on. Oh. Hey, um, where am I? I'm in Chile. <laughs> yes, I'm the manager of this here establishment. Are you telling me I need to upgrade my fucking video card again? So that's the CS coming up. Watch it. Watch the score. It's going to change. Watch the CS. It's counter straw. Okay, tagged up. One. <laughs> Stop that guy. Here we go. Always toxic. Oh, captain, my captain. I will personally ensure the funding of a global competitive matchmaking ladder on 256 sub tick servers world. Because safe investments are for pussies. Bays haven't had it. All right. Save your skin with the all new potential. There? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's still Waxter. Waxter. Are you familiarizing yourself? Where are you, Justin? An isolated land. Fantastic. Now I can't spend precious team building time with my employees. Such as the famous, buy an op, and then use the deagle. I was watching. I'll take responsibility and leave. It could have been beautiful. It could have all been ours. Yeah. Skyboxes allow for a whole new world of nade lineups, so you can get as sweaty as you'd like. Feels bad, man. That is not so poggers. Bible thump. QQ. Ooh. 
Oh my god, this guy is so good. <laughs> so if it came down to me having to buy that for myself, probably just tell you no flat out. Who's the wanker now? Here we got pandas. Yeah. We actually have pandas. Oh up my ahead. god, I see Giant why they call pandas. them Giant Harry. Uh he will never learn. If we were to do a bunch of exercise, die, and then eat the meat, it'd be sad. Oh, can you believe it, Harry? Face clan. Oh, no. But the epidemic of Mirage addiction sadly shows no signs of slowing. Let's roll. You want to know your balls and you want to get them in hard and fast, all right? No, I don't care about Stana, man. He's a fucking gold Nova. ESL Pro League Season 19 is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, Kadia. DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, 1X Bet, and White Market. Hey, Chad. All of the constantly happening CS here. It's all here, and it's all CS, always. This is ESL Pro League, this is season 19, and this is where all the madness begins. Still 32 teams, still four groups, key difference being two groups will be played simultaneously. Now Malta, it's been our home for multiple seasons. I'm sure you all remember FaZe. They earned the Intel Grand Slam here. Mouse, just last season, the last ever CSGO trophy was listed on this ground. But our castle, it's had a few upgrades. So come on, let's go, uh, let's go check them out. Oh, it's a li li little bit dusty. There we go. No, nothing to be afraid of because uh, Chad, what's going on all the way over there? We've got one of the biggest and best changes for season 19, and that is this beautiful stage setup. We have the teams no longer facing in, facing out, facing each other. Jason, this is the old school land environment that we were hoping to see. Yes, indeed, Chad. This is this is a fantastic environment. You're going to see it on the cameras as well. Players standing up, shouting at each other. This is old school Counter Strike. High yeah. energy shit talking Counter Strike. They're damn close to each other. We've got the smart glass here. Let me see if I can get this to work. Bang. And. Ooh. uh Bang. Hey. Okay, I'm not sure if clicking is required, uh, but that'll be happening in between rounds. Uh, yeah. But I do have the magic hands. Does it go again? No, it doesn't. No, matter. no, it doesn't. It's all right. It, you ran out of magic there at the end. But this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. We've got them closer than we've had them in the group stages. Actually, should we Kavita. officially measure this? Do you want to come give me a hand yeah. here? Okay, I so do. let me just put my toes down. How many How many chads long is the distance uh, between the between the booths? Uh, this is about one and a third chads. Okay, one and a third chads is the official measurement, I do believe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is my favorite chads change. Hopefully the players are going to love it. Hopefully you at home is going to love it. Hopefully it's going to get loud in here. And speaking of loud, proud, and a few of our esteemed colleagues, uh, they got some other changes that they want to take you through. That's right. We're starting over at the here ping pong table. Go. It's a bit of a classic. We've been playing all morning. This is my best friend right here, and we love a bit of ping pong, don't Harry, we, Harry, I think historically Pro League loves a bit of ping pong. We've had so many epic duels over the years from pro players to prestigious talent. I feel like this year will be the most cutthroat tournament of them all. If I had to push you as to who is the up and coming talent of the broadcast team in the ping pong world, who would you go for? Who's going to uh, look out there's, for? There's really two that spring to mind for me. One is Jason Moses O'Toole. He is a bit of a, an underdog, a, a dark horse, if you will. I wouldn't even, I would call 
call him the overhorse or whatever. An overhorse. He, yeah, yeah, he is the overhorse. And then I think the underdog for me is going to be Alex. Uh, he's been putting in the hours, and that lefty grip does him well. I tell you what. So okay, so we this is a very this good point. rally from it's us. Actually it's actually gone fantastic. freakishly well. Uh, there, there we it go. Is. Had to end it eventually, but that's the ping pong. Ping pong is going to be. We love here. it. We'll take a look over here, though, Henry. This is the lounge. Look how much room there is for activities, Harry. All this space <laughs> to run around, Ooh, enjoy yourself. A and a monster as well. I don't Lovely. know whose this is, but I'll be having some of that. Yeah, well, we'll make sure that's okay. How does it taste? Is it cold? It's cold and it's fresh. Well, speaking of fresh, we've got a new addition over here as well. We're calling this the five stack area for good reason. It's not a 1v1 area anymore, Harry. It's not a standing desk. We've got a full LAN setup. Oh, this is this is the dream. So what we've got rocking here, these are broadcast headphones, and alongside them we have the full we have the full setup with the key light and everything. Nice little cameras mounted on top. That means we're going to be able to do five man CS gameplay for the right first time here. ever. For the first time ever, with no compromises, no audio issues. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Have you been playing CS recently? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> why not? For the purposes of this, yes, I've been playing lots of counter strike recently. Well, that's about all the areas of golf for you, so bear in mind, ping pong, player area, five stack, it's all to come. And golf. And a bit of golf as yeah, well. which we didn't even have to show off, but it's there. Now we've got a very special tree, Harry. We're going to throw it over to the sofa, where I believe we have a very special guest indeed. Oh my God, oh my God. That is crazy. But did you know the fake flash play has a long and storied history? An absolute catastrophe. What are you doing? Now, are we still calling it the, the casting couch? Yeah, Hello. I think we should still keep it as the casting couch. Now, Henry's joined us. Uh, we have uh, Matt from uh, Tournament Management. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, no, no longer league ops. No longer just league ops. The they want it to be a dead term. That's not dead naming, Henry. When they call them, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just making only it clear. Them tournament clarifying, management. that's yeah, all. Tournament management, that's what they're going with. Uh, we've got a couple of bits of housekeeping that we have to get through before Absolutely. we get into this. Now, tournament format, Freya kind of mentioned that as she was coming through the door. Uh, we've got four teams, eight teams per group four teams per group make it to the playoffs. Did I say that right? Yeah, you just started up? out a little bit weird. Eight teams per group, four of them make it to the playoffs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and there's four groups. If you're first in the group, you're straight to the quarterfinals, right? Uh, Matt, That's it. You're, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Thumbs up from Henry. <laughs> there, we go. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. There it is. And if you're second in the group? Uh, then you go to the... 16, round of 16. Right? There you go. Round, yeah, yeah. playoffs, right? Yeah. And, it's cool. and so what if you come third or fourth in the group? Well, then you're in the round before. The See, round we're, we're testing round already. And if you come fourth, yeah. you get in the last chance qualifier. Then if you get through that, that's for the fourth place. Yeah, so right? you can drop down. So in the group stage, there's a whole lot of bracket players. All best of threes. Yeah. It's all that good 16 stuff. games per group, I believe. How have you been counting? I've been keeping up. I've that's been a lot up. of games of Counter Strike. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I think that's one of the changes that we have, right? It's no longer five weeks, it's three weeks. All the action's being condensed. How does that make you feel? Was it fun? Just bottling all that up. I mean, we're not here for as long. That's, uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> a good thing. You get paid by the day, Matt? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm salaried employee, so... Oh, okay. Well, I guess yeah. he's all right with that. <laughs> for the day. No, not paid for the day. Sure that up yeah, all right. Well, we need this to make sure. And how much do you get paid at now? Uh, uh, look, uh, yeah, it is condensed. We yeah. do have 16 teams here at any given time. So there's going to be a lot more players making their way through. And a B stream downstairs as well, right? There Does that, that make things stuff. more challenging for a kind of tournament management perspective, having to have two teams going on at the same time? I mean, yeah, we have to have more referees, obviously. Sure. Um, we have, yeah, one game extra per stream now every day uh, so days are longer so less time more stress do you have a, do you, have a <laughs> do you have a runner that, that, that carries messages between the two uh, we have radios uh, uh, but yeah ah, we do uh, we yeah. do also have a runner perfect uh, exactly for see that see in good shape yeah it's gonna have to be well yeah I'm sure he will be after this event for sure are they taking the elevator or the stairs uh well, we'll see. Okay. You know? Depends on the time parameters. Exactly. Yeah. Now, look, uh, when we come to a tournament like this, we're talking about 16 teams, so that's plenty of goddamn players. And uh, in terms of tournament integrity, people are always asking questions at home. Like, we get tweets that people are like, why do they have a headset over the top and in ears in? Well, uh, the headset over the top is noise cancellation. Um, it stops, obviously, you from being able to hear the other teams just across because, you know, we've got a close land set up here. Uh, we've also got the flashbang glass, you know, stops you from seeing other players uh, during the live rounds. Just you can't like read lips or... Thanks to Jordan, nothing Gilbert, that one there. Yeah, <laughs> Once upon a time. Summer yeah. of C9. Yeah, it's a uh, long time ago. And we also have uh, uh, cameras like, uh, oh, what are they called? Over the shoulder? Security cameras. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh. Like checking from behind all of the players 
to make sure like we can see all of their monitors and stuff like that. So if we need to go back and record a clip or something, we uh, we can do that as well. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. No. So, so something fishy happens, you've got a different perspective of it. Yeah. Back in back in my day, ancient history, majors once upon a time, 2015, 2016, we used to have to hand our peripherals in overnight. Do they still do that? No, uh, we don't do that anymore. We take peripherals basically as they come. Uh, all of our PCs are pretty well locked down by our dedicated IT team. So we're pretty confident that, uh, you know, nothing's going to come in. You mentioned the peripheral. USB ports can only handle like the actual data of the movements, no actual like uh, yeah, there's data no, being transferred. No data itself. transfer. On okay, all of our right, USB so it's just ports, the yeah. movements of the peripherals. You can't even like upload or download anything. Yeah, obviously okay. locked down on the internet as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What, what about before the players sit down? What do you, what do, you do before the players sit down? Uh, well, we have we have uh, like dedicated SSDs for every player. So obviously, before they sit down, we need to set all of those up. So every player loads their config during a setup day, uh, which is like when they do all of their media obligations. They also come in, set up their SSD, make sure their config's loaded on there. So every SSD is loaded per player. Um, so we plug them in one, two, three, four, five, based on where the player is going to sit. Obviously, they tell us that in advance. Um, and that's pretty much it. We turn on the PC and we wait for them to sit down. And what is on the PC, right? Because Counter Strike, obviously, mm -hmm. Teamspeak, Windows. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Almost so. certainly, yeah. Teamspeak, Counter Strike. Yeah, well, Spotify, maybe. Yeah, they that. have Spotify. Uh, yeah. They, they send their Spotify playlists in advance. Uh, oh, that's be a pre-approved playlist. Because I guess you could have some like unofficial tracks uploaded or something like that with information on the other team. Could you? Be? I don't Could know, you? maybe. Well, I'm just thinking outside yeah, the box here. Thinking how to cheat. It's like yeah. music's playing like this team likes to hit A. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can have like a radio broadcast coming in via Spotify. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, it's more the fact they don't have internet, so we have to download the okay. playlist in advance, uh, right? I'll take the tinfoil hat off. What, yeah. about, what about maps? <laughs> Do they get any specific, if they ask for like uh, They an get aim aimbots and... Um, the CS stats? CS stats map. Yeah, okay. the new one for CS2. Yeah. So you don't get to play deathmatch before you get in there. It has to be aimbots. Well, I mean, you can play deathmatch with bots, I guess, okay, like, sure. if you set it up okay. yourself. But no, no online. No service. online, yeah. Okay. Um, so what about, uh, we've seen some of the events, you, people get wandered down. What are you looking for with the wands? Uh, so yeah, we've got Let's a do a demonstration, center. shall we? <laughs> okay. I've actually uh, hidden a piece of metal on my body for him to find to see how good he is at his job, Jared. All right, here we go. Um, we'll, we'll start from the back and see what okay. he can find. Nothing yet. Oh, that was the watch. Oh, that that's was the a watch. That's the, uh, that's radio the drip. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's, that's also, the yeah. yeah. That's, that's my badge. <laughs> 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 this guy. Uh, can you turn <laughs> over, please? <laughs> turn around. And, that's uh, the, oh, oh, what's that? Oh, Someone hold on, that's a very hot area down there. You <laughs> might, for pro might have to <laughs> check that one out. Do you want to take out. them off? <laughs> I, well, that's my question next. Let's say you do find a piece of metal there. What what could well, it be? There Is specifically? That, yeah, well, not there specifically. <laughs> Let's say you do find a piece of metal. It's not in the place it should be. What are you doing next? You're saying, please, can you take your trousers that's, off? Or you no, 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 no. We'll, we'll uh, ask them to take out whatever it is. You know, it's probably a I phone or... I my keys or... to my boxes just so sure. everyone can work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really work. It's it's like, this is where the latex gloves come out. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable playing ping pong with that, but... So yeah. so yeah, we asked them to take out whatever it is the metal detector finds. And then I know we'll in chess there was this whole um, theory that there was a <laughs> cheating device inserted inside a person. Have you ever come across anything like that in Counter Strike? No, of course no. not. No. <laughs> How funny. Not, not yet. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean the cheats are getting pretty advanced now. Like, have you seen that people have got like um, AR glasses they're using to have like uh, you seen that? Like it has like a film so you can see the radar through the glasses, but it's not on the screen, and it like connects for your website, and it, you just have to have one player on your team that's cheating what the hell? and then it connects to your glasses and you have the radar overview through the sunglasses you know a lot about cheating I got on YouTube. I'm actually you? kind of pissed off the whole cheating situation in Counter-Strike <laughs> in general so I do a lot of research I go on YouTube I got to see what's going on who's fighting it who's not that sort of thing well, so I'm, let's keep I'm, my I'm, finger I, on the pulse I think I, I kind of draw the line I say if you're willing to insert a vibrating object in your body to cheat you deserve it. Some people That's do that without wanting to cheat, Jason. They'll do <laughs> that for fun. True. Yeah. Uh, what about, um, so in the past, we had like things like the Olaf boost, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I remember for a while there, they were asking players if they have something that they think could be a little bit dodgy to show the tournament management, League Ops at the time, uh, if there was, if this was okay, right, to be used, and then they could use it in a tournament. Do you guys still have players come into you with those things? Yeah, um, sometimes players come. Uh, most of the time, obviously, they've found pretty much everything they can find. Uh, but we also look at like social media and stuff like that. So sometimes someone posts something on Twitter or on TikTok or something like that. And we see that, review it. And then if we decide it's uh, something, you know, game breaking or that is not intended, then we'll write it down on our uh, spreadsheet. And Spending a lot of time on Odyssey stream. It's public for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone can see the, uh, the, I think we call it the, the boost. Was there okay. anything added before this like tournament? That? Any kind of last minute? 
additions. Uh, Wait, anyone is in the fans, the viewers? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, should, we, should get, we should tweet that out then. Yeah, then. we should tweet that out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. we'll do that. Was, was there anything in before this? No, event? no. Nothing, nothing. No, nothing I saw some, there was an um, overpass boost in CT Spawn, similar or akin to They were to doing the, a run boost together though, I think. Yeah, so I think it's okay. From, yeah, well, they were killing Sprout, guys right? in Spawn. Uh, a was it Apex? Could yeah. be Sprout. I oh, think no, it was maybe Apex. it was Apex. I think it was Apex. Yeah. I saw like a double orb kill in T Sport. Yeah, on but, uh, the, that the, the a jumping crazy. on the jump. Anyway, yeah, yeah. There's some there's some stuff. Going I have on. a question. I'm not sure if this is appropriate uh -oh. to ask. Here we go. My I know guns. In, the, in the in the past has been a random drug test. Is that still a thing? Does that happen? Uh, not so much anymore. But yeah. obviously, it is still a factor. Sure. We can't tell people in advance because, like you said, it's random. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're. Uh, Good to know. Henry, we, you, you, don't, you don't do the talent though, do you? No, no. <laughs> no okay. <laughs> Obviously, just <laughs> <play>. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Uh, what about what about in terms of? We've uh, had a couple couple situations recently. With what? Of the uh, of just if you can clarify for the audience, we've had a couple of these mid round game crashes, game hitches. Oh, on Inferno, I would yeah, say. Inferno yeah. always seems to be a popular. What's site the for this rule thing? on that? Because we always butcher it while we're casting. We're like, well, we're gonna have to, you know, we're we're speculating. We should shut our mouths. Uh, so what happens if a player does drop? Well, most of the time we check if damage has been done. Obviously, so it, any damage. Any damage. What if it's a TK? Well, what it, if it's it, one it, damage? It depends, right? If yeah. it's in spawn and it's clearly unintentional, then sure, maybe we'll overlook it. But like, if it's they're running out of spawn and I don't know, he's thrown a nade or something, and he's hit a teammate, then that's damage that's been done. So, okay. Yeah. No, go on. I, we have got one more question left. Yeah, I, think I, I, I have a banger. Okay. Actually, you have a good one. You have a good one? I, mine was kind of a banger, but if yours is a banger, I go think you've got it. the same one. You go for it. I, I always wanted to one. know about the shit talking. Oh, that's quite good as well. I want to know that. if there was any rules about like what, what they're yelling at each other. Is there anything off the cards that's going to get them in trouble? Uh, again, I mean, it's fairly situational. If they start being like crazy racist or, or something okay. like that, obviously we're, we're going to shut it down. <laughs> we don't like to tell them where Kinda the line is. The vibe uh, let's the just cards. say that's the line. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like it, there's there's a line and it's pretty obvious where the line is, right? <laughs> so so we, do we, do we, I guess we don't have time for your banger, Henry. Um, okay, I was going to say, we didn't touch a seeding situation. The seeding was done in January, right? Mm -hmm. Could you just explain briefly why that was? Sure. So the reason we do seeding so early is obviously because we have um, 14, uh, four groups. Yeah. The seeding determines which team goes in which group. So that also depends when a team turns up. Sure. So log logistically, it helps for that. So we need to book general. flights yep. for all of the teams uh, and obviously to save costs and stuff like that, we need to do it as early as possible. Um, Should have finished yeah. in your question. It was a funny one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a serious uh, we can cut one. That in post. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we mentioned the B stream. So uh, maybe we should check what's going on with the B stream. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah, to answer the age-old question of what's underneath the A stream, uh, it is indeed the B stream where I've managed to grab Roman from Saw. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, I want to recap just what happened at the major. We saw you guys in the opening stage winning your two best of ones. Best of threes got a bit tricky. What did you learn from that? Uh, I mean, our goal is, was to be in the major, so that's uh, a great achievement for us. But we saw the all teams that were there, we felt like we couldn't have achieved a lot more. So it was a bit of disappointment for us, and we started 2-0. And we expected to be through to the next stage, so it was a disappointment for us, but we learned a lot and we fixed a lot of mistakes we had. Now, just upstairs is going to be the One Expert power rankings, where the talent are going to be rating the teams from one being the best, 16 being the worst. Where would you place yourself between one to 16? Uh, let's be honest, we are the wildcard team. We are the, we are the, a bit of luck to be here, so we weren't expecting it. So I, I can be a bit, a, bit, a bit humble and I'll put us, ourselves in the 16th place. But if I look at our level, I feel like we, we are around mid-table, around 8, 9, I'll say. Okay, 8, 9. That, that sounds pretty good. Well, thank you so much for your time, Roman. Best of luck versus uh, 3D Max. But on the A stream, it's going to be VP versus Fnatic. Gamers life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right way and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what was that? Never miss a play again. That simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. 
now. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Don't know how it's come to this I don't know how I could resist I took a vow to never sin But I saw the darkness from where Hello everyone, it gives me great pleasure to say welcome to ESL Pro League Season 19 on the B stream coverage action of course. My name is Travis, alongside me is Brandon, also known as B Dog, a lovely caster alongside me today. And I can't wait, mate. All right, yeah, we've got a few. Obviously, we have this, don't we? At the beginning of uh, a beginning of coverage, we have to iron out things as best as possible and test things out. But yeah, we can have a bit of a chat, of course, as well about the uh, about the opening matchup that we're going to get on the B stream. We can obviously 3D Max versus Saw. It's actually two teams. Uh, that we've seen a lot of in Tier 2 uh, in all our careers, of course, cost a lot of them, and seen them kind of work their way up the ranks as well, Brandon. Let's get see if you get your mic interaction now. Okay, okay, well, we'll continue with it, as unfortunately we'll fix that fix Brandon's microphone as quickly as possible. Don't you worry. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Brandon, come in. Until I'm told otherwise, but yeah, 3D Max versus Saw. Uh, look, I'm excited. Obviously, there's a new roster change in the ranks of 3D Max as well. Saw coming off the back of the opening stage of the major, and it, it really felt like they should have made it through. Roman said it best himself. And hello, guys. Now I'm back. Uh, I'm happy to be here, of course. And <laughs> yes, look, I, I feel like the, these two teams have got a point to prove when entering into Pro League here. I think it's a really nice setup, uh, especially with the first game of the day being on the B stream because it kind of dips your toes in Sorter a little bit. It lets us kind of catch up and reevaluate where these two teams are at because we haven't seen 3D Max too much on land. I haven't seen Saw too much outside of the major. Obviously, they've got Blast coming up in the next month, but it's a nice little limit test for both of these teams. And we've got a head-to-head -head we can show you as well because, as I just mentioned, Trav, 3D Max, they made that roster change. Yeah, they did. And it's actually you know, a pretty interesting one as well. I mean... It's 
Lots of people, obviously, have been keeping up to date with sort of French Counter-Strike. We'll kind of know, especially if you're a, you know, a tier two enjoy over the years. Hadji, uh, he's actually been a, a really good player for, uh, in the scene for a very, very long time. But he's been benched off of 3D Max and they'll be playing with Gravity for Pro League. And honestly, uh, Gravity's a pretty good player, I believe, in his own right. We've seen him, of course, a little bit in sort of tier three. He was on the one of the lower tier LDLC teams, yep. I think it's Gen 1 as well. But one thing that has to be mentioned, Brandon, of course, is that this is only his fourth LAN in his entire career. And of course, those first three were all regional French LANs. So this is a huge yes, test for him. No, of course. And I think what's interesting is you, you talked about Gravity being around the block for a little bit, obviously participating in all the big organizations within the French Counter-Strike scene. And this guy's only like 20 years old. Like he's got a lot of years ahead of him. I feel like yeah. what's good is he's around so many of these players that have a lot of LAN experience over the years. So I, I feel like he'll settle in and I don't think the pressure will be there too much for him, but I can completely understand what you're saying. I feel like in an environment like this, in a land like Pro League, it's probably like the, the best opportunity to really showcase your skills and just kind of be settled in a little bit. And you compare and contrast that to Saw, they've had a lot of LAN experience very recently. So it's just whether they can keep up that same form and manage their expectations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Saw, without a doubt, are some of the best in Tier 2 at the moment, of course. They didn't actually, you know, get here through a qualification, necessarily. It was, they, of course, were the replacement team for Cloud9. Cloud9 going through a massive rebuild, of course, at the moment. Um, but either way, I mean, Materius will be delighted with the progress of his team. I mean, I think uh, Arrows Doss, of course, Mr. Sweet yeah. Rice, as he's otherwise known, uh, alongside you jerks I mean, this rifling core is super, super consistent. Uh, but as Roman said in the interview with Freya beforehand, right... Uh, uh, before at the major, they were 2 0 in the uh, in the opening stage, beating Koi and Gamer Legion. Then the 0 2s that they went down to, I think it was uh, Cloud9, Pain and Furia. They'd beaten Cloud9 recently, and Pain and Furia, not exactly, you know, teams which we thought, at least going into the major, were, were rosters that could maybe hurt Source or had much better form. So, as Roman said, they were probably quite disappointed not yeah, to I make mean, it look, through you that would opening be, especially stage. Especially going up 2 0, and then you're, you're back in the comfort zone of best of three and it just didn't quite play out in the manner that they hoped for. So uh, for them, it's just a kind of about just making sure they reset things. And I think my camera has now gone funny. So we're having all the tech issues out of the way early, guys. <laughs> um, it's completely fine. Um, but yeah, look, I, I'm I'm interested to see what, what is going to happen here between these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, one thing I'm really excited about uh, between these two rosters is, of course, saw that they'll probably feel like after the major results that I mentioned, they maybe have unfinished business, right? I mean, uh, Materius and Roman, of course, they're not exactly you know, new to this. They've been on the team for four years. Uh, it must be said as well that, you know, their roster uh, with this current roster is their highest peak ever, right? I mean, they're the highest peak that they've ever reached and they've been plying their trade around this sort of, you know, tier two sort of top 30 scene for ages. So to be 16th, 17th around that area uh, is incredibly impressive. We've got the map pool comparison, of course, for you as well. Uh, it's actually very interesting because, as you can see there, both these teams permaban Mirage. So last time these two played, I believe it was in uh, an ECE. SL Challenger League, they last yep, uh, right. played up against each other. Um, they played Overpass, Ancient, and Nuke. So, you know, as you can see, very, very commonly played between these two teams, those three maps. Yeah, and, and now, obviously, if you are banning first, if you're one of these teams, you can just have an extra ban because the other one, more than likely, is going to go for Mirage. So you, you take yeah. a look at this and you think, okay, well, technically, whoever's going first in the veto has got a little bit of an upper edge. I don't think we're going to see sort of the, the same maps that we saw in Challenger League. I also thought was interesting, you take a look at that previous result, it is the fact that... It was actually Gravity that had an insane performance. So I don't know how much 3D Max can rely on that. I feel like you take a look at your other pieces. I want to see Jocko sort of coming back into form as he did at the back end of CSGO. And um, for Saw as well, I, like, I, I take a look at Jerks. I take a look at the likes of Story. And I feel like these guys, there's definitely a conversation here where on paper, I think they're better when it comes to firepower. 
Yeah, I mean, in general, I think that's probably the correct assessment. I mean, Story, of course, is a very interesting story on this roster. I mean, he was first added in 2021. It didn't go brilliantly for Sora as a whole when he was first added, uh, because they instead at that time, I think, put Stadod Stadodo on the rifle. He, of course, then went back to FDW, uh, the other Portuguese roster, famously qualified uh, for Season 16 of Pro League through Conference, yep. and then was then picked up by Sora once again, and he's kind of not looked back since. So, yeah, huge props to Story. We've got the veto coming now, of course, as well. Saw have banned Anubis, and the ban of Mirage will come through, as you say. It allows them to ban something different, Saw. They have gone for that. Um, and we do get a pick of Vertigo, and of course, Saw have been innovators in Tier 2 for many, many years. They were one of the first teams to really play a lot of Vertigo, even when they were playing ESA Advanced uh, a few years ago when it was first added to the pool. Uh, they've done the same with Ancient. I think they had some of the first ever HLTV officials on Ancient 2, uh, and kind of the same with Anubis. So, uh, interesting to see them actually choose Anubis this is the first ban. Yeah, um, look, I, I feel like uh, 3D Max are a pretty competent Anubis team, especially, again, with Gravity being integrated. They played that on LDLC a lot, so it, it makes sense for Saw to pick to their strengths here. What they've been feeling recently, well, it's going to be Vertigo. Uh, 3D Max going for an Inferno pick as well. I quite like it. And Overpass is the decider. We've seen that already when these two teams clashed heads yeah. just, what, 12, 10 days ago. So I, I think the veto makes a lot of sense. You're removing maps that you didn't do well on before, uh, and now you're hoping for a better result. It's on land, it's a lot to prove, and obviously they're just downstairs dwelling in the basement ready to kick things off. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they're not, uh, not an uncomfortable position for them. They're ready and rowing to go. Almost ready to get started. And yeah, I think what's also exciting about this is I know that 3D Max, I've been watched them since the Double Pony years, of course, some of these players, some of the French fans will remember that roster and the name, the sort of organization-less roster. Um, yeah, Jocko can be incredibly explosive dating back to then. I mean, Maka, of course, is the AWP IGL. He's really been around the block in the French scene as well, Maka. So they've got the experience, even though Saw kind of have. Um, you know, Saw have the players who have had longer tenures on this team. Uh, Maka has, of course, played with NBK, Masuta on the French Falcons, LDLC. He was also one of the, on one of the earlier uh, 3D Max editions back in 2019 as well, with the likes of Lucky and Jax before they then moved to G2. So he's playing with Lucky again. Lucky's been pretty consistent on this roster. So then it's definitely not a foregone conclusion that Saw are the favourites here, but they should still take it. Yeah, and of course, look, stylistically, you've got Story that was IGLing for a little bit in FTW. I think he actually took up the reins in Saw as well. Um, and they've now just kind of having this balancing act. And he, obviously, he's the AWPA for this team. So maybe yeah. there's going to be obviously a direct parallel we can draw there. Uh, of course, just kind of tunnel visually taking a step back and not tunnel visioning too much into this game. As we've obviously highlighted before we kind of even went live with the B stream, is that there's a lot of games going on at Pro League with two yes. groups being played simultaneously at the same time. Uh, therefore, as and when we can, and as often as we get the updates, we will let you know what is going on. Of course, the A stream is going on right now as well. Virtus Pro taking on Fnatic just upstairs. Make sure you go and head over to that one as well if you want to go and watch all the action there. Yeah, and that's an incredibly exciting matchup, right? I mean, Fnatic have their brat, their new roster, which has already you know, tr tried once at an RMR, kind of didn't go too well for them. Of course, they have some young stars like Kyubi, you know, Mattis, uh, trying to apply their trade on land for what only might be, you know, second or third time really on that team. Um, and yeah, I think the, the main talking point is VP, of course, with Electronic. And yeah, I actually cannot wait to see how that transpires because, of course, Electronic kind of kind of does fit into a lot of Mir's roles. And Mir was sort of the the low point, the the lowest ranked team, lowest rated player, or I should say, sorry, uh, on VP. So the fact that Electronic can just slot right in is a very exciting for VP. But as Brandon so rightly said, we will keep you up to date with those games as much as possible, and we're ready to hop into the first map of this series. The first map of ESL Pro League Season 19 on the B stream. It's Vertigo. Let's get it. Hoping for it. And it should be here in just a second. Uh, give me give me a little barometer, Trav. What, what, are you, yes. what are you saying for this? Obviously, you said Sora, the favorites coming in. Is that where your loyalties lie? Or is this a 2-0? Is this a 2-1? Where are you feeling? I, logic dictates this is a saw 2-0, uh, but online it has been a very close matchup recently. So let's see how it transpires. We've got saw, of course, starting on the CT side, and let's see how it pans out. 
pistol round underway. Maka has the molly and the smoke. And of course, as I saw, we all know, love their double duelies on Ujerks and Matiris. All right, a little bit of a fakey in towards B to accommodate this mid split. Dulbaredis go forward, but Jocko finds the first instantly. And now they're out for blood, straight over the top of construction. It's all 3D Max. They've got B for free. And that should be pissed around, done and dusted. So will probably just be looking to either save their Kevlar, maybe get that 350 helmet upgrade for a force buy in the following round, or just look for some kill bonuses. And it looks like that's what Ujerks is definitely doing. But that is a lovely swing from Jocko. I've uh, covered Jocko many a time on Vertigo. Back in the old days, the double pony days, like I mentioned, of course, he can put up some great numbers on this map and can be very explosive. That's what we're going to be looking for with 3D Max today. They, of course, Vertigo does kind of lean to a, a sort of pack-based mentality in a way, especially on the T side, taking ramp as such. And uh, we'll see if they can keep that up on the gun rounds rather than just the pistol. They'll clean up Roman nicely. And that's the first round of Pro League for 3D Max. Yeah, not, not a bad round at all. I like the fact that they've actually thrown the grenades quite shallow, and then it completely kind of creates an illusion of how, well, how many players are actually scaling up the stairs. In fact, it's just a couple, and then all the distraction is taken from mid. It's a well choreographed pistol. 3D Max have been workshopping that one before the event. Roman tries his best, but it's only in consolation. And a oh, force by here for Saw. They're going to throw the MP9s at this, and Gravity's going to get a little bit of a vibe check up towards A. That's interesting, of course. Usually, kind of meta kind of dictates very often. It's an eco in these sort of rounds for a CT side, especially on Vertigo. But you know what? They got themselves a two for two early on. MP9 frags will come in for Story and New Jerks. And of course, that is important cash for the future rounds too. Even if they don't win this one and they're actually going for a double gap aggression here very common strategy on ct vertigo to try and get at least a trade frag and maka he's pushed up so far of course so aren't necessarily gonna know that he's already up past the boxes here just posturing looking toward elevators story will now give it a glance but the timing doesn't work out for him and they don't see it a boost up on double stack now that's interesting lucky he's still holding for the possibility of players pushing down and he takes story but is he aware of a second mutiris will not swing for now as a bomb plant comes through they won't be aware he's here He's so worried, though, about Lucky on the flank. So Orostos needs to take the first contact, and he gets domed instantly. And now Materius' position, whilst it's good for the first, he gets immediately traded out. I really like that pacing from 3D Max, because yeah. notice how they go so aggressive in trying to get the space initially, and then they slow things right down. When it goes into a three-on-three, -three, they make sword doubt. And just by taking the space and contact pushing up towards this site, you're still imposing a lot of question marks in this CT side. Have they fully committed up to the bomb site? Have they actually rotated away? We haven't heard anything. And that's what initiates this contact from Story to walk down ramp. He needs to see what's going on there. He gets met with an AK headshot. And it's just a very clean mid-round from 3D Max. Yeah, really important on a, against a force buy such as that, right? So often the force buy can come up trumps and the force buy wars will then begin. Until someone wins two rounds in a row, of course. And in the following, of course, Gravity with that MAC-10. A little bit of confidence, perhaps, for Gravity. As I mentioned, of course, for those of you maybe who weren't here for the pregame, only his fourth LAN in his entire career. And, of course, those first three were all just regional French LANs. Nothing as significant as this. And he's getting some Ecos early doors. Will definitely help him feel it a bit. It's nice to obviously get that pistol, get that lead, and allow those players with slightly less experience to slot feel slightly more confident, of course. And that's a clean anti-eco. Uh, and this is also the decision as well. Look, remember, this is Saw's map pick. 3D Max elected to start on the T side. They wanted to set the pace early. They wanted to hit yes. the ground running and just make Saw feel really uncomfortable. And obviously, we're going to get a full taster of what's to come in the first full gun round. But MR12 in CS2 is a snowball effect. You win the pistol, suddenly you've dealt with a four spy. It's now a tactical for Saw. They're already feeling the burden of losing three rounds immediately, which is a lot more significant than it was in Go. Exactly. We saw Rowan before the game, looking at maybe a little bit chilly in the basement, like we said. He's got the, uh, the hand warmers there in action. Apparently, uh, according to some of our Lovely production help that we spoke to the other day. It's actually quite chilly in Malta, so 
Yeah, important to keep warm, keep those reactions as fast as possible. Basement Dweller, of course, the, the new collab, <laughs> the ESL machine. Shout out, yes. Alex. Looking forward to seeing what that looks like. I've not had a sneak preview, so I'm in the same boat as all of you guys, don't worry. It's good. <laughs> I'll believe. The leaks. It looks great. Okay. okay. I'll believe. You would never lie to me, so. I wouldn't. <laughs> Opening gun round underway. Exercise priming the molly. This is, a, I believe, a jump throw that bounces off the window and go toward, goes toward Gap, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. You're right. There it is. Of course, Saul will be very aware of where that utility is coming from. Because now they'll creep up with these smokes to cover them. He jerks on the angle. Jocko has decent timing here, but will reveal his position with throwing that Molotov to clear out sandbags. And actually, they have kind of taken Rap, and Jocko has kind of done it alone in a weird way as well. With that utility help, of course, from, from Ladder, it's allowed them to shift back toward B stairs. It was Stories brought his AWP over as well, so it has got to be a little bit careful here with Lucky about to be boosted on Gravity's head. Story adjusting in the nick of time. And now we can look for even more on these stairs. Utility raining out, 35 seconds. This has to be the commitment from 3D Max, or does it? They've pulled rotates, and with Jocko's previous space on ramp, they're trying to exploit A, but they're being so loud about this that Saw haven't really had to move too much. Yeah, I mean, Jocko took the space, but then fell back with his teammates, right? They've changed plan. If they just straight up win the duels, it doesn't matter. Matur is looking a little bit cold, early doors, and Roman fighting for his life. Two versus two, but Aros Doss is still here. 1v1. Story, who was originally on B, is now on A. Bomb plant in the smoke, and Story finds it with the sidearm. Saw, get off the mark in Pro League. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, though, the amount of rotations that immediately come over, and what's really cool is just the little traps that Saw set up in, in that exchange. Arostos tucked in the corner. There's a player pushing beyond default. I think it was Roman that was just making sure that he was taking all of this space and all of the distraction. They were trying to set each other up for success. Let's be honest, the gunfights didn't go in favor of them as it felt, felt like it really should have. 3D Max do really well to kind of crack open that bomb site and bring it down to a bare bones one on one. And his story on the AWP, you don't think he's swapping to that pistol. It works out quite favorably. Round on the board for Saw, but that was really expensive. Of course, surviving with just one player alive means three MP9s in the following gun round. That's probably why they're trying to fight fire with fire here. Quite literally, with the Molotovs pushing down aggressively with some SMGs. With those SMGs, I should say, and yeah, gravity. Still providing some pre presence over toward B stairs. Actually, the defense on B is two of those MP9s right now. So little do 3D Max know. We could have an advantage if they were to execute there. But, of course, we have the X-ray and they don't. So we're going back toward ramp and that's where Story's posted up. Yeah, but if he gets removed here, then it gets a little bit tricky because this is like your MVP weapon and falls for the bait. Nice little run boost over. Story gets legs as a response, and now suddenly 3D Max spring into action. Immediate scaling up this ramp, but they've got two flashes to get them in. So after part, utility is not great, but at the same time, weaponry doesn't really favor Saw. They're trying to deny the bomb at every single circumstance. 30 seconds, exercise finds the AWP. That's huge because now gravity can stick the digits. Yeah, on low HP as well, just about getting away with it. He might just have to stay on default, to be honest. The MP9 will have so many bullets firing through. Maka in a very powerful position toward the sandbags with the AWP, but the SMGs are running riot. And they're having to win these pure angels because, of course, Saw have no utility in this one. It might give Lucky a chance or exercise. The answer's no. Defuse will come through and Saw get their second. Yeah, and that's that's two things there for, for 3D Max. And, and the... Saw handle that really well because they know they've got the lesser weaponry. So what they want to do is just make sure that 3D Max can't get established into these afterplants. They can't get set up in the crossfires. Uh, gravity's isolated on that bomb site immediately. So the SMGs chase them down close quarters. They're always going to have the jump, especially with the numbers. And the difficulty is where you haven't got much utility for 3D Max. They feel like they need to take all of these aim fights, but they're constantly swinging into two or more players. It's so uncomfy for that afterplant. So it's a really 
really good response and really good pacing on that retake from Saw because if they allow 3D Max maybe five seconds, suddenly it's crossfires and it's a whole different round. Oh, Roman needs to be careful. Pistols are up very fast toward ramp, faster than he was expecting. Thankfully, story is there. And yeah, I mean, as you so rightly pointed out, Vertigo, even when you are in a disadvantageous situation, if you've got the utility to get the nades down on the A site, you can lock off that CT retake. Make it very difficult for them to recover. So good job to sort of take that one. Just Tech 9, Glock, and two P250s for 3D Max left in this one. Saw should be evening it up at three apiece. And it's a good sign for the series that we're going to get a close game. This is how it's begun. Sometimes, obviously, first games of a LAN of a season of Pro League can be a little bit of a, uh, a damp squib, I guess you could call it. But I want to see a brawl. The maps kind of lead to all the possibility of that as well, with the styles of these two teams. I want to see a close game. I want to see a fun battle. Let's see if Saw can take a round here, all five alive. Actually important to do that in a round such as this, with their economy being as it is. One kill for exercise. And that is all they will get. Nicely done by you, Jax. Yeah, you spoke about just sort of the the need to get off the... Like, hit the ground running and kind of get off the mark as soon as possible. Uh, I think that's a perfect time to kind of segue into talk about the format. Obviously, it was introduced uh, last season, but there's a lot more chances now. You, you fall into a mid-bracket and then a lower bracket, and then teams four to eight will compete in the last chance uh, where there's smaller groups and then the first placed finish team in each of those groups will qualify through to the playoffs which means that there's a lot of counter strike to keep you updated with there's a lot of teams yes. that are just going to float through sort of the the arena in malta for the next three weeks but also it provides ample opportunity so even if you don't quite make it in that first game you still got plenty of chances to try and uh, just test your luck uh, and see how you how you fare it's not the be all and end all if you do lose this opening game i think is the the highlight but at the same time it's way easier if you just win it <laughs> yeah you're not wrong on that one but, uh yeah, so as I said, it's an interesting format and it kind of shortened, of course, from last season as well, like you said. So, all teams at once, two groups at once as well. Oh, Gravity, upcoming gun round. Taking matters into his own hands there. Straight up ramp. Roman was in the midst of just jump spotting, thinking it would be a slower play. And the answer's no on that one. Gravity takes that kill. They can now deploy the utility. You just play up close on the crane, maybe waiting for a flash to come through, but he's slightly blind as well, and he can't recover. Jocko takes the headshot, down to 5 HP himself, though. And even though 3D Max have a 5 versus 3, there is some significant damage here. There is, but they're immediately resetting. They don't want anything more to do with A. They assume the rotations are going to come over, so instead... And they've got enough utility to be able to execute the B bomb site. They're also just waiting patiently just in case Saw have a reaction of their own. And sometimes you need to go searching for clues in these three on fives. So by spreading out a little bit thin, it works to a detriment for Saw, but it's also just a positive for 3D Max. Because at the bare minimum, you get info if you fall without a kill, or you're even more likely to reduce the numbers further. That bomb has not moved in the last 20 seconds. Yeah. Now there's only 30 of those seconds remaining. Oh, Mutiris tried to put himself up close, but Lucky checks his basis. That's exactly what you should be doing. May just look like a random wall bang, but you've got to make sure you cover those eventualities. And 3D Max are doing a pretty good job here of sort of faking back and forth, pretty much. Keeping sort of guessing, right? Yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to see the design in these rounds. And they're, they're re playing really aggressive in the early stages of the game. They're taking this ramp control just away from Saw and limiting map control. At the same time, you've got these extremity lurkers that are just holding very passively in case Saw forced the issue. And I feel like Saw gonna ha is going to have to start responding and doing something of that kill in the next couple of rounds because you can't give this much space over to a team like 3D Max because... As you've already seen, they will fake on you. They will keep you guessing. And they will use all of the clock and use it as a burden against Saw. So there's a lot of moving pieces that are going on. But ultimately, 3D Max are just trying to provide the best outlet for them to construct these rounds and get them in their favor. Yeah, and it's a good sign for 3D Max as well that Gravity seems to be starting pretty confidently as well. 
Happy to be the point man up ramp. So often you need a player like that, of course. Happy to take these duels straight up. Was famously at the Paris Major, of course, it was Cypher just doing that over and over again. It's kind of a roll, of course. We know the entry roll exists, but on Vertigo there is a just, you know, run up ramp roll very often in these sort of rounds. Round eight. Lucky up close and Gravity's done it again. Arasdos taken down with the spam through the corner of the smoke. I reckon he probably saw a corner of him there as he tried to advance further forward. Story may be here to hold them at bay with the smoke and of course his AWP, but Maybe Max are getting a lot of entries right now. Yeah, Gravity's always been that player, especially like LDLC days. He mm. was getting a lot of freedom um, under sort of the, the leadership of Amanek as well. You think this guy's 20 years old, he's playing with like Lucky, Jocko, and then obviously Amanek. Like he's got a storied career already and he, he's so young. But I feel like the, the benefit of having a player like Gravity is he is very smart and cerebral in the mid round. Like he'll create a lot of opportunity. Here is Saw poking and prodding, by the way, in towards mid. And this is exactly what exercise is holding for. Muterius, if he goes around that corner, he's probably a dead man walking. Might even swing. Now he's seen the nades fall out from exercise. And in fact, the oh. fight comes straight to him, but Flash catches him right at the last moment. 3D Max yet again opposing problems on two sides of the map. Yeah, so many occasions we see that CT side go aggressive, like you say, while well, they're throwing utility and maybe a little bit of early BO3, early tournament nerves there for Materius and from Saw as a whole, it feels like. And that sort of situation, so often maybe you'd see Materius be the player pushing forward, taking the initiative, not letting 3D Max peak him, not letting Exercise take that point first. And he'll not be able to connect on the M4 spray. Gravity with two, Exercise with his kill, like we saw, and Lucky with one more as well. And Story, well, absolutely no doubt with the economic situation on 3D Max, they can afford to throw one or two players here on the hunt and remove that up from the equation. Not happening. It's a case of, again, prioritizing your finances over your oppositions. They keep an AWP, but ultimately 3D Max know that Saw haven't got the best buy behind it. So as soon as you find and isolate this AWP, you just can reposition to the other bomb site. This is the opener from Exercise onto Muterius in middle. And from here, it just feels like none of the gunfights go Saw's way. Even this one here, we're lucky finding Roman. That's an adjustment, not looking towards gap whatsoever. Had a cursory glance, was able to adjust in time. And straight back to the original scene of the crime where Gravity found the opener in the last round. Story gets mollied off from Gap. 3D Max won't be again. Yeah, this is a, a really confident T-side start from 3D Max and perhaps why they chose it, as you rightly pointed out. USPs to face. And Aras Doss is not long for this world. There goes Materius as well. Lucky takes that one. A lot of people may remember Lucky, of course, from you know, his G2 era when they both actually, him and Jax, got picked up from 3D Max, if I'm not mistaken, from memory. And uh, yeah, of course, kind of spent quite a long time on that G2 back in, the, in that era. And at the end of his stint, he was quite heavily criticised. But on this roster, he's been putting in some good performances, online at least. It's a whole different beast. In Malta. Story really trying his best, but that's actually the AWP lost. So Roman is not in a position to go and collect that. I'm sure Story would have preferred to save. I'm pretty sure Arrows Dust could drop him one anyway, but still. That second shot was just so gross <laughs> from Maka. <Macau. laughs> like the, the first one was a little bit labored. You think, okay, well, look, he's killed people. That's fantastic. It just one taps the guy on sight. Like, okay, mate, you need to do that. That's not fair. You're already beating them 6 3. You don't need to style on them. This is what I'm talking about, right? Ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, just jiggling with the sandbags. My man's got a USB. Come on, give him a chance. But that's not how things work. No mercy for 3D Max in the early stages. And it's good to see Maka playing well as well, of course, as the leader of this roster. Never had a go if. If I'm right and thinking, oh, yes, 3D actually. Max. L Lucky's had a little bit of a stint at the reins. Maka as well. 
I don't think Jocko's ever called, but I guess he doesn't uh, need to when there's so many players that are just contributing ideas. Fun push for Saw, immediately aggressive, and that accelerates the play in towards mid, straight into the crossroad Mutiris' story, but they get one apiece. B bomb site. It's open for now, but Jerks is already on the flank, being held by Lucky, but is he ready for Roman as well? Yes, he is. Doesn't need to commit wow. to the fight, but he wins it out anyway. That's so impressive from Lucky. Just talking him up and he delivers. Not just taking the first flanker, but the second as well. A huge individual play in this round to make it a lot more comfortable for 3D Max. Story tried to get into the action, playing in mid as he did. Got his one, but and pushing further through would just be way too difficult for him. The pounce from 3D Max was wonderful. Seven three now on this T side already, and money still continues to be an ever-growing problem for Saul. If they're not careful, this could end up as nine three, and that would be a disaster. Considering that this is their map pick, you've got Inferno coming up next, which is a very strong map historically for three D Max as well. And when Lucky and just the rest of the gang are hitting shots like this, there's some rounds that you can just put your hands up and think, well, what can I realistically do differently? I'm just being absolutely blasted out the server. Yeah, this is very clean. Very clean from 3D Max so far. Of course, of main full French rosters, of course. Kind of uh, one of the last hopes, sadly. I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot of viewers really pulling for them to make a name for themselves once again. So already have mentioned, of course, in the opening stage of the major. The twos are up, won their two BO1s. Had those three matches against Cloud9, who they'd already beat you know, a few weeks beforehand. Pain and Furia, all rosters, which they would have thought they had a good chance of beating, and they all lost 2-0 uh, to every single one of them. So that's an interesting fight. Materis just running in toward Ladder, almost catching Exercise, who was looking to try and take control in a T default position around that area, but gets forced away. Yeah, the, him breaking his legs, falling down that ladder, actually did more damage than the MP9. Got a little <laughs> yeah. boost the story a little nosy in towards b stairs however lucky's already under here just becoming a, a little bit of a nuisance back to mid potentially exercise just guts out ladder just in case that mp9 of materius has pushed forward a little bit further instead he's tucked behind the sandbags This is going to be tough for Materis. Gets one. And the trade isn't instant from gravity as Materis ducks back behind his position. So that's pretty important for Saw. Sure, it's a, a half investment with that AWP. But these, these are the sort of rounds that can be so important to win. And if Saw actually can get out of this half somehow with a 7-5, I think they'll be relatively delighted, to be honest, because they've been relatively outplayed Overall, that push again. Yeah, I don't know if I like this for 25 seconds, though, because you've just given out an opener. Now Jerks has to hit some bangers with the Deagle. He'll fall back away towards Sandbags at the bare minimum, and Jocko won't really have time to clear this. Orp, far, Jerks strikes from Sandbags. Suddenly, it's a two on four, and Mac is also overwhelmed. You Jerks have done absolutely everything in this round. Keep Saw alive. And that is now the prospect of a 7-5 half. Wow, I mean, that situation there for you, Jerks, logic dictates he falls back to the site, right? He falls back to the near double stack area, maybe Crane, we already saw Roman position there anyway. Kind of affects the footsteps for a second, manages to jump and silently, uh, even though he made some noise originally, kind of get into the sandbags position, not where they expected him to rotate back to, especially such late round, right? He does it all, look at these clean shots. So what we've come to expect from you jerks on this roster over the last few months. Yeah, also a lifeline for Saw. You speak about for the win and their run they went on. Obviously, the core of a Rostos story, Jerks, when they went through conference in 2022. That all came off the back of Jerks having some insane performances on Vertigo, especially on that T side. So if you get a little bit of a buffer here for Saw, then there's definitely a lot to work with. Resmoke over towards Gap, but Maka on the angle deals with Story in towards Elevator. 
And that's his bell rung immediately. A lot more faster scaling up towards A and exercise. This creates a lovely little window for him to strike in mid. Ah, the vertigo mid lurk. A bane of many a CT side. Are they going to consider it? Roman's certainly not. He's flashing himself through the elevator smoke. Exercise could have two kills on his plate here. How does he play it? There's one instantly taken. Doesn't play trigger discipline, but it doesn't matter because it allows his teammates to work their way up. Buteris tries to fight for his life, though. Does really well to get two. Unfortunately, it could be in vain. Aaron's DOS is one versus three. The spam through heaven and he gets taken out. Very comfortable first off of Pro League for 3D Max. They'll take it 8-4. to four. Is it tough, you know, when you have to play so many qualifiers and you have to grind out so many games and you guys have had a couple of unfortunate ones when you're maybe a game or two away for, from making it? How hard it is to just keep that morale up and, and, and keep the grind? Uh, there's so many tournaments, so like you step back a bit and you just uh, see the results of tournaments coming. So it's hard to deal on the, when you lose, but uh, the other day you just reset and you go back, uh, you come back uh, stronger. We also hear from players talk a lot about, you know, tier two teams or tier three teams. They play sometimes weird Counter-Strike and online Counter-Strike is, is, is not real. So are you happy to play online against some better teams and show your level in this environment? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it's, it's, what, it's why we play for, so for sure. And tell me a little bit about Gravity. He's uh, the newer name, you know, that yeah. people might not be as, as familiar with. So what's he like? Where did he come from? In the French scene, uh, people know him because uh, he's been grinding like in two, three years, like pretty fast. Uh, he was uh, the IGL in the past for his teams. And he has like a big, big uh, mindset, like a good mindset. Has a lot of energy to give. So, you know, with Vitality obviously going international uh, a while back and anything. Uh, do you see any opportunity for a resurgence of the French scene? Is, is there more players now in CS2? Are some of the guys from Valorant coming back as well? Like, do you see uh, a chance for it to grow a little bit more? Uh, I think so. We just need to wait a little bit and uh, just wait for French Rock to come in, in the scene, like maybe next year. And uh, I'm pretty sure if, uh, if we show how, how we can play in French CS, I'm pretty sure uh, new talents will come. All right. Best of luck, man. Looking forward to watching your games. Thank you for your time. Four half then for 3D Max on Saw's map pick, and it was just the assertiveness that I was the most impressed with. We saw glimpses from Saw of the individuals that can potentially take over and control a game, but that needs to begin now. A very crucial pistol. About yes, to sir. Uh, yes, sir. And obviously, I think 3D Max will be delighted. They're without a doubt the underdogs coming into this one, and they are in a superb position right now. Saw, looking a little bit under pressure. I mentioned, of course, Saw. They are a team that has always loved Vertigo. 
since the very time it was released all those years ago. So let's see what they can do. Actually, we're going very fast. And hang on a second. The Dollies are in play. Exercise is out for blood. He even leaps in for a fourth. Goodness me. No holds barred on that one. <laughs> that WWE. He's just trying to choke slam him from the top rope. Shadow spotted as well for Jocko. Muterius is now in a world of pain. Needs to find this kill, but can't get past Jocko. Story, last player standing against four. Good collection on the first, but actually might be allowed a little bit of space here. Bomb plant, nearly a guarantee, although gravity's already rotated forward. We'll stick the digits. So that's uh, money made at least. And now he can go anywhere. But with Maka on the flank, he feels like he needs to take the fight to Elevator. Immediate trade out. The youngster, the new kid on the blog, has sealed yeah, the deal for 3D nice. Max. Uh, from 3D Max. Critical pistol, as you said. And incredible work from Exercise. So often we see the Dooley's multi-frag on the pistols. See a replay of it here. Judging the recoil really nicely. And as you see, he was very happy just to say, well, I've done my job now. I'm going to go looking for more. Jocko pushed aggressively down ramp. As you rightly said, playing with probably what is the biggest shadow advantage in, get in the game right now. I mean, it's ridiculous how long that shadow is when you walk over the bottom of the A ramp. Great there. And uh, 3D Max with a great start. Three M4s on the next round, of course. It was a bomb plant to come through. So Saw, their force is decent. Two Galils, AK, Tech 9, Mac 10. Lucky with an XM as well for 3D Max. <laughs> Naughty man. Best gun in the game, man. You not heard? True. You have heard. <laughs> True. It, especially especially yes. in gap, to be fair. It's better than the Mag 7, which can either be a killing machine or, in my experience, yeah. it's 13 yeah. in one. Yeah. I did 9 in one the other day. That was just that. fantastic. Although, hang on. Fast up A, Jocko overwhelmed, and the XM also dealt with by a Tech 9. The Saw, they've got their way in, they've got the plant, and Gravity also dealt with. Gun barrel spotted, Jerks was out for blood. He wants even more, and he'll find it. Exercise, who's the hero of the pistol, is now diminished to zero as he watches on as the rest of his team crumble. Very nice from Saw, and, and weirdly, right, despite losing the pistol, now they've somewhat put themselves into an even better position, it feels like. They're going to limit 3D Max, of course. You'd expect 3D Max to reforce into this. The meta dictating the Force by Wars to commence. So, yeah, very interesting. So I'll have a lifeline and a great opportunity. And Rumble will even remove that M4 from the equation too. So there we, know, there we go. We know it's double eco territory. If uh, they overcome this Force by saw could be within touching distance a lot quicker than 3d max would have wanted yeah it's a really important round now oh, look at how many times in one round is a gun barrel <laughs> going to be spotted it's just the little tricky silencer just poking its head around the corner there are the deeks no shotguns in sight. In fact, it's Jocko with his hand cannon. He's seen Roman immediately. Info goes both ways, and there is the XM. We'll find exercise. That's a, a nasty feeling. Although, Lucky does go one for one. Not bad. Actually, surprised that they haven't gone for the full investment. As I said, I mean, every single game you kind of see these days, Force by Wars would kind of go immediately after hit back from Saw and I guess Maka is thinking maybe he wants to CT side orb as quickly as possible. Jerks will find Jocko comfortably. Bomb will be planted on the corner of the site. Gravity has a chance of the wall bang, getting very close. But the wall bang or smoke bang doesn't come through. And now Saw on six is imminent. I've got to say, respect to uh, Aristos for keeping the XM from the CT side over to the T side. I think a T side XM is a little bit more unusual, but of course he switched to the M4 now, so it's a smart play long term. Yeah, now you're chilling if you saw. Like, sure, work to be done, but at the same time, that was the kind of half force. Uh, there was Deagles. This one will definitely be an eco. So now suddenly you're at 9-7. You're at 
a bar in a calamitous sort of exchange to go down. Bar in the USPs don't win a full eco. <laughs> <laughs> Could have kept the XM, really. Would have given him more bonus cash, that's for sure. If we got a second kill. Yeah, nicely cleaned up from sort. Sort of stabiliser they needed. If, if 3D Max had converted the second round, maybe even converted a bonus buy already as well, maybe we'd have been talking about this map being over already. Not just yet. Max are committing to that double eco without having, of course, a force on the previous. Fun flash being lined up as well. That's the one at home. See the Jocko's lining it up over at default. And the flash player's in gap. Meanwhile, execute for B. Taking shape for Saw. Only one player over here at the moment. And then suddenly, these pistols go searching, they go straight into the Galil Jerks. Army tapping away. Maka with the Deagle. Do anything with this? No, he Jerks keeps himself planted on the angle. Jocker will get taken down too. It's just lucky. Very tough angle to finish a player off in that one. And he will find it with the Deagle as lucky swings further wide. Jerks is farming a little bit on the T side. Of course, it's only Ecos, but good for the confidence, good for the rating. He's up to 17. That's him. This is what he does, by the way. This is something you're going to see all T side long from Jerks. It's control over towards ramp and gap, yeah. primarily gap. Uh, and I don't know what it is, but this guy just wins basically like 80% of his angels over here. That stat's made up, but that's what it feels like, guys. I'm sorry. I haven't got my calculator out, but you, you understand, right? It's for, it's for effect, but it honestly feels like it at times. This guy's clean. And then this story starts getting online as well. That's where you got to start to worry if you're 3D Max. Not wrong. Of course, money they've built up in those... In that little streak of, you know, two or three rounds from Saw instantly puts them in a really good position. They've got this full investment coming through with still some of the saved M4s from that second round from 3D Max. Mac is on his AWP now, though. What can he do? Not a lot right now. No one's really giving face to a fight. It's just uh, an early exchange of utility. It's the good old war of attrition where it comes to nades. Jocko jumping, hopeful to see anyone. But that's currently not going to be the case. Still good map control, though, from 3D Max. Jerks now starts to get a little bit interested. The investment in towards a ramp is becoming a little bit more problematic now for 3D Max because as its utility is about to be dropped, you jerks might swing oh, and Jocko dealt so with. Frustrating for Jocko. Need a great performance now from Lucky, but the flash comes through. Tries to escape toward Gap. It's not a safe place to be, and Maka might have to fight through the fire and flames to return this one. But then the black part of the scope, of course, unsighted. Doesn't see that Story's already on his left. Two versus three. Sure, there might be a smoke kit on exercise, but you need to find a kill within the next, I don't know, like 10, 15 seconds if you're ever going to consider this one. If everyone finds this frag on toward exercise, it should be enough. They try and stop the AWP from being saved, and Story deals with it beautifully. And guess what? We mentioned the amount of cash that Saw had built up. Well, he's just added to that because his up AWP upgrade if he keeps it, as we have a look on the right-hand side of the screen, would have been free. Yeah, true. But he has swapped back to the M4. I wonder what the plan is behind that one. Maybe they're confident, Brandon, with uh, a rifle setup on the T side. I think it's also just uh, a question of the, the pace and of the rounds that's coming out from them. If you have an AWP, it really incentivizes you mm. to be a lot more slower, a lot more methodical. And if you notice the nature of a lot of these rounds that Saw are, an, are employing, it's very much explosive catching the opponents off guard, which doesn't really lend stylistically to having an AWP in the mix because Story will always be that little bit further behind. And when he's hitting headshots like this, keep him on the AK. He could be that pack player. Exactly. As you can see, he, uh, having a good map thus far. Gravity, oh, I like this. He's got the rifle in play. The M4A4 trying to fight. 
And actually, to be fair, he does really well to hit a dink on story. That activates the pistols to rush down for the trade. So on this low investment, Jocko's recovered the M4. He's got Kevlar in this round. Even though Materis is in a really strong position here as they work their way through mid with Roman. The two veterans of sort. The chance they could do something if they fight together. And in comes Jocko. Just two left for Saw. What a round this would be for 3D Max to win. Sees them pop out mid behind the smokes. Jocko trying to fight for his life. And the bullets though, and that smoke's about to be blown open. Roman, oh, does he see the USP on his left? He's fighting between two players, and he gifts Jocko a duel. It activates him to spray for more, and that is a massive quad kill for the French side. Yeah, that's one for one. When you take a look at sort of the pistol rounds being translated here on CT side. Saw had one towards the tail end of the first half, and now we get another. This gets all set up by gravity. As you mentioned, that dink on towards Story, and <laughs> just a wild kill from Jocko. But from there, he can get the rifle, scavenge it, move over towards elevators. Saw are trapped, and they have to fight their way out of a corner. But there are too many angles to deal with. But Jocko does absolutely everything. Four in the round for him. Saw not set back to square one they've got more than enough money but it might reevaluate where yeah, they want to go actually are choosing now despite the fact story threw it away of course in that previous round maybe they'll try something different in terms of the t strategy they've bought up the orpon story and funnily enough it looks like pretty max actually won't have one to fight it this time but what a round from jocko i call that his name before this map started before this series began it's a name that could do a lot of work on Vertigo and has done a lot of work for on Vertigo for this roster, dating back to the Double Pony days. As you said, set up by gravity, but once Jocko got his hands on that A4, he put it to superb use. There's a wild disparity as well between just the openings that for example, Story will go for on the CT side compared to the attack. It's all led by Jerks predominantly on this attack. Uh, and Story will be there just to back him up and try and guarantee the trade. Fun angle from Jocko, just by 51, waiting for the fade. And again, timing just eludes Saw. We're getting into the nitty gritty of the opening map of Pro League on the B stream right now. If Saw could fight their way back to a win after being 8-4 down at the half, that would be incredible for them. Oh, exercise to reveal his position. Wow, he does so well to get two still. And guess what? Mac has managed to take jerks as well. You mentioned he's the gap lurk, the gap aggressor. Well, he's been stopped this time. It's just Story and Roman remaining. They have a free-ish B site. The rotation is very quick here for 3D Max. There's a chance for a plant, but look at the utility that could come firing in. They've got a flash to play aggressive. They've got a nade to do that. It's blown open the smoke. Roman is 11 HP off the back of that. He does well to find a frag, but now his teammate has been taken down. Still fighting brilliantly. And do we need to be careful? They don't pick one by one here. It's going to be an expensive round. And in the end, Roman's efforts. It's a very nice try, but go unrewarded. 11 for the French side. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a really nice try from Roman, but that's all about the positioning there from 3D Max and how they've adjusted and what they're doing differently to what Saw was doing on their defense is that they're taking space, but they're not overextending. Take a look at exercise position, just playing on an off angle down below the stairs. That is something you don't pre-fire or pre-aim at all. If you're a T side, you normally look up high for like the close little headshot. Uh, angles. So Exile is able to get two from that position, even though it looks like it, he mm. humbles the bag a little bit on that first shot. They're just not ready or prepared. So 3D Max are doing really good in taking space and then just leaving one or two extremity players whilst having that free rifle to be a lot more flexible based on the reaction happening in real time. Exercise volleyed oh. off initially, and that's a fantastic, fantastic angle from a Rostos. Yeah, tiny bit of an experience there from Gravity. It's the only sighting we've seen of that in the entire game so far. He's been really good on his Pro League Land debut, and Exercise, oh. no, he's fumbling with utility, trying to keep himself as safe as possible, but in doing that, does the complete opposite. Gets caught with his pants down, and now Lucky, exact same thing will happen to him. You jerks, what a second that is on Maka.
Immediate hit back, Brandon. And that's the round. Yeah, it's just literally two entries on B that come from one player being caught out of position, I guess twice, because Exercise is not ready for Arostos to be so close. There's that shadow again. Jocko just trying to hold on and do as much damage as possible. Ultimately, doesn't really matter now on the T side. They've built up a bank. So Saw bring it back right into contention. 3D Max, their momentum stunted for now. Suddenly, we might see it slip the other way. And these cracks in the armor are beginning to show here for 3D Max. And with rounds coming really close and expensive, I'm not sure how their finance is going to fare for the future. Situation now. Anyone's guess this map still. Actually, you mentioned the finances. I've just committed to a low investment. And this is something di different. Now... Obviously, you I love it, but you move a bit, it. of course, being the third player on the totem pole. So he's having to look back and forth to keep himself alive. Oh. Actually does more damage, to be fair. Hits the dink and then shouldn't be allowed to get away. Oh, my goodness. Arasdos fooning away there to keep himself alive. And once they've figured that out, obviously they know. Very unlikely for A to be significantly held. So straight into the bomb plot and now saw should be safe from the 3D Max cheekiness. Yeah, of course. Look, that, that is <laughs> now on the head. Cheeky, but also scary because in CS2, I feel like it's hard just to even get a kill on <laughs> one player's head, let alone two. So the fact that Jock has been able to find a dink in amongst all of that is a testament to his skill. But how Rostos has got out of that alive, I will never know. Imagining the food music right now. I will never I know. Bunny I mean, I'm pretty sure he was safe anyway, but the extra little bunny hop just to secure it was uh, pretty impressive. We're, what could have been actually in there for a bit of a weird unicorn round with all 10 players staying alive, but in the end, Arostos does meet his demise, but he's the only player to die. Damn, really in the business end of things now. And talking of the business end, we mentioned we'd give you an A-stream update, of course. Well, Fnatic were 8-4 up on the CT side of Overpass at half. It's... Oh, yeah. 12-8 to VP now. Oh. They haven't won a single T-round. How's uh, Papa Electronic doing? is currently 13-13. to 13. Confident. All right. Um... Doesn't need to be the main point man on that roster necessarily. Just an extra insurance policy, right? Yeah, that's a that's a really fun roster because it feels like James kind of been obviously taking players and bringing them up in the tier two, tier three space. And now we finally see just sort of a investment from VP and going for just proven talent. And that just really bolsters their firepower. Um, we can gush all about VP all we want, but I want to focus in now on round 22 because it's a very important round. Story taking initiative, gets tagged by the Molly. In fact, that's Muterius as well. And they got to fall back. Jerks is on four HP. Aye, aye, aye. grabbing the control. Um, yeah, can be a bit of a, a launch into the unknown when you put yourself in that position on this map, of course. But look at this little look around the smoke from Story. Oh, it was a chance of the second. Gravity trying to answer back. There are flashes in play. And Jerks will eventually get taken down. And what a reaction that is from Jocko Matuas. Probably should have got that kill. Aros Dos fighting back, though. And he's managed to fall back. Can Roman get his kill in mid? No, he can't. Gets timinged on the swing by Exercise. And 3D Max could be about to reach map point here. 20 kills on the board for Jocko. He's low HP, needs to make sure he gets away. Arasdos creeping up on his 19 HP, and there's the find. It's a headshot to boot, and it's a clean one versus one, but it's not clean for Arasdos because he's got not got much health to work with, and Exercise is flanking, Brandon. It's a really fast flank as well. Arasdos not going to be aware of it. You can see that he's clearing up towards CT and Elevator. If he burrows his way in towards CT, then that makes things really difficult for Exercise. Jiggle spotted information, and now Rostos can creep even closer. Exercise throwing utility, but it's a Rostos with the shot. Four kills in the round for him. Saw equalized aye, 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 the now, That is line. one that shouldn't have been on the playbook for Saw. What a recovery from Arasdos, despite being so low. Again, an absolute kerfuffle toward Ramp. 
It goes away of 3D Max, and then it's these two kills here. They do kind of peak one by one there, Gravity and Lucky. A slight, maybe, miscommunication on timings on that one. And Arasdos spots the utility being fired. Calm taps on the low HP, knowing that spraying there would not be the way to go. With half the body being covered, of course, by sandbags. That is a game-changing round from Arasdos and for Saw. And uh, now you force 3D Max all in. They're, they're not playing for overtime. They're playing for 13 11. They feel like they should be winning this map. Especially with the good work they put in on their own T side. Maka with the AWP. At least there's a couple of M4s in play, but a Famous and an MP9? It's not the greatest arsenal you'd want in a round like this. Of course, it's the equivalent of 14 all back in the global offensive days. And Maka oh, no. showing his presence, misses the shot down to 46. 3D Max looked in such a great position, but they could be about to get caught out again. New Jerks knows how to play with the gap angles. We all know it. This round, Jocko didn't. Great find. Maka is forced to smoke the molly as well. The rotations might be good toward A. New Jerks, the utility. Roman's Nay deals with Maka in the end. Maka hasn't had a chance to get into this round at all. Tagged straight away, forced away, naded away. Story will find one more as well. Quick trade, and suddenly, out of nowhere, it's all down to gravity. I mean, I can just go B. Look, Arastos has just walked through that. Obviously deemed it clear. And uh, now he's in the back lines. Gravity faking that he's moved away just in case Jerks runs through the smokes. He's probably got an inkling that this bomb is now destined for the other site. He can win this kill and isolate fights. That's the way back in. Or he'll probably just save, to be honest. Find the AWP. There it is. Gravity's out of there, but that's Saw up to map wow. point. What a fight back from Saw. Incredibly impressed with their resilience on this one. Gravity trying to pick up as much as possible because they know they're going to be so limited economically in the next round. He's found a kit. He's found some utility. Every little helps in this scenario for 3D Max because Saw, in a harem scare way, to be fair, I'm going to reach map point first. Very important save at the bare minimum. It feels like gravity won't go down there. So that, that's an AWP guaranteed. But now 3D Max, as you mentioned, are fighting for their life on, here on Vertigo. Look at this opening kill. Like, the, the presence of mind to even pre-fire that angle. And it's because 3D Max have been throwing this smoke that I think was first showcased in I Am Sydney by Carrigan over towards the sandbag, but you can also throw it towards Gap where it lands on the girder uh, and spreads completely downwards, blocking off ramp. So he adjusts. Players can often hide behind it to try and get a little bit of an off angle, but not for jerks. He knows all too well how much utility has landed on Muteris, by the way. There's so much going on. It's a Rostos that burns alive, and suddenly Muteris, he's we trapped in the corner. Down. And after the heroics he's been putting in in the last couple of rounds, maybe there is a chance for 3D Max to get to overtime here. Are we going to be double walking gap again? Mentioned how common it is, but they've been forced away by utility. Good timing on that from Saw. Damage done through yellow as well. Oh, they're both getting tagged up significantly, and that actually can make a big difference in the latter aspects of this round. Mac is in position, though. Doesn't matter when Story's here. What a clear and what a shot. Four versus four, minute to go. And you've still got players on extremities here if you're sore. You do not need to commit in towards this A play. Muteris is now gutting out B. We'll come toe to toe with gravity. So it really depends on the outcome of that fight. But notice how he's already saying into the microphone, this could end B. You could walk back. Suddenly, information wow. goes both ways. Roman also gets a glimpse of the MP9s, and that's where they start to push in. That's the activation point. Jerks up high, and the bomb needs to be recovered and scarpered. 25 seconds. Materials is obviously in a fantastic position, but Gravity's come through. Story, a collateral, but through his teammate. Bomb Plump will come through toward A to win the game or send us to overtime. MP9 jumping through. Story finds one. It's very nervy now. Gravity, the new boy, pushing up close. Tech 9 is out and he finds it. Story couldn't complete the map and Gravity saves the day for 3D Max. What a round 24 that was.
Oh, blink and you miss it, right? I mean, instantaneously, Story has killed everyone <laughs> on the server bar gravity. What is that lineup? We'll have to see it back on the replay because there's a lot of moving pieces here. Here's the initial volley of utility in towards B. Mutiris stays there the entire time. Oh. I feel like Maka shouldn't be losing that fight on Elevator and they just line up. Jerk strafes into the bullet. Wow. And Gravity cleans. Okay, 12-12. We really are back to CSGO days in the first CS2 LAN of ESL Pro League. We need 16. What a round. What a game. I'm glad. I mean, I said it when it was like 3-3. I'm glad it looks like it's going to be close. I'm glad it looks like it's going to be a brawl. Well, I promise you I don't have the script. What a game. And we're going to OT. And we're playing out OT right now. You jerks. Fighting in the smoke once again. Gravity, what a huge performance it's been actually in his first ever LAN, of course. Lots more viewers chiming in now. There's uh, some matches, of course, ending on other broadcasts, other uh, on the main broadcast, of course. Reminder, this is only his fourth LAN ever, Gravity. And his three LANs before that were just regional French, French LANs with mixed teams and LDLC back in the day. And he stepped up in what must have been an incredibly nerve-wracking situation can't imagine what his heart rate would have been like in that round in his first map of pro league incredible stuff anyway 50 seconds the round at hand saw are working their way toward b and they're just gonna be flashing their way through generator is isolated arrows looking to entry uh, i'll tell you why it's not him but he grabs the space and it forces exercise into the fight jocker can only go one for one suddenly it's a four on three and the bomb already locked in gravity on the flank will deal with mutiris and that's a threat in the back line suddenly saw need to accommodate for the answer for them is to push further forward in towards ct spawn maka looking over the wisps of the smoke oh. will find jerks and suddenly all the kills are coming through gravity with that backstab and it's an exceptional yeah, i mean their health was low anyway so actually, I thought they might have just won the duel straight up, but the insurance policy of Gravity coming in on that flank so comfortable in the end for 3D Max, and it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. Now, rounds like that can look simple almost after it's been such a battle in regulation. That first kill from Gravity there on Materius is actually such a critical one. I mean, you could have easily been taken down there by Saw's IGL, and this flank would have never come to fruition. But that's for an alternate universe. This is the here and now. And 3D Max will be delighted just to settle themselves again, not just to get to over overtime, but to take the first round of it too. There's also a little bit of a bonus here as well for Gravity's flank, and that was he walked through middle in the mid round, but he didn't get spotted. So he can actually go for a very similar play and they can really run the same round back here 3D Max with that space being taken by Gravity mm. because Saw never spotted it. They saw he was on the flank, sure, but where on earth did he come from? Did he walk through A? Did he walk through mid and come through ladder? Did he walk through mid and go towards spawn? And suddenly there's so many different dynamics on it. But the point is, he didn't get spotted initially. So Gravity can look to take that space back again in this round. They might even do it with a double. Look at this. Maka leading with the AWP first, and then Gravity could go behind. It's being watched currently by Roman. Gravity will just cross the line. Roman's still looking for it, and that is a really important headshot. Gravity down. Playing a little bit more aggressive, and be feeling like he can do so now after the confidence built up in the last couple of rounds. Gets humbled a little bit, and now Lucky, well, he's got a job to do. Jocko, he's mollied out of sandbags. Matiris will deal with him. Five versus three, Ujerks on his way, and Jocko is more stuck than the stuck thing. Honestly, he has done incredibly well to get two on the spin. Actually, gives 3D Max a glimmer of hope here. Of course, they've got kits. They have one, what could be critical flashbang on Maka. But it's saw in a 3v2. Yeah, this this one's way more difficult. Way more difficult. Another re-smoke over towards the right-hand side of sight. Maka peeking over the top just to try and find anything. And Saw are going to give them absolutely nothing. Story holding on the angle. Maka 
will present himself in towards headshot. But time's running out, gents. You've ultimately got to give this a look in and really stick the bomb. And with Roman locking in that kill, sure, Maka gets a consolation prize, but it will be Saw locking in that round immediately. All level, once more, crisis averted on another retake. Inseparable, these two teams. Inseparable. We mentioned it would be a bit of a, a tier two brawl. So I've kind of almost put themselves in tier 1.5 territory as of late. Maybe they deserve to be in that category already now, but you know what these teams at this level can do. So I'm all about land now. And they're trying to deal with it in a completely different scenario, different surroundings. And 3D Max, they once again try and send you jerks, do saw up toward ramp, past the angle. But a lot of uh, a lot of manpower there for the French side this time, and the crossfire was too much for you jerks to handle. They completely destroy him, and lucky with that opening force, is saw back toward B. Timing on that smoke is impeccable from Exerciser. And this has been a very common theme for Saw. As soon as they lose players on A, they immediately reset. But the pacing of this is a lot faster. Arostos burning alive oh. to his own incendiary. That is so rough. But Roman is still carving out heads. Eviscerates this bomb site clean open. It's a yeah, free on three. Wants to have taken the B bomb site though. Well, in a, what a weird situation. It could be very similar for 3D Max on the retake. Story on Materius now last alive. Neither of them above 40 HP. This HG is going to be solid. And there they go. Great retake from 3D Max. And in the end, Arrows Dos with a real 1G. Chat will enjoy that one. Not a bit of an error, sadly, for Saw. And it gives 3D Max a 2 1 in OT. Yeah, sweet right. He <laughs> overcooked himself for real. Like I, I, well, there were there was two instances of mollies there. I mean, one was on himself. The other one was actually a really well placed one uh, in the opening exchanges that was over towards fifty one, and that completely compromised Jerks and what he wanted to do. He wanted to walk through the gap smoke that Freddy Max had constantly been putting down, uh, and then just try and fight them with flashes. Instead, he gets cooked, and then in mid movement gets dealt with by three players all staring at him. There's an old analogy in uh, in Formula One, uh, Brandon. Safety cars breed more safety right. cars because all the field gets bunched back up again and there's a chance for more incidents. Well, I kind of always have felt like two ones in overtime breed more two ones. And sometimes we could be here for yeah, quite a long time. I'm here for it. I kind of hope we are because this has uh, been an exciting opening map of Pro League on the B stream. And now saw over on the CT side. It's been a while since they're on CT. Of course. Yeah, and they've got to think back to what 3D Max were doing, and it was just consistent pressure all over the map, which means you don't need to rotate instantly if you see players scaling up towards ramp, because it could never really be the, the final concoction for 3D Max. They're just limit testing ramp right now, dropping early utility, keeping Saw Cordon towards the top side of the ramp. That Miss Molly's a little bit of a flub. In fact, oh no, Lucky nearly commits an Arostos crime. Goodness me, that would have been wild if it was two in a row. Gravity boosted up in middle, looking for the AWP of Story. What a find. And there are so many players in mid from material spots in mid to try and trade that it's not possible for him to do any, do anything. And Aras Doss standing up. Oh, he's got himself two. It was almost three. That parving was so good from Aras Doss. He really tried his best on that one. Again, we have an after plot on B. Again, we have low HP in play. This time it's the other way round. It's 3D Max. Walking wounded. Lucky one. Maka 51. Gravity 20. Of course, Saw. They try their best on this one. They have an all important smoke for the plot. This could get weird and wacky now. Flash over the top. Superb. Sends Lucky in. Why not when he's 1 HP? 
It puts it all down to Roman. Is he just going to jump on the defuse? He is. He's holding it. Knives are out. They can't find him. Surely not. Oh, my word. Last second knife for Maka. You can see it in the player cam. Huge sigh of relief. And 3D Max gets some map points. Can't believe this, really, because it felt like Arostos had done everything. There was two nades going into this retake as well for Saw, but they're slightly misplaced. No one from 3D Max occupies that space, but then it's just the proactiveness. These double flashbangs set up from stairs is everything. Roman gives it his best effort, oh. but dealt with. France or London, 3D Max don't care. 15, 13. As Roman Pierce just on the cusp at the edge of the molly. This is Saw's potential last stand. Two perfect rounds of CS. Otherwise, the map they battled so hard to get back in for eludes them wow, once more. Super aggressive. Oh, he's going to get swung on. You could see it coming, but of course he couldn't. Jocko will take that kill. Materis, the leader of Saw, fighting for his life. That's a great recovery kill. And actually, it doesn't even take much damage at all. In fact, only one point of it. Sometimes Muteris, even if he's had a poor game by his standards, of course, as the leader, does often take up the mantle and get really important kills for Saw at certain instances. This is a bit different for, different for 3D Max though, Brandon. Three walking mid, two here to defend for Saw. No! Oh. Yeah. Just immediate, isn't it? Just an immediate decapitation. Uh, and suddenly you can feel the walls really closing in, especially with this util. Maka even goes through the smoke to confirm that Mutiris is a dead man walking. Roman, the only source of hope, and he gets mollied off the angle instantly. They need to join forces. Roman and Story need to come together and make the tether a bit tighter. As he peeks his way towards top headshot, it's Story that then hits the deck. Roman versus Free, he gives up his position with the incendiary. And another flashbang spells potential disaster here. 3D Max will just about lock in the map. It takes overtime here in Vertigo, but they do it. 16-13 on the 51 floors. Okay, everybody, please welcome the newest member of our team, Map. <laughs> Did you just say Map? Trace, Trace, Trace. We are a global company. Selling dreams is a global trade. We hire globally. When that happens, sometimes you're gonna work with someone who has a different sort of name than what you're used to. That is a fact of life. I think I speak for all of us here when I say I think Maps. Beautiful name. Oh, well, it's actually Mac, mate. Oh, mapped. No, like Mac. Okay, well, Mac will be joining us. No, it's Mac. With this K. Mac. Like the Apple Mac. Like the Big Mac. Like 
Mac and cheese. Macaroni. Mac one. McDonald's. You're both wrong, you buffoons. It's Mac, as in the Scottish verbiage for make. Ooh, I was making my haggis so I was as a wee laddie last night. My family are proud descendants of Scottish blood. Not that the scabby lot would know anything about it. Exactly 12% Scottish. Is that not enough? <sighs> okay, so now that we've all learned how to say his name. Wait, we all learned. Yes, we all learned. I, I, I heard some people back there, like me, who misheard the map, map thing. The what thing? The map thing. And so you know his name, right? His name is, oh, yes, of course, I know his name. It's, uh... What's his name then? Come on, Trace, we, we all know his name. Whose name? I'm not going to repeat it again for no reason. So, it's no point. No, but this actually has made me forget. What, what's his name again? Map. Map. <clears throat> okay, well, Matt, sorry, sorry. <sighs> Allergies. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, okay, well, I'm Mac. I'm from Australia. I've got a lot of passion and love for the game. Uh, I've been doing this my whole life, and it's great to finally get to travel over here and, and do, do that alongside you folks. Yes? Uh, are you always going to sound like that? Like what? Like this! That's just my regular accent, mate. That's just how I sound. <laughs> really? Really? That's just how you sound? Yes, it's just my voice. That's how I sound. I'm from Australia. Yes, you? Hello, I'm Henry D. Greer, survivalist, award-winning botanist, and classically trained swordsman. Of what ilk was your family lineage? Are you asking me if I'm a criminal because I'm Australian? Why would you think I'm asking you that? No, no, for something so important, I take the measurements. Measurements? Measurements, yes. The measurements never lie, never. Yeah, they're a pretty, pretty lovely bunch, aren't they? <laughs> ah. Ah. Flew fucking 35 hours to get here. Can we turn the cameras off? Fucking your fuck.
Welcome back to 3D Max versus Saw. And that first map was a roller coaster. We thought Saw had answered back. We thought they'd done enough to win out their map pick. But 3D Max showing they're not just here to make up the numbers, Brandon. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I was really impressed with what they put out, especially on that T side. It felt like Saw were battling back in, but I think it's really the experience put on display by the likes of Jocko, by the likes of Lucky as well, getting some really crucial multi-kills towards the tail end of that game and surviving after all of those clutches, right? There was a number of rounds in which they allowed Saw back into that game. They always made it look like it was going to be a close contest, but unfortunately for Saw, it just wasn't enough whatsoever. For AD Max draw first blood, and now it's their map pick up next to Inferno. Yeah, that's very exciting for them. I think they have a, a great shot at actually taking this one. If they're going to continue that sort of form, uh, we shall see. We expected Saw to turn up here and you know, look pretty solid as a, a known team, of course, from the Mage. Everyone knows the, the trajectory they've come through uh, and come from. So, yeah, we've got a little head-to-head -head for you for what we saw, of course, on that first map. And even though we have highlighted these two specific players uh, in Jocko, in New Jerks, I think a lot of props, even though obviously the stats are incredibly similar between those two, I think a lot of it actually deserves to go to Gravity. He won that all-important 1v1 versus Story in regulation to take his to OT. Yeah, I feel like Gravity, what we got out of him was a really good blend of obviously being a little bit timid because he doesn't want to be that guy that makes the mistakes, especially on LAN, but he was also not afraid to really take risk. We saw that in the first round of overtime where he pushed in towards middle. He got that time in. He was ready on the backstab and he locked in those back-to-back -back rounds that really set the momentum going for 3D Max and saw they, they tried their best. We'll see some of the highlights just flow through the screen here and it really was a tale of T-sides really, wasn't it? Jocko starts off the game so strong. Jerks popping up here and there, that Deagle round springs to mind in which he was able to just disrupt 3D Max, give Sora a lifeline back into the game in the first place. But from there, it was just a tightly fought battle between these two players, especially on a ramp. Yeah, I mean, we saw that, of course, all important headshot that I think, it, I can't remember exactly what round it was, but yeah, that one that Ujax took against Jocko when he was creeping up. We'll see a replay of it, I am sure. Um, and that kind of set the, the motion for Saw as well to bring us back. We had Jocko having this, basically putting his team on his back all on his own in this round with the M4. Gravity got that first pushing down toward ramp, picked up that M4 himself, took four kills. Yeah, so much impact. There's that particular headshot I was just thinking of there from Ujax in an all-important round as well. It was that last round of regulation. And uh, yeah, I mean, that 1v1 that Gravity won out, I've got to say, incredibly impressive. Uh, as we said, only his fourth LAN before that. He was playing just three regional French LANs, of course, as well. So uh, yeah, for him to step up in pr his first ever map in Pro League when it mattered, to be the instigator for 3D Max to take the opening, uh, into their opening gambit is uh, incredibly impressive. And I think T-Sides ultimately is what's going to decide Inferno as well. You take a look at these two teams and how they play. They love a T-Side. The CT defense for both of these teams is just really weak indeed. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to kind of see how it, it plays out. It's uh, a lot stronger for, for Saw, in my opinion, on the attack. And that's probably where... Well, actually, they won't start there, will they? They'll pick mm. CT. So 3D Max will actually have the initiative for this. So it's a very important yeah, first I mean, half here for Saw. As always, like, you know, we'll, we'll, you can look past some previous results and say, okay, well, you know, 3D Max on Inferno, you know, they beat Bleed. You know, Bleed are genuinely a good team right now. For sure, those of you who've been keeping on top of it, I think they've won like 20 of their last 24 BO3s or something. So that's a pretty good win. They've also had losses this year to the likes, you know, Passion UA and, and teams like that, right, which you probably wouldn't expect them to lose to on the side of saw of course we know what they're capable of they have won this map a number of times against some big teams and some big events but that's kind of more in the past now and you can't really look at these results and take them as gospel for what could happen it's all the paper stats seem to have gone out the window on multiple of the games i've casted recently especially between these sort of uh, these sort of teams so yeah i really think so i have a great chance at answering back here i think it could be a long series 
it is all about the floor lifting for for both of these teams because you had a real disparity between uh, kills at the top of the board and right at the bottom and so whoever's team really kind of lifts the floor and everyone is sort of outputting very similar numbers that's the team that's going to win and you I expected a really good game out of gravity on vertigo now my question is really lean into maps he's not really trying to test on like inferno like overpass for example so um i feel like this should play into Saul's strength but they need to really hit the ground running and you're right throw the stats <laughs> out the window because it really is do or die right yeah, i mean we inferno. know that there's you know, plenty of chances for Saul to bounce back in pro league of course with the way the format works of course but uh, reality really is here is that this is a team don't even look at the rankings. I mean, obviously, there's a quite a significant disparity, but this really isn't a team they should be losing to, at least in my eyes. I mean, sure, Saw came up from the level that 3D Max are currently at. Maybe there's a bit of a hangover from the major. I mentioned that maybe there'll be some motivation to bounce back from that 2-0 position when then they lost three BO3s in a row, right? Uh, both all 0-2s as well. You would have thought they would have should have made them made themselves through the opening stage of the major. Uh, didn't happen, and maybe there is a slight hangover from that, but we'll see anyway. It looks like we're almost ready to jump into Inferno. Can Saw battle back? That is the biggest question, Brandon. I wonder how much of it as well is lack of prep time, because obviously Saw are, are replacing Cloud9 here. So how much time have they really had to work on in terms of anti strategy preparing for their opponents, and how much of it is a blend between them doing that initially and just playing their own game? Because a lot of it will be leaning towards them playing their own game, and that's exactly what they need to do here on the CT side already. A lot of plays scaling up Banana. Jerks is ready with a flash, but Roman's not ready for the fight. Yeah, Roman looked like he wanted to deploy his smoke there. But actually, somewhat smartly, doesn't commit to it straight away. Keeping hold of Util, of course, so critical on Inferno, and especially on a pistol round that can really change it late round if he somehow manages to keep it. Maybe forces 3D Max to run through a smoke. It is quite a slow pistol. Early presence toward Banana. As I said, almost forcing that utility out of Roman, but they're going back to that position now, and they're not, not really budged at all. And Saur have kept all their util, and he's still waiting patiently to drop it, finally after the first essence of contact. They will go in, but Jocko already deals with jerks, and there is that Roman collection from Lucky. So suddenly you're thrown into a retake here if you saw a three on four. Sure, it's achievable, but you need to get past all of these players that are now encroaching in. Good find from a Rosdos, and the third player in story oh, is late to arrive. A slight overface there from Jocko. These rounds on pissed runs especially can get out of hand, but Gravity's got a nice angle. He's playing it so calmly. Doesn't shoot when he sees that barrel come past the angle. Makes sure he gets a clean shot on the bonce. Story's taking some bonces now, but he needs two more, and that is not going to happen. Lucky finds it. 3D Max looking a re like a really solid unit so far today. I think the, the difference when we take a look at just sort of the, the fine margins between these two teams is the calmness, as you mentioned, sort of in the afterplants and the retakes. It feels like 3D Max, whenever they're put into this situation and they're now being able to establish crossfires, it feels like they can't lose these sort of rounds. And it takes individual heroics from Saw to bail them out of a scenario. We feel like there's going to be a lot more consistency there for 3D Max, potentially. We'll have to see how it pans out. Missed nades, but it's not the end of the world because Roman is still standing in the fire and the flames. In fact, he's brought down so incredibly low, and Maka's SMG will finish Finally the job. to the corner of the half wall and so frustrating for Roman. Couldn't get anything done. It may still be more players to fight, though. The CZ, ah, it's so hard to hit. What would need to be, of course, a double headshot with the CZ when you're up close like that. 5-7 is usually the way to go these days. Some players, of course, still like the fact that you know, CZ is fully automatic. You just hold down mouse for up one rather than having to spam, of course, with a 5-7. Some players still have their personal preferences, but the 5-7 is so ridiculously powerful, I don't see any reason to be having a CZ equipped these days. And 3D Max will take advantage of that. Overcome what is the full force for Saw. And the opportunity at a path to an opening 3-0 lead.
Maybe it's just for the frag movies. Maybe it's just for the... You get a CZ clip. It's like, oh, that's rare. That's nice. Obviously, that's definitely not the not the reason why. Yeah. It's, it's just comfort, as you said. But always fun to, to think, hit a CZ I think clip. in the, like, the modern era, I've only ever seen like two insane CZ clips, like ever. Um... I think there was like a famous like retake clip on stream where like Jason R like one tapped five people or something, and but again they're like from pugs, right? You don't you don't see it in professional play. You see it when you get these you know cracked aim stars, pug stars who want to just have some fun with it. So yeah, it's uh, been a long while since we've seen something like that from that sort of pistol. The five seven, however, is the opposite. Look at this flash play coming into a banana. They actually get a two for one. Really nice from saw until gravity answers back with Jocko's help. That is really good from 3D Max. Not letting saw retreat with an advantage, stopping them at the first point of call. Ooh. Shocker's got to be careful, but I, I guess he does get the best of story at the very end. That could have been a, a little bit disastrous if the bomb drops and Muteris would have activated his flanker a little bit sooner at Banana, but that's uh, a parallel. <laughs> so we, we don't live in that one. We live in the one in which Shocker lives on 4 HP and finds three in the round. His form on LAN is special. I feel like, again, we're talking about sort of, mm. you mentioned like Pug Stars, and I'm not categorizing pros in that category. What I, what I mean by that is I feel like there's obviously onliners and then there's LAN players. And I feel like 3D Max is a team that have got a lot of LAN players. Yeah, they might not have as much recent experience from what I said at the 5-7. <laughs> There's Materis. He actually could take everyone down to the bomb here. Go on. This is going to be... This is worth it. Oh, gravity just about survives. Oh, yeah, he was Gun looking either. for it. I think it was, a, a, was it a Galil or an AK on his right there he was looking to switch to? Maybe just completely missed it. Sometimes it can be weird, of course, from the spectator POV, but... Yeah, I mean, Materis has done a fantastic job there, just as a side note, to limit the 3D Max economy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Like, while they haven't had recent LAN experience, of course, 3D Max, players on the team certainly have. Lucky with G2 all those yonks ago. Maka has been on many a team, like we've mentioned earlier. So, it's there, for sure. And the calm, composed start that they've had to Pro League so far is kind of showing what we hope from them. Oh, that's a good find though, although it goes both ways. Lucky immediately trades back out onto Roman. Bernard Control heavily contested in this round. Now the guns are all here for Saw, and this creates a little bit of a pocket potentially for gravity. Rosdos tucks away in towards Short, and now reinforcements are here. The AWP is being dynamic here for Saw. Firing its way over, blocking off that motor area, of course, but seems like it's just going to be a ruse, actually. Shifting back toward B, of course, the rotation has been pulled over of Materis. This is good. Good timing on this from Story, because now he gains info. Mm -hmm. Oh, top bracket's clear. Materis go back to B. Oh, Materis. Be there quick enough, though. Okay, this is a good rotation now. 3D Max are taking a little bit longer. And that's going to allow Saw to get into position. There's still going to have to be some flashes through a smoke and some double swings. And talking of that, well, that's exactly what we see. That is brilliant from you, Jerks, and a great supportive flash as well. Gravity's trying his best, but Aros Doss says, no bomb plant for you, and just swings through the smoke anyway. Hearing the steps, knowing he's got the right timing, and that's a great round to win if you're Saw. Good coordination as well, because as soon as Story's taking that contact, by the way, Jerks drops his molly. So he buys another six, seven seconds for Muterius to guarantee he's in position. And his double swing is just a distraction in the end, because Jerks kills every single player, making inroads towards that site. Still buys available, of course, for 3D Max, but saw immediately... Drawing first blood back as soon as the rifles are here. Looking 
to fight with the FAMAS. But no, they'll fall back to sight for now. How many of these rotations can they pull in this map? In this T side. So, going to fight for that first CT round. Did a great job of reading the room. A bit of damage done, of course, to Jocko, like we said. But again, we're top mid, at least faked. We convene sort of mid. And toward Banana. And off we go again. Bomb dropped in T steps, picked up by Exercise. Once again, two players on the B site for Saw. And once again, Story realizing they might have to rotate early. 35 seconds. Now a flashbang. Oh, it's going to be thrown, but Story what? just takes full advantage. That smoke doesn't quite land. Story's hitting everyone. A triple threat from CT. Exercise can't do anything to get involved in this site. And that's the round shut down there and then. And 3D Max really need to reevaluate this mid round because, sure, you can keep rotations there initially once you drop the utility. But if you don't have a player there, at least feigning some sort of pressure, you can always have this extra rotation. Not sure what happened with this smoke here and towards CT, but Story oh, takes mean. the whole lot. Story, this is what we wanted to see from him, but even that last, that third on Lucky was particularly nice too, but you're absolutely right. Where on earth is this smoke? You see, it's a front sight smoke. It's not really a CT smoke. I, I'm convinced that's not intended. We see, we, we see front sight smokes. Yeah, I was going to say, we smoke. see front sight smokes, but I don't know. I feel like it was maybe a tiny bit off. Why would you want to face CT like that? One by one as well. Yeah, I feel like that was a little bit of a communication issue slipping in. Because it feels like they wanted to smoke off front side. They wanted to smoke deep CT and then wrap on towards church. But where was the flashbang coming over the top to prevent story? And speaking of preventing him, <laughs> you just can't. He finds the opener immediately. This one's an eco. This should always be chalked up to sort of find in this equalizing round on the board. But you don't want to get this guy warmed up early. That's a really big detriment to have if you're 3D Max. That's a really good start, of course. Knowing that it's just pistols to find, Materials is happy to fight. Need to tap down at long range. Exercise playing that weird little angle on top of the corner there. Post box he's playing on top of there, I believe it is. Jocko is, well, very dead and found easily by Roman. So, a bit of a similar pattern to the first map. We saw, of course, Exercise get that triple kill on one of, the, one of his, their pistol rounds too. Quick start, a quick evening back to three apiece. Nice from Aristos. Nice little, conf yeah, little confidence builders as well, which is important because Arastos, whilst he had some insane clutches in that game and had some good impacts on Vertigo, uh, he didn't really have the, the most amount of kills. I think he ended with like 11 or 13 in an overtime game. So for him to start off strong, uh, grab some freebies and start to, you know, feel it a little bit more comfy. That's exactly what the doctor rewarded yep. really for Saw. Back into the action. Story. You know him to be very flashy on the AWP. He can have his moments. I've seen one already. Looking forward to seeing if we can see more. Lucky forced away by the banana utility, as is so often the case. And 3D Max are prioritizing utility, of course, in, in this round. Brought up everything. A couple of Galils in play to get as much of that as possible. And the answer back is significant. Roman and Jerks both down. So 54 and 47. I'll tell you what, though, that's a lot of utility burned early if you're 3D max. There's another smoke going over towards long. So, throw an execute, sure, two smokes is potentially all you need, but you can't throw another one to, again, feign presence. So, this should be a faster round out of 3D max. Maybe just taking space in towards banana and executing onto the site would be a good remedy to what's going on. But they are still keeping players in towards brackets. And the counter utility is fantastic. The utility both sides has worked out well. Forty-five seconds. 
3D Max seem to have been balked in the last few rounds, and they could be about to go into Story once again. Oh, nice little jiggle out, but of course he's got materials to support. Can Story somehow get away? The answer's no. As soon as he misses that opening shot, it's impossible to do much from there, but Arrows Dust on the site. He's got a low HP player crossing the angle. Can he do more? He can do more than more. He almost takes it all. He does take it all. What a quad kill from Arrows Dust. The sweet rice is cooking. Yeah, really well held there by Rostos. And it's just the slight off angle in the pillar. Even with this double layered setup, 3D Max are expecting another player here on A, but they're just not really too sure where to look. One goes wide to try and deal with Pit, but he just dance around this pillar. And once again, they line up. That's back to back rounds. These players are lined up for a Rosdos. 10 kills immediately. Sora now on the front foot. The economy's broken. There's not been any bomb plants for a few rounds. 3D Max are left I really. It. But it's these sort of situations where Sora have to pin them down, have to keep them at arm's length. They know they've got them in a tough position. Can't afford these tech nines to get up close and personal. And first is put down comfortably and importantly. I don't, I don't mind this from 3D Max. You, you give A a little bit of a look in. You use a round like this with the Tech Nines to figure out the setup, how Sora playing, and you can get all of this little extraction pieces of intel for the future. So here come all these smokes. How are you going to react to us just bursting up short? What's your setup currently? Well, one's in Moto. Arostos is in towards Pit, feeling the pressure under the Kosh. The nades do a lot of damage, but his one gets the killing blow. How on earth is this guy not dead? Oh, you can do his laugh, man. He's just taken an absolutely, absolute barrage. Two HP he was to spare in the end, but his own HP is the one that actually gets the kill. 3D Max must be wondering what on earth do we have to do to move him out of position. You see his HP there? That's the one that actually takes a frag. There's another one. Actually puts him down to two, but the spray transfer is beautiful. And Story then just makes sure he helps his teammate survive by cheekily popping through the smoke with the P250. He's got the Tech 9 picked up now on the CT side. That could be monstrous. If he gets himself into an upper close and personal battle later on in this half. But what a little battle back that is from Saw. Five in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, they are uh, they're multi fragging, which is what we want to see from their stars. Yeah, timeout called as well from 3D Max. Uh, probably to really talk about the fact that they aren't really put in too much pressure beyond utility when they are taking map control. So that's got to change. I feel like as well, what Sora have done really well, we even saw it evidence on the pistol round, is that they're holding a lot of their utility until they feel completely pressured to drop it. That has to adjust for 3D Max, because otherwise Sora can just go into this and keep holding these smokes and keep recycling them right towards the mid to late portions of the round, and 3D Max will not be able to look into any bomb yeah, site whatsoever. Triple B take for Saw. Three players looking to fight for it. This will now fall away, but Story's got some nice timing. And don't forget, this is a gun round for 3D Max, and it's always so demoralizing. When you have a buy like that, you're trying your best to fight for Banana, you're trying your best to push the defenders away. You just get picked off by the AWP and already on the back foot straight away. Now, I'm going to work through long very quickly off the back of it, though, and Ujux will get caught on the line, but Story's rotation is solid. Immediately gets one, but that is a really big kill from Maka. It's now all down to Arosdos in pit. Can he do it again? Tapping away calmly, but it's exercise to vest him on this occasion, and Story is getting peppered. Even though the smoke is blown up slightly, they're going to cross, and the plant should come through. At least he's bought enough time for Roman to get in here. A very quick flanking towards the apartments. If he can find Maka, this potentially is everything because they could line up as well at Graveyard. Ooh. It's the reload exercise now spotted and Roman hits another. Lucky now caught between two different angles. Molly cuts the bomb site in half and he now needs to adjust. Needs to peek and fight these players in separation. There's Roman and there nearly falls down story. Saw just about collect it, but 3D Max, you feel like that's oh a round they flub. And you're in an after plant on the T side on Inferno, and you lose it, you always have to be looking at yourself. 
and saying, what could we have done better? Because we should not be losing those rounds. That is massive from Saw to recover that one. That second tap from Roman will see a replay in a moment or two was absolutely disgusting. The frags from 3D Max are so nice to actually work their way in. Exercise made sure that Arrows Dust didn't get any more work done from Pit as well. And that was just after then was when the Roman tap came through. Lucky really tried, but fighting through the mid box, right? Sometimes it's a bit of RNG, which way that spray battle is going to go. And the box is eating bullets. Doesn't go his way this time. Oh, wow. That's a lot of damage being done at Top Banana as well. Lucky tries to swing jerks as he's dropping u tilt, And he comes off worse for wear. So 3D Max, yeah, again, they've shown presence early on one side of the map, and now they're just committing in towards A. They've had a lot of success up long. So maybe they try and revisit it, because up until that after plant, everything was going so well for them. Oh. And here's a difference, by the way. The rotations just aren't here. I've got lots of control this time, 3D Max. The question is whether they can take advantage of it or if they're just going to let the smoke dissipate and give Saw a chance to battle back. u Jerks only has 46 HP to work with in this scenario, and then Anastas will swing past the Molly. He's been so good from that position so far, and u Jerks actually does great to find one. And Roman will make sure his teammate doesn't get caught. This is a much cleaner round again from Saw. We saw some close ones. But that is huge. All five players alive. Look what it's done to their economy. Lady Max struggling. It's seven in a row for Saw, Brandon. Yeah, that is a uh, talk about momentum building, right? I mean, it felt like 3D Max were going to come forward and sort of bulldoze this T side over. But rifle rounds have really been their downfall. And Saw haven't put a foot wrong. Story's dynamic orpin just continues to be at the forefront. Can you get a Rostos out of the pit? No, you can't. And again, that's another feature piece. Really important anchor players on A. Uh, we've seen it even with sort of VP with Norbert, right? So the fact that you have got that in your locker is a really good strength for Saw. And 3D Max, yet again, wh when was the last time they put the bomb down? Was it on the round that they won? Because we're constantly in this limbo of full gun round tech nines. My guy, Arrows Doss, has a 5kd. He's loving life at the moment. And he could be about to do some more. And he's to be careful he doesn't get caught from apartments, though. Right now, he's kind of solo. And as you can see, he takes a lot of damage from the waterfall. And Jocko we get the trade, and Materius is caught by Lucky. It's always the way Counter-Strike works, isn't it? Sometimes it's these rounds that you finally find a way to win. With story 20 HP, I'm getting the impression, I mean, they are sticking around, but they're going to have to hit some dirty shots. I mean, you always give this a look in, I feel like, especially with the, with the money that you've got. Jerks ahead of all utility, and suddenly, Story's hit a no-scope. It's a two-on-two. -two. Jocko's the only one with a primary weapon here. With Lucky on the sidearm, elevated from balcony, trying to provide overwatch, and does, in the form of deleting Story. Bomb needs to be stuck, and therefore the time can just be played out. 3D Max win the round by the skin of their teeth. <laughs> yeah, there's no saving that up, Roman. Well done, Lucky. Just make sure the clock expires, and that is a great way to get uh, to stop the rock, pretty much, and get their fourth on the board. It's been a while, but they're back. I mentioned Aristos was in a tough position there. We could easily have been caught by the apartment's push. Absolutely did. That was a lovely kill from New Jerks here, but even though Story got this no scope too, it's always going to be tough. I agree. It's great to see a team actually go for it though, right? They actually had the money to do it, knowing it's the last round of the half coming in next. And uh, so often we see teams saving in those scenarios. But that was a scenario where they could go for it. It made it fun. It made it interesting. 3D Max find a way. Can they find a way to a 7-5 half? Ooh. Potentially. Especially with Lucky finding Roman. But that's not Jerks. Uh, he's been killer on this B-bomb site. 
Drops the molly and now actually spotted on his retreat. Could be caught out as well. And Lucky going over the top of Oranges, but it's Jerks on top of Church. What? Grabs one and can find everyone. I thought he was stuck. I thought he was going to be overwhelmed. No, instead, he takes down everyone, infiltrating his bomb site. What? B site belongs to Jerks. And in fact, he might just get the whole bloody lot. It's a Rostos to lock it in, but it's Jerks with four and it's Saw with eight of the half. Idris, how are we doing, mate? Very good, and you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Uh, how was the travel here to Malta? It was good, I think. It, uh, a little bit uh, longer, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just asking Aristos about uh, you know the pressure now after the performance of the major, and there's a few more eyeballs on you guys now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like as an in-game leader, you need to be more creative now? You need to come up with new ideas, change the way you play, or is it just building on what you've got? Well, we... Our plans were to, was to to build something new after major, but with this invite or this last chance, we we kind of I'm not gonna say that we are doing the same thing, but it's similar. We we didn't change a lot, so we need to to focus on our game and let's see what happens. How long did uh, you get of notice for the invite to come to Pro League? Well, when when he one week. When, a week and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're, you're probably not in hardcore prep mode at that time, right? It's still practicing. Yeah, we we are practicing. We we have some officials. We after the major we rest like a, a week, so we didn't change a lot. So it, it is what it is. Sure. Okay. So our expectations should be what? What if we're a viewer at home? If we're a Portuguese Counter Strike fan, what should we be expecting from Saul? Partitud. <laughs> well, we, uh, we expect to, if we go to the playoffs, it's a good thing for okay. us. All right. Right. Well, Ejerks has Ew in his name, and that was absolutely disgusting, the way he ended that first half. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a sort of a, a, tra a spray transfer in that situation when you're getting swarmed upon on B with the A4. And to finish it off with the last was ridiculous, and it, it settles down sore for sure, Brandon. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> like, how's he done oh, that, man? I can't believe it. 
It turns out you're just stuck on the B bomb site with jerks. I mean, that really just capped off a fantastic CT display from Saw, didn't it? I mean, it, eight rounds, and this is normally the, the unfavorable side for them if you take a look at the stats. Hello, this is fun. Lucky has got a kill, and suddenly the entirety of three d wow. are running down mid. Mutiris overwhelmed. Lucky's found another. This is explosive to kick things off, but Kirks is yet again fighting his way out of these situations. And between him and Arostos, saw with the pistol anyway. This has got a triple on the pistol. What is this? Brilliant from saw again 3d max decide to fight fire with fire it's actually a very common strategy these days rather than sit back and let yourself get rushed upon by the glocks very often you see the ct side pushing down mid instead to try and help out lucky destroyed by Aras dos and he got the last as well and the two rifling stars that we mentioned in the pre-game that can step up for saw well, they have 34 kills between them, and we're on round 14. <sighs> that is an yeah. outrageous stat. He, li he likes the 5kd. He heard you mention it, and he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep that for the rest of the game. <laughs> Thank you, Trav. Anything for you. Now, the USPs. They are stacked. It's not the... Fnatic stack, I think it was called. The one on the back of the site near the, the uh, back boxes, but it's something that could pounce at any given moment. And they will. But that is what we call a meat grinder. The blender. Comfortable for saw. Three for Muturist to farm up some important cash on the Mac 10. And the smiles are back on faces, look. That's important for this roster. Yeah, I think so too, especially when, look, we, we've kind of seen the contrast of that with 3D Max, where every single time, even if they lose a round, that they're remaining incredibly calm. Saw also needs to kind of have sort of that mentality of, oh, well, we can have a really fun, we have a really good fun when we're winning, but also if we lose a couple of rounds, it isn't the end of the world. We can still battle back into this game. And I feel like both of these teams have shown a lot of resilience already in map one. And... I've been impressed, and if 3D Max can mount a comeback here, now that they've got, I'd say, mostly a rifle round, we'll just oh, we'll gloss over <laughs> the, the XM, but they've got things to work with here immediately, and if they're able just to grab this round and start again, just getting some rounds on the board, gaining that momentum, and if it, the pendulum swings again in that manner, then there really is a game on here. Smokes peppered. Lucky, Peppered. That's a half health already. Naka's got that XM actually in long cubby right now, which is, you know, if you get hard cleared, it's not exactly the worst place for it to be. But problem is, how can he play alongside gravity with the M4? He's going to have to hop away. Maka's going up really close here. Here we go. XM gaming. Ooh. Chance of the second, not this time. I rate it. <laughs> I appreciate it, Maka. You, you've got one, and that, that's pretty much all you could guarantee, because you've also kept the rotate of Lucky over towards B. Saw about to bundle their way, but Lucky full blind just spams, and is able to collect the kill. Jocker now tucked in. They're not ready for him. They completely overlook his angle, and he strikes the nearly the entirety of that Saw roster. A Rosdos 1v3. He's been good, but now he needs to be absolutely fantastic. Bomb faked out and now the time is running low lucky knows this and in fact just confirms comfortable and yeah i mean don't forget 3d max were three zero up in this game after winning the pistol the anti-force buy and then the conversion that's only a second round since then really important for them to hit back immediately lucky that that kill could have easily not gone his way when he was blinded up but aristos was too low to do something with it this time no matter what we've seen from him so far, that's beyond his wildest dreams if he would have been able to clutch that one, but made over the top. There goes Jocko, down to 67 once again, and we're going to brawl for Banana, of course. Natiris will deal with Jocko, but in comes Lucky, and he knows he's got someone pinned on the left. 
to let them have it for now. Patience is a virtue for 3D Max. Oh, I okay. can Being a little bit impatient there. Thought there was a slight gap in the incendiary he could exploit instead. Lucky needs to drop one of his own. Deep yep. needs to soften up these players and, in fact, finish the deal on Mutiris. And Amaka slides in yet again. Close quarters XM Gaming, but on the other side of the map. And, of course, he answers the call. Uh, just jiggling with these angles, being such a nuisance. If he gets the pump first, there's a chance. Not this time, though. So it's down to Aros, Dos, and Roman. Two versus three, but Lucky is the only one here trying to waste as much time as possible for his teammates' rotations, and he can do more than that. He's managed to get one and two, and even though he only had 38 HP, he survives it with 11 to spare. Huge for 3D Max. They're building back into this one again. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Lucky's consistency throughout this series. Uh, was I feel like we didn't say his name too much on Vertigo, but he really was just sliding under the radar in the amount of impact he was bringing to the team. And here it's back-to-back -back rounds in which he's he held down and anchored this B-bomb site. And 3D Max are probably hopeful that that acts as a bit of a deterrent for Saw. M maybe not on the guns, on, on the eco round, but on the guns. And then suddenly you can have your Orpa in Maka, who is on this XM farming all the cash, being a little bit more flexible. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... You're not wrong, it's absolutely a good idea for Maka using the XM. Just a couple of kills will mean that his bank is slightly higher than the rest. And that future AWP. He has bought yeah. the third round and, in a row. Uh, maybe he can get that future AWP finally. But for now, he's very happy sticking with it, happy to take the hit. Knowing that getting one kill is often enough. And obviously, still has that multi-fragging ability. And against the pistols now, he'd be loving it if it came his way. And he's going to do exactly that. Just pulls out a nade, switches back, instant. On you jerks. He's being tapped down from short, so he needs to be careful. And he's actually forced to face long range with it. It's surprisingly good long range, the XM. But in that sort of situation, I'm not so sure. He'll be picked up by Roman and dealt with by Lucky. 7-10. The gap is three. Yeah, I'll tell you what, conversation piece now for, for 3D Max. Working their way back into this game, and we, we've yet to see an AWP in play. We've yet to really see, uh, feel like, more than one gun round out of Saw as well. So, it all comes down to this, round 18, because this will set the tempo and the, and the path of the course uh, of where this map's going to go. I feel like that's why a timeout's being called as well, just to get the coach online, and Nabo well for Saw. Just to let his players just have 30 seconds. You see, he's not actually actively getting involved in the timeout. It's more for the IGL to get some ideas. Great alias, by the way, to saw coach. Love that. One I've uh, kept on track of, kept track of for a while. And yeah, Nabba Wow Wow. I want to just say it double, don't you? But uh, he's a great guy. Saw. So. 10-7, with a buy, two Galils, three AKs, plenty of utility, 3D Max, because of the money that they've been farming up in the last few rounds, Maka does have his AWP in play this time, New Jersey, this is incredibly stuck, has to go for a straight up duel, goes straight into Lucky and Jocko, and Muteris got spammed down in the meantime as well, this is now getting a bit spooky for Saw, we heard of course Muteris in the half turn break talking to Sponge, you know, saying how it like, exactly changed a lot, as it was a late call-up to Pro League, of course, replacing Cloud9. Perhaps the T-size will be where that is most obvious. I mean, that's just a really simple round from 3D Max. You send three players in Banana, you create a really claustrophobic angle for jerks to kind of second guess whether he wants to stay in the corner which will be to his team's detriment or swing and try and gain an advantage he was probably anticipating a lot of nades good jiggle to get maka off the line at least and remember he's the only defender here at this b bomb site and i think sora's starting to realize that as they eke out this top banana control lucky's on his bike but only eight hp to his name yeah basically he needs to be flash support. Backer is in trouble. 
And now he's dinged. 62 HP to spare. This is going to be running him down. And Roman takes it. Suddenly, this round has switched. They're going to have the bomb plot on B. They may have good utility. They've got an incendiary, a couple of flashes, nades, and plenty of kits. But this is not easy. Story smartly gets in a reload. With that one bullet to spare. So he can now fight for his team's life. Nade can come through. That could catch both of them. Oh, the damage is so significant. But Story is once again stepping up. Two kills already. Makes it three. Only eight health. Oh, I was fe feeling the flick. And Exercise has got a kit. It's fine for 3D Max. But Saw make it close again. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Those double nades, I thought we were just going to seal the deal. And yet Story is standing, I mean, with almost two broken <laughs> legs and a broken arm but his wrist is certainly working insane kills at the back of the bomb site really makes this one a contest after some really good openings especially the path in that saw took just to ensure that they had all bases covered as they cross ct they gutted out that back site of maca and from there just wanted to play a close quarters engagement on that site wanted to draw 3d max right into the trap of the orb and it nearly worked nearly worked out and suddenly, you've, you've used the last timeout now for 3D Max. I haven't got any more for the rest of the game, unless we go OT again. Yeah. This is getting, just like the first map, interesting again. Gap closing ever further. Already seen some incredible individual performances from Saw in this game. Yara's DOS holds, just his pure numbers. The U jerks hold on B to end off the first half. The pistol round, which set them on track in this half. Oh, that hurts as well. Impact player, three kills for story, yeah. didn't win the round. Well then. So near, but yet so far for story. One god tier flick on exercise was too much. Too wide a swing for exercise made it look comfortable, even though it was not. So, 1 minute 20 this time is when it looks like Saw are going to be concentrating on taking top banana, but Counter Util comes firing through again. Keeps them at bay. And Jocko actually staying put near Sandbags. Now, he should really only get one, if not zero, from this position. There is the one. He's got two. Saw just shifting into the angle, gifting Jocko multiple opportunities. And then get a man advantage for their troubles. I think that's based off Lucky's utility. Uh, he was throwing the retake U2, and it really sort of feigned that no one was up close. So Jocko gets way more unexpected uh, an overperformance is perfect though for 3d max they will never complain yeah. at the result of jocko doubling down from that position run boost here we go over the top trying to offset macker if he was here with the orp instead he isn't is gravity and lucky looking to hold down with two flashbangs as saw with 25 seconds commit b i click over the top that's a lovely first it actually holds down mouse one for the second there's a reason he does that because he knows lucky is going to swing as well lucky is up to 19 kills in this game i mentioned he's got the experience from his old g2 days of course i mentioned he's been remarkably consistent for this roster online and stepping up when it matters in Malta. Beautiful team play. It's actually, it's actually just insane. Like the, we've had both of these maps with a landslide victory in the yeah. first half, and then a comeback. And it it felt like with that pistol, with that, that Rostos and Jerks finds, you write the map off nearly because it's like surely there's no way 3D Max can bounce back in. And then as soon as the guns come out, very much like Saw did on that CT side, they are just winning every single round and they're really limiting these opportunities for Saw. And once again, the scraps that Saw have got only equate to a Mac 10 being the highest invested weapon into the round, which is a horrible sentence yeah. to say. That is vile. Well, oh. saw 3D Max in one of these on their T half. Can saw make it 1 1. Both literally in those low buy, low investment rounds, and of course, literally in maps. So 
the sort of round which you can so often see one, but already Roman down to 41. Three players for 3D Max on the A site. Their common setup so far. Right now, fully focused on not being overrun. Even just by one Tech 9 that could completely blow open the map, could take so much space and cause the CT side so much problems. They've built it up. Back to 10 9. As these are the sort of rounds that we'll be looking back on in the demo view later and saying, oh, if we had just beaten the pistols, could have changed late game. Can saw give going? them a headache. Are they wrapping A here? Are they, are they going to go through spawn? No. Instead, they're going to go through their own library smoke. But the Flash tries to create a little bit of a diversion. But Exercise and Gravity, they're in really powerful long-range angles. And you can see that Gravity's immediately overlooked. Needs some help, though. And that's why Exercise oh. alleviates a little bit of pressure. But the Tech Nine's up close. They do find a way into the site. Oh, I was worried of this, but Ujax pops his head up. Maka will take that inv invitation every day of the week. And now Story, he may have an M4 picked up, but he's got no armor on this one. Trying to put the headshot angle and does really smartly. Jocko is low, don't forget. Story trying his best with this. More damage to Jocko. He's taken him. It's down to Maka, but Story takes them all with no armor and a P250. Saw stop the rot in incredible fashion. How on earth has Story managed to not only find that angle, but then swap to the P250 and make it look better than when he had the M4 out? This is just <laughs> ridiculous. As soon as you see two kills come back into the fold after the initial bomb plant, you start to think, all right, well, this round's written off. Like, there's no way that Story can clutch up, but instead he slams shut this chapter on 3D Max and their gun rounds. Puts a stop to the momentum for now. It's back to the drawing board here. You can see that all of these rounds have been pretty expensive as well. Losing that one is nearly the final nail in the coffin. A couple of SMGs used to get Jocko up close down Banana at the bare minimum. God. Individual performances have saved Saw on this map. Without a doubt. Ah, oh, the Molotov's burning. That's... Heard. Heard. <laughs> and heard. What is it with these two teams and Molly in each other? <laughs> Alright, should I say themselves? Yeah. Two MP9s in play. Oh. oh my goodness, look at this timing. They made their way out the balcony through the smoke. This is going to be ridiculous. It's an absolute massacre. We're down to a 2v2 out of nowhere. But of course, because it's out of nowhere, because it's so quick, the rotates are so far away and they are kitless, Brandon. And utilityless. Yeah. Unless there's any on these bodies. Jocko would need to go through this long smoke. He jumps for intel, doesn't see anything over the top. That's because Rosdos is in pit, his favorite angle in this first half and story <laughs> on the site. That nade just gets rid of Jocko. And lucky, whilst he's been phenomenal, would need to clutch up in a spectacular manner. The flashbang completely wow. alienates him from where he is. And Saw will find map point. They want this to go the entire distance. That flash was so good. Poor old Lucky is just on default there, scrambling. Can barely see a thing. Knows he's between, in between two players. Actually stays alive for a lot longer than I thought. But look at this. I mean, Exercise is fighting in apps as there are players jumping past him. Crazy from Saw. A little bit more wild, a little bit more wacky. And maybe that's what they've realized they need to do to dislodge 3D Max in this game. They've got themselves map points to take us to a third and 3D Max who on pots and pans. At least they've got the French weapon for the French team. Exercise, though, can't put it to good use. Gravity has slid in towards the bedroom, hoping to, well, oh. potentially grab a Rostos. Instead, Roman's on the balcony. And I feel like these are the dominoes <laughs> just slowly falling. How? <laughs> All right. Well, Maka grabs a Famas, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that is the thinnest of silver linings, unfortunately. Let's see if this is closed up for Saw. This is a gift. Story has given them a gift in this game by winning with the weaponry he did. Stuck in one position. 
ridiculous stuff. And obviously it can't be underestimated. u jerks 4k on that anchor. On CT side, Arasdos multi-fragging like a maniac. Like a machine. Maka may get a freebie here. Actually, they do need to be a little bit careful because Aristos is low. Maka, no way! Three with the fat mass. He's pulled out the 5-7. If that's a pistol you want in this situation, I'm sure it is. He's found four. And the bomb's on the ground in mid with 16 seconds on the clock. Is he going to let u -Jerks cross? He is. He needs to win this one, but Lucky stops him. More madness on Inferno. My hands are in the air. <laughs> How? Like, what the? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I'm sure what? this time, this timing kill on Roman fine, and then he just does this with the famas. The fourth kill as well just locks in the round, but sure, it's pretty much already won. 3D Max can rotate back over to A. There's limited time left on the clock. WTF? <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what uh, what Sora's saying right now. Just in Portuguese, obviously. I'm sure there's going to be some unhappy communications after that. Oh. Can you believe it, Bri uh, Brandon? I'm... I don't know. You just uh, never see they're that. They're investing in here as well right now. Uh, and so if Saw lose this round, we're going OT again. Like, I'm just... I'm speaking it into existence because... They're, they're working with Tech 9's Mac 10s here, but they're all in. They're on double stage loss bonus. It's all or nothing. And Mac has got an XM. So. Well, I mean, listen, he's already got. He's having a poor game, Macca. Don't get me wrong. Like, but if that's the way you put forth your impact frags to make a difference in a map, then goddamn. Jocko and Lucky will team up on you, jerks. Already, they've taken a kill. You mentioned that Saw, of course, are fully invested. If they go down in this round. Got a great chance of another overtime, and look at the damage being taken. Aye, aye, aye. Surely not like this. Surely not like this. Arrasdos was going like 20 and 4. And suddenly you're, you're staring up just against the prospect of being overwhelmed. They're returning back to where this all happened for them, though, on the low buy. The low investment. Maka, shoulder spotted. Kill not collected, but Jocko will find one, and then Gravity steps in. It's a really effective crunch. And, of course, it ends with the alligator snapping down his jaws on towards Story. Uh, a Rosdos in a 1v4 that feels unwinnable, especially with the bomb completely in no man's land in top brackets. Flash, smokes, all available at the disposal of 3D Max, and with 30 seconds left, we're going the full 24. Again. You know what? I said it at 3-all in map 1. I said, I reckon this is going to be close. I reckon this is going to be a brawl. I want it to be. I want it to be a mad game. Well, I've got my wish. I'm sure Sora are unhappy that it's panning out this way, but... Goodness, mate. Gravity almost shot his teammate in the midst of the madness there as well, if you, if you may have noticed. Yeah, Aristos makes sure he doesn't go down after time. It's really important he gets at least some of the loss bonus here. Because look at Saw's money. That's salt in the wound, Trav. That's salt in the wound. He goes for the gun. He sees it in towards mid. <laughs> grabs it. It's Macca's XM. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I love it, man. Counter-Strike. No round is the same. We bloody well love it. Right. Round 24. Overtime on the horizon. Saw's full investment. What they can put together is one AK on Materis without a helmet and three MAC-10s with the Galil. We need individual brilliance once again here to pull them through. And we haven't seen this double apartment set up yet, have we? Uh, our Rosdos is now all very much aware of it, but are you now ready for Jocko on an off angle? So far, deep down banana. Lucky can even jump spot to take first contact. It's Jerks on the swing with the MAC-10. Random on Kills are not collected from both parties. Jocko needs to get out, or maybe he doesn't, because Lucky finds the kill on Jerks. I'm scared. <laughs> What's on the horizon? 
Nothing is a certainty in this game, seemingly. Gravity, the new boy, he got three players on the other side, gets one, but switches you to utility. Thankfully, Maka is there. Four versus two, switches to the AK, standing his ground. Story will try an entry, and does. And Jocko, of course, is low from earlier on. There's actually a lot of pressure on exercise here. He's 9 and 17 in this game. He's in a good position. But if he goes down with nothing here, the round is blown open again. So doable right now. Story needs to clear his corner, needs to check this angle and doesn't, overlooks it, and that gives Exercise the opportunity. Yet again, on the B stream, we find ourselves in overtime. Hell yes. More Counter-Strike. Incredible. What an incredible game. 3D Max have been so successful in the entirety of their CT on regulation at fighting in banana like that. Saw's individual brilliance from the likes of Arrowstars, from the likes of story with just a PT-15, no armor. Brought them back into it. We thought it was done. It was a 3v5 and they had a FAMAS and two 5.7s. And Maka got a quad kill. Three with the FAMAS, one with the picked up 5.7. And we find ourselves here. And now what you're seeing as well, by the way, is something different compared to 3D Max and Saw. And that is fast story. No one's really come to help out Orozdos. He's had five kills since the start of the second half. Mm. Whereas Lucky, he's been building, but now Jocko, Maka, Gravity, they've all been chiming in with important contributions. It's that team effort from 3D Max that has gotten to this point. I mean, yeah, we reached the first round of overtime and Story and Eros Dos have 46 kills between them. It's in unreal. Lucky or oh, jump spotted story. But they try in the process of that to hard clear Jocko. Jocko's been pretty impactful the last few rounds, being a nuisance bottom banana over and over again. A saw gonna fall at the overtime hurdle again. It's exercise. I said he had a quiet game. He got both to take us here. He's got another double in overtime itself. Materius and Story trying to play together, trying to play the trade game. But look who's about to play the trade game. Maka in pit. They know there's a close sight player. Oh, Maka, no! It's very wobbly. But it's okay now. Pulled out the USP. I oh, was scared for a second. But 3D Max are back in the lead. Incredible. <laughs> the only thing you can do in that situation is just laugh it off. Like, sorry, <laughs> gravity. But look, we got the round anyway. This play, Jocko and Lucky up close and down the bottom of Banana, they've been setting that up for like the last four rounds and Saw have been really unable to deal with it. And Saw also refusing just to invest a molly just in that area. So it gives it a lot of space. This is, that's the nervy bit. Yeah. It's all okay in the end. My heart rate went up a little bit, but. So did his, I think. Sure, Macca's <laughs> was double mine. Oh, we've got some heads in hands, Brandon. When I, you know what I mentioned? They were all a bit smiley earlier on, and they were, seemed like they were enjoying yeah. themselves again with the plays being made by Arasdos and Story and New Jerks. Well. And strikes a cruel mistress and it's disappeared quickly. I, uh, in the UK, obviously, do your A levels for going to uni. Mm. I did one of my A levels in psychology. Okay. Uh, so I regard myself as a bit of a body language expert. Uh, okay. That didn't look good. <laughs> you know what? I'll trust you on that one. Materis finds Maka in the following round, but the hit back is instant. 4v4, off the bat. You can usually do say that an early one for one kind of does favour the T side. Gravity. Is he about to push forward on a timing? Does he have a flash of exercise? Yes, he does. From pit, in we go. The angle held in boiler is nice, though. That means it doesn't blind him up so much. And lucky, oh, it looked like he wanted to play off of that contact, too, to try and crunch on mid. Doesn't choose to go through it, realise that there is nothing seen just yet. They know the utility's there, they know the presence is there. You can tell they do not want to take risks right now. Oh. Not ideal. 
bounces off a, a tile on the roof. Roman might still find gravity here. Gravity presents himself. And that gives Sora an opportunity. Foot spotted as well from Lucky, which means that yet again, a lot of reliance is placed on exercise. Behind a truck. Oh, shown his position. Doesn't look ready for apartments and is not ready for apartments. Lucky only finds one. And it's a 1v3 for Jocko. He's miles away. He's, of course, the B player. Saw. Know that. And just like Vertigo, it's funny, isn't it? We are evening up at 13 all again. Of course, that is when 3D Max pulled clear after that. But so far, the script is very similar. Jocko definitely wanted to give it a go. I mean, he absolutely can have a look to see if he can tap down the first. If he did, I think he would have tried. But of course, an AK to save in overtime is pretty precious, especially on CT side. Boom. Yeah, I feel like for 3D Max in this round, they were trying to really get up in the face of Saw and be really disruptive to their default. Has been working on Banana, hasn't really been the same case over towards top bracket. They've not really shown that. So it's a nice idea. But ultimately, they don't set themselves up with utility and the trade space and it's not quite concrete here. You can see the disparity between Gravity and Lucky as he goes for an attempt to control. And from there, all these pieces are just so far out of position that they're hard to kind of recoil back into a crossfire here if you 3D max. Yeah. Looking at the, uh, the coaches, of course, as well, seeing how they're coping with it. Wazink, of course, with 3D max, and the Bow Wow of Saw. Stoic faces. Maka with the orb out again, of course, in overtime. Story to battle against. Materius, oh, he's about to be peppered, isn't he? Utility coming through. Jocko is once again going to fight for this one. Bottom Banana is his home, it feels like, on this CT for 3D Max. Look how many players on the other side of this smoke. The Molotov is about to spread them wide. And Jocko, oh my goodness. It's so nervy, and he's not to know what's on the other side of this. And yes, he was lost inside of it. He was lost in the source. And Ujerx takes him out. That was a ridiculous reaction, though, from Jerx. Just to immediately find him. Needs some uh, Ujerx moments of magic here. Once it inspired Saw towards that 8-4 half, Maka now peering over the top of the smoke in case there's a jump spot, in case there's a boost. There's currently absolutely nothing, but there's about to be a commitment onto this site. Maka now swinging, jerks, nearly gets the best of him with nades in his hands, but instead it goes the other way. Lucky from Fountain chimes in with Maka, and the B defense holds for four kills. And Arostos on this lurk can only sit back and collect exercise. Well... Obviously, he's going to give this a go, but Mac is about to hold the line. Will miss the shot. And unfortunately, with 30 seconds on the clock, that Molotov. Not just to put a stop to things. I'm not counting a Rosdos out of anything in this game. Flash over the top. They are kind of split up right now. Obviously, they're not wanting to fight. And 13 seconds, they should realize one of them could just run away at this point. The CT player, I think, should be running away here. Nine seconds. They are hiding, and that's the correct choice, and there shouldn't be a problem. It's a great reaction, but two seconds, and as I said, Lucky is making sure he's hiding. Goodness me, another incredible nice drive from Aros Dos, but Lucky does the right thing for his team. That was that was sick though. That, like that little flash that Arosdos threw that yeah. bounces is just kind of off like the angle of the banana and goes over the half wall. You feel like it's all said and done, especially when the Rifler and the Orb just combine and have free reign over B. But Arosdos really gives this a conversation. Some sharp shots, but as you mentioned, just the experience. Knowing the time's low, you don't need to commit to the fight. A guaranteed win, because the bomb can't be planted. 
14. It's 2-1, and it's a Rostos in the smokes. He's right no. behind them all. Oh, this could be a sick play. They're not ready for him. They line up as well. A Rostos collects two. It's a bit nervy, but he grabs it. Okay, five versus two this time. This is where 3D Max pulled clear in map one's OT on Vertigo. Sora keeping it close now. Arasdos has reached 31. I mean... This is insane. He's just making individual plays, which are incredibly successful for his team. He finally will get put out of the round, but Ramity will shift into story and exercise his left last alive. 14 all it is. And just like Vertigo, it's global offensive fashion to see who gets the 16 first. Or if we go ever further... Bomb dropped on long, still watched by Story. He's trying his best to fake out the shot. And actually, hang on a second. Can exercise hop away? Surely not. He knows the ops there. Oh, he tried to foon it away, but not to be. Story catches him on the angle. And it is the confirmed 14 all. That was close. That was really close. <laughs> he nearly makes it around that corner. This is better. And this is the position of power that Saw has. Even get a little bit tricky with it. Taking risks uh, against 3D Max. But Rosdos just capitalizes off it beautifully. It's scary how you throw any single one of these players, though, in a 1vx situation. And it always feels like they can win. That's the level. That's why I wanted to build up exercises, attempt a little bit. Because once he got the, the fake out, once he got the first kill... If he managed to get past that arch angle from Story, then, you know, he could have made it a little bit more spooky for Saw. But in the end, no worries. 14 all. Arasdos in a power position. And once again, he'll take an opening kill. Gravity. Maka trying to pounce. He's got teammates coming in from apps. And actually, they do go one for one. And Jocko, that asked me how. He's got a second. Story's under a lot of pressure now. He needs one more, really. So close on Lucky. But Lucky takes it. And despite the health and exercise, when it's a 2v2 on a bomb site on Inferno, you always feel like you have a very slight advantage. If Saw go through these smokes on a timing, that could be crazy. And Exercise actually does go one for one as well. It's all down to Lucky versus Roman. Roman on the timing. Lucky on his timing. And 3D Max have map and series point. Oh, sweaty hands, though. That really felt like <laughs> that one-on-one -on -one should be closed a little bit sooner. But yet again, very much like Maka's endeavors. Lucky's able to close it. Instrumental in this round, by the way, is him and Jocko. Carving open this a bomb site and the decision as soon as a rostos takes contact in towards short you just try and mitigate him by going over the top through the balcony some really clean entries and the head sticks out the smoke for jerks and as you mentioned series point saw need this to stay within this best of three on a game is it about to come to an end oh my word the he smacks Lucky right on the neck of extra damage takes him down to 40 but Materis that is a bit of a misplay top mid isn't it was he blinded up by his teammates flash there with the, with the timing off yep believe it so it wasn't long yep damn oh hello yeah showing that Maka is happy to rifle out this round and they have a 5v4 lot of responsibility here on Jerks as well. Soul player in Banana needs to be sure that it's going to be this commitment before calling in a rotate. And he's right not to send them over because currently the bomb's going to make its way back through middle. Mac is going to be the only player here. Jerks is going to see one smoke. And I wonder if that's going to change his mind about whether players are committing. Oh, it does. Oh, wow. Oh, no. So... Ah, oh, he just changed his mind back again. Roman needs one. He gets one, and he's still hiding as well. That's incredibly impressive. And Story has found his kill too, and Arosdos is still hiding in pit. They didn't know. And he'll even get the last as well. He's hit 35, and we've hit 15 all. We go again.
Hide and seek on A. Uh, and 3D Max can't find any other Saw players. They're just nestled into all of these little tricky corners. And when the times run so low, you can't clear everything. A little bit of a faux pas here as well with Lucky just team damaging Maka. But ultimately, his fate was always sealed when the AWP swings. Cannot believe a Rostos goes unchecked. But that's the nature of time. It's such a burden when you have got so many different angles to clear. You have to take those calculated risks that no one's going to be there. In fact, Saw is in every single damn corner. <laughs> uh, in any laugh, sometimes. Saw so, getting away with it. Thanks to their own brilliance, it has to be said. But once again, they escape, and 3D Max is on that point, and series point. We'll have to wait for another overtime, perhaps. A little boost up. They try and send Roman top banana. He tries to clear every single angle possible, but that just makes it an easy kill for Lucky. I think the rooftop blocks Lucky's sort of view of the flash fast play in towards boiler now but story will find exercise they think that creates a gap over towards long and they'd be right they might even wrap in towards b story now gets ahead of that info but now the crunch is on how many players are up banana it's just lucky mutirius on the boost will clear him and now all eyes can turn back towards ct mutirius oh. needs a couple and he has found two at the bare minimum with jocko low Wow. Maka clearing out story. This round has completely turned on its head. Okay, Aristos, one versus two. If there's one man you'd want, it's him. Has he been spotted out? Big swing coming. Maka on the line. Very hard angle to face if you're the CT side. But Aristos finds it, and Jocko's health is so, so low. He's got an HE, but of course he'll pick differently. Oh, the balls from Jocko. He peaks while the utility is being thrown, and that's perhaps the only way he wins that one versus one. So sick, isn't it? He had to do that, though. Yeah. As soon as the first bit of utility is going in, you see he's not sold on it. As soon as the nade gets pulled out, he's flying through the air. The last thing Arostos going to swing, he's going to expect, is that swing. There's those flashbangs being blocked, by the way, by the roof. And from there, it's the immediate decision to commit in towards B through CT. It's the pace out of 3D Max that completely catches Saw unawares. They draw first blood in an important T-side round. We said no. it might be dictated by the T-side. No. I didn't think that would be the case now, but Lucky's found two openers. Through the Molotovs, through the utility. He's still got 93 health. He found gaps. He was a worm. He was a ferret, slinking into every single angle, getting away with it. He's a sneaky animal. <laughs> He's one sneaky animal. Oh. Incredible. I mean, I was going to say in that previous round as well, I mean, it's a small point, but maybe Saw will be regretting later on double fighting CT on the double flank, right? Maybe they could have played yeah. a crossfire, one on the boost, one in, uh, in church. But anyway, that's in the past now. We have to see if Lucky Terrorics can give 3D Max a two round lead. It's a good decision made by Saw, though, at the very least, when it comes to juggling like their defense. Story, the only player present, but that means that he can be alone because he's wielding the AWP. So he'll find Lucky, and now suddenly you've got this crossfire between Pit and Mini Pit. Oh, well, they know there's a certain man here by the name of Arasdos, and don't ask me how he still finds one. This time, though, the second player is Materis. Oh, the captain steps up. Captain Fantastic for Saw in another super tough situation. I mentioned that so often he can be the man to save their bacon, and he's done it again. And that's the benefit. That is the exact reason why Story is there by himself. Because it just enables this. Notice how they were not ready whatsoever. 3D Max was so committed to the idea that they killed two players on B. There has to be another rotation over there. Nuh uh. No, there isn't. Completely overlooked his Mutiris. And he saved Saul's bacon, at least for now. Hello. What? Oh, Lucky knows it. <laughs> Goddamn. Oh, 
Oh, they made oh a sword. Mako and Jocko is ridiculous as well. You nearly got a man advantage. I'm going to be very nitpicky for a second. I think yeah. Gravity will be a bit upset with himself that he chose to trade Mutiris from the cart angle where the middle of the balcony is kind of getting in his way of the duel. Yeah. A wide swing from short, a comfortable wide swing, normal wide swing, I think gets the job done there for 3D Max. You could afford to be nitpicky though because it is so closely contested. Wow. That swing comes at the perfect timing. And yet again, the victim is Gravity. This commits 3D Max into this B play. Mutiris what? is going through the smokes, but so too a 3D Max. What is what? happening right now? That's nearly a team kill. Instead, Lucky finds Mutiris. And Roman's still on the back side in amongst all of this. Surely they know. Maybe they don't. No, they don't. Lucky gets taken down. Roman can still do it all. Oh, oh, it's so close. And then that's when Maka holds CT for Story's rotation. Look at the smile on Maka's face there. I think they know that the madness that they're creating, they've just got away with ridiculousness once again. <laughs> what was this round? Can we see this? Even the even CT the moment. First kill. Oh, yeah. Let's just watch it play out. I mean... What? He nearly shoot. He nearly shoots exercise. <laughs> Pandemonium. Uh, uh, what a what a kerfuffle. I'll tell you what though, that could be the difference though. That's two rounds on the T side. A, a yeah. game in which T sides and T rounds have been fleeting, few and far between. Ah, uh, yes. Well, what a first series of Pro League on the B stream. Let's just say that. Uh, VP Fnatic has gone third map, by the way. Oh, damn. Respect to Fnatic. VP warming up a bit with Electronic. We saw, of course, Fnatic were 8-4 up on the first map, and VP pulled it back to, like, 12-8. That's the last time I checked. Obviously, they converted that one, and Fnatic have hit back. Fair play, Fnatic. Anyway, that's the A stream. For those of you with us on the B stream, high five. I hope you're having a wonderful time watching what's going down. Mental. This game is <laughs> mental. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, anti flash setup, but double stacked. Yeah. Gravity to take first contact and bait Lucky in. We've seen a lot of these boosts over towards the balcony. Surprised, I guess, in CS2, the spam isn't really as relevant anymore through the balcony window. Yes, not a huge amount of damage. I mean, if Roman commits to it, there is a chance there if he gets is. the right angle. Ooh. Oh, you get set of the smoke. Maka has to be ready, and that is a great shot to take. Lucky to step forward for more as well. He wants to put this series to bed. We'll fall back toward the back of the site. In position. Flashes will come over. Great catch of materials. But Story trades it. Look where Aras Doss is. He gets two from Boiler. He's on 40 now, and it's a 2v2 once again. Jocko creeping forward, Story holding the line, beautiful kill. And now Lucky, who has so often been the point man for 3D Max on this map, has to step up. Roman's crept forward to a very nice angle. I don't think Lucky's going to check it. Smart work from Roman there. It looks simple, but it secures a scary situation, and these teams continue to stay stuck together. I'll be honest, again, this is all on a Rostos, but because Mac is just locking down this B bomb site. Sure, Story finds one kill back, and then Rostos deals with the rotating players immediately. Right at the source, towards top mid, and suddenly, look, it's 17 each. You've got this rebuy, of course, because it is OT, but I... I all the strats go out the window at this point. When you're so far deep into this game, you're just trying absolutely everything and anything to get your team an advantage. So often we see it, right? I mean, it's just the back to the matter at this state of the game, this time of the game. Man, this is often the where we ah. go. Oh my goodness, Choco is reloading in the open, but he actually gets away with it. Wow, he's got teammate support. Lucky boy. I say lucky, it was planned. Four versus two. Meteoris and Arasdos. 
trying to be extra careful here, 3D Max. They did flash into the angle to look for it a little bit quicker, but just hold the crossfires. Don't do anything too crazy, and there we go. Gravity, who has been struggling a little bit in the midst of the madness in this map, gets an important kill for him. And Materius knows that it's very likely 3D Max have another map and series point to come in. But... If Saw win this one round, then we go again. Of course. It's not. Yeah, we just, we, we could have more. There, there could be more. I want that. And Saw potentially looking to just extend the life cycle of Inferno. And you're completely right. If 3D Max just win this next round, guess what? The, the game's over. But if Saw yeah. somehow stabilize, they take this next round, and then they win out in OT, there'd be another map of this. <laughs> I hope it does go all three, just purely for the content. For the culture, the cult vibes. Exactly. Like, this is just ridiculous. This is certainly is... this has certainly been one of the best of threes of all time. My question is, how is a roster getting forty kills who's got long sleeves on? Like, when I ever, <laughs> like, I just get like, oh, there's friction there. Like, <laughs> yeah, how's it, doing that? it would, it would, yeah, low key that would piss me off too, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, well. Let's just add them up again. We've been doing it basically the whole game. It's it's 72 for 72 the between those two. Goodness me. Anyway, we're here again. Can Saw do it again? I mentioned the two ones breed two ones analogy in the first map. Didn't really work out that way, but let's see. I promise you no Carter Jinx is here because they don't exist. Yeah, unlucky guys. Be <laughs> <Really> real. <laughs> right, one minute twenty. Arrows Dos creeping forward in apps again, trying to do work again. Maka will get an opening kill again, again. New jerks will go down, and this time it could be going their way pretty quickly. Gravity's fighting with a five-seven out. Wow, two v three for Saw to try and answer back. An exercise is lurking around. He could have a kill on the side. What's the timing like? Oh, no way. Materius gets into apps just in time. Yeah, but exercise is ahead of it, though. Uh, yeah. Materius isn't going to come back and check second mid. This should be a kill locked in for free, unless he walks out towards the balcony. He turns around. He considers it just for a moment. What? Oh, this is so weird. He's just tailing him. Surely exercise has got this kill locked in. Materius has just spotted him as well. And that could be a guarantee. Instead, it's the adjustment and it's exercise closing the show. 3D Max do it in two in the most unlikely of circumstances. What a game, Trav. What a oh, game. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. All I'll say is that I bloody loved it. And honestly, I think 3D Max will be absolutely loving it as well. That second map for Saw, I mean, they'll be looking back on it and probably thinking to themselves, what's actually just happened? Like, we, we, were, we were the favourites, sure. A little, like, you know, slight favourites. That their form hasn't been amazing lately. But 3D Max uh, have not been doing as well as Saw have lately. Full stop, right? And, oh. yeah, for them to get out of it with this, unreal. Think about the heartbreak of this game as well, by the way, if you're Saw. Uh, think about the, actually just the heartbreak of this series. You're on Vertigo, you form that comeback, you've made it all the way just to battle in to overtime. 3D Max take that away from you. Then what happens is you go on to Inferno, you start to lead 8-4. Sure, 3D Max put up a little bit of resistance, but it's this round right here. Oh. Three kills on the Famas. There were two Famases and four five sevens brought into this round. And yet somehow they battle back into OT. I mean, that's the round they're gonna be looking back on. I mean, like, the overtime will probably just be a blur to them at this point. You look back on the round where it says 5v3, you know you've got 3D Max on literally, well, one pot and two pans. And yeah, it's unbelievable that they've got away with that. Thanks to Maka. I mean, he didn't have the best game individually himself. He had some really important impact kills in overtime. But that one round, oh, unbelievable. I can't. I honestly, there were so many just hero moments just in that game. Uh, Arosdos, by the mention, we haven't even mentioned him, by the way. Got over 40 kills that map, and his team didn't win. What did Story do? He had an incredible clutch with a P250 and no armor. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, you jerks had that incredible 4K. Just think what, what this scoreline would have been if Saw didn't have incredible, like, what felt like one off performances in certain rounds. It would have been a comfortable regulation victory for 3D Max. But they're stars. You know, frag hard. We know they can. They did. But it still wasn't enough. Incredible. No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm just I'm just so impressed because look, you've you've got players really showing up when it matters. And sure, gravity fell off a little bit in that second map, but he's got the experience, they got the support just to kind of have these players around him. Maka really came into his element towards the tail end of OT. Exercise really stepped up in those last two moments. He was the guy that clutched to even put Inferno overtime into a question. Sure, it needs two overtimes rather than one, but 3D Max sends Saw down to that middle bracket. Yeah, and that is definitely a little mini upset, right? I mean, they'll play the winner of yeah. uh, Fnatic and VP next. Next, and they're in a third map right now, I believe. So, you know, it's, it's super interesting for them. I've got to be, I've got to, it's got to be said, we we're going to be talking about Saw saying, oh, it's a you know, questionable result for them. Muterius kind of said in the interview he wasn't exactly, you know, too confident that the playoffs would be an amazing result for us in Pro League this season. And 3D Max showed why they deserve to be here. They got here through, I think, was it winning uh, ECL season 46, if I'm not mistaken, or he's qualifying through that tournament. And yeah, I mean, even with Gravity instead of Hadji, Gravity's only their fourth LAN, of course, and the three previous were regional French LANs, uh, has to be given a huge amount of props. He was a little bit slightly quieter on Inferno, but still had really important impact frags. You have to remember the 1v1 he won on Vertigo to take 3D Max 2 overtime to begin with against Story. Uh, yeah, I think that their main piece is delivered. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I just what a banger that was. I just checked the the VP Fnatic score. Uh, Fnatic are in the lead on Ancient on that decider map, which is crazy. Let's focus back in on here though, because MVP of the game. Um, for, we had to kind of give it to one player. Your aim high MVP is lucky because he was just fantastic, not only on Vertigo, but also on Inferno. He single-handedly kept 3D Max in that game the entire time. Yeah, he was the one man answering back right on Inferno. It was the Arasdos story show. They had like, what, 74 kills between them or something? <laughs> the last time I checked, I can't remember. It's, it's just a blur, isn't it? But uh, yeah, Lucky was superb throughout the entirety of the series. And I may even before the series got on the way that you know he had a lot of experience from his g2 days he very often has been fragging very consistently for 3d max online the question of course always is can you translate it to a big land can you translate it uh, to the biggest league in counter-strike and well he's making memories in malta yeah, and I feel like what's really good as well, just for this 3D Max team, if we take a step back and look at them in its entirety, the one thing they've never really been able to do is actually, when they come to these lands, start off strong. They've always been fighting on the back foot. And sure, there's more chances in Pro League for you to make it through to these playoff stages, but to actually win that opening game, to give yourself a little bit of an extra buffer, like an extra life, it would seem, that's really promising for this team who are only going to get better and better, potentially as they warm up into LAN environment. Exactly, and gravity is only going to grow and grow, right, as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a great sign for them. Um, I'm hoping we're going to have an interview uh, sooner rather than later to have a chat with 3D Max. Uh, of course, we'll let you know when that will happen. But uh, yeah, actually, we're ready right now. How about that? Producer, I love you. I believe we're almost ready to switch over and have a chat with 3D Max on the interview. And I hope, Maka, hello, can you hear us? Hi. Yeah, sure. I hear you. Maybe. I can. <laughs> We've been a long you delay. Sorry about that. We'll try and deal with it to the best of our ability. So I'll give you a quick and easy question. <laughs> Madness in that series. With Gravity, how is your team feeling? Uh, we're feeling like pretty good because we saw some resiliency in this game. We were uh, like struggling a lot in Inferno and also Vertigo on some some rounds, but uh, we saw the great mindset to to be able to convert the rounds that were uh, important. I think so. Pretty happy about that comeback on uh, Inferno. So good. Yeah, uh, talk to me about this mentality. How, when the going gets tough in not only Vertigo, but Inferno, you're able to still remain 
completely level-headed and build your way back into these games? What what goes on sort of in those timeouts? Um, so basically, we had like a clear game, game plan on CT and also T side. The one on T side, we got lost and confused, but on CT side, it went well. It went uh, the way we, we thought it would it would go. So it helped us a lot to build around that uh, could make the difference. So it's one of VP or Fnatic for you next. I believe they're doing battle right now on a third map. Of course, VP with Electronic, very exciting. Uh, would you like to face them? Would you like to put down the big new talking point? I'm sure you would. Uh, of course, it's uh, we come to play those games to play like the biggest team in the world. So VP right now, even though they made the uh the switch in the, the player i think it's uh it's pre pretty exciting to play those kind of player on land so let's see well thank you very much much maka for talking to us and best of luck for the rest of the tournament thank you thank you guys <laughs> All right, we, we, we work with that to the best of our ability. I hope that was okay, guys. Sorry, that's out of our control. But uh, yeah, it's still great to uh, hear from Maka. And yeah, honestly, I think it puts them in great stead. I, I, I think it's a sort of result, first game of the tournament, which just absolutely energizes you for future matches, right? Yeah, it does. I feel like we're, we're on TV and we're sort of <laughs> play between the, the reporter on the ground and in the studio. Or well, speaking on the studio, we're going to swap out as well because it's Neo and Scriv taking you through the next two best of threes. It's Vitality versus the Sharks coming up after this. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right way and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, you see a couple smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Bonjour, I'm Karine, an eSport communication coach and team counselor. Where others over index into performance, here at 3D Max, we choose to focus on the strong human connection within the group, enhancing our fragile and ability through the power of love. French Counter Strike is a delicate construction of romantic relationships and interpersonal conflicts. It is my job to identify any potential boiling points on the server and offer guidance as emotions run high within the team. Our full French unit comprising of Lucky Joko, Exercise, Maca and Gravity not only uses the smoothness of the French language for peak server side communication, but has learned how to harness the passion behind the keyboard board to elevate our in-game potential. Where previous French rosters failed to maintain emotional equilibrium, the learnings of their failures have paved the way for a formidable French renaissance built on the foundation of friendship. The Shocks and Smith's legacy
some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. It was more than enough to afford an AK. Yeah, you're right, so actually that was all by design. They want to send him in first as a sacrificial lamb. If he gets an opening frag, amazing. He's the only player that can jump through those flames and make it happen, and they're going for the hunt here. Good smoke. Might thwart their efforts. I think they'll give up the chase. Not worth it, Norbert. Keep that in your hands, mate. Oof. Big round, though. <laughs> Fnatic. There's an evil laugh just yeah, there from I the Fnatic side. <laughs> well, they know how dirty that is, right? You win the whole round on a jumping Mac 10 out of Crims. Maybe we, here we get to see it again from his POV. Here it is, Henry. Bam. Mid-air. Yeah, lovely. Head shred. Exactly like you said. No Kev. No Kev love. And that's just a well-read situation. Like you said, he could afford the AK-47, but by design, the MAC-10 in the right scenario can be one of the best guns in the game for that exact reason. Um, good stuff. Fnatic now in the driving seat. One away from series point. Flashes over towards middle. Red Room already smoked off. We'll see if they can actually get some control here. But there's once again posturing outside the A bomb site. Oh. Wow. Well, Flick gets a freebie, spams down Mattis towards the K position, smokes it off. Body in a very precarious spot now. Can only really make his way towards middle. Or does he try and push through on the reload? Hello everybody, welcome into ESL Pro League Season 19. We're continuing on here. Some fresh faces on the B stream, of course, but uh, not messing around. We are very much looking forward to getting straight back into the Counter-Striker. Long series there for Trav and b Dog for sure. Um, an absolute barn burner. So it does mean that we're pretty much ready to go into our second series. It is uh, Vitality up against the Young Sharks. And yeah, of course, joined by Naokai for this one. How are you feeling about this series straight out of the gate? If 
Sharks, we were just talking about this now, right? If Sharks are able to pick up a win here, <laughs> this genuinely could be one of the biggest upsets um, in the last few yeah. years. Like, there's, there's no two ways around it. Like, the Shark side um, from their region are not even particularly seen as one of the biggest names in that region, especially at the moment where post-major, we've got such individuals who are making really good runs. Legacy looked okay. Payne looked great. Imperial finding their form and, you know, bringing us to the, you know, the best looking youngsters in terms of the entire region. So to have Sharks as the representative here was definitely not on our bucket list. Uh, let's take a look, right? This is their path to how they got here. They came through the open qual. So they beat Legacy in their opening best of one, and then they got incredibly lucky. I think they'll take it themselves. MIBR lost their best of one to Aldia Amigos, right? Uh, uh, Adali Amigos, I think is how you pronounce it. Adali Amigos. So uh, MIBR lost their best of one to them. So they ended up taking them on in that upper semis, essentially. And then they beat Pain in a three map affair. And it was a very scrappy game at Counter Strike. I rewatched it again yesterday and uh, there were some moments that were pretty tough, right? I think Payne woefully underperformed, but I think Sharks really stepped up to the moment. So they've got their qualification here. They definitely avoided the harder part of the bracket. So I'm hoping now, with which is basically, this is Vitality, you know, the first true test. I want to see some spark. I want to see some magic. Bring some of that kind of, you know, South American flair, but it's a big ask. Yeah, absolutely. I think they will be kind of realistic about that as a team. Um, you know, you can see them together there, just sort of getting into the mindset. But uh, it's always a region, I think, that, like you say, the passion is kind of how we call it, really, with these uh, Brazilian teams in particular. And I, I think certainly that does spread a little bit more into our um, Iberian teams over here in Europe that you and I are a bit more familiar with. They can be very, very scary. They can... Um, sure. just work on the momentum. I think as well, they do really well with like the level of belief and respect, if that makes sense, you know, belief in themselves, respect of their opponents and displaying the correct amount going over um, and, and making sure that they're not sort of playing scared, but then also not playing completely overconfidently. So it is going to be a bit interesting for Vitality. At the same time, this is obviously one of the best teams uh, in the world. Major winners here. Uh, Mezzi coming through after that, you know, and, and indeed uh, Flames alongside him. These are two younger guys who have not got as much um, in the trophy cabinet since joining Vitality, but still best team of 2023. Yeah, and do you know what, though? The, the thing with this, uh, this major run that you have to now take into kind of a little bit of a grain of salt is actually the, some of the wins they did pick up. You know, you're looking at Mongols who didn't quite look themselves. The big one for me is Cloud9, who we now know has just imploded, right? You know, that was a team with uh, just bad vibes. Just, you know, we're really, we're really looking all too too cool over there. Uh, and now, of course, we know that, right? As of especially the last, well, yesterday's uh, announcements of Minus Hobbit and, and Perfecto. So I think, you know, while the C9 victory looks good, um, I think it's the losses to FaZe and Eternal Fire, especially to me, that feel a little damning. Yeah, it's the best of one, though. So we can give him you know, a little bit of uh, leeway and leniency. But the big thing for me is Vitality had a lot of time post-major. No IEM Chengdu, have, you know, you know, weren't flying across the world to go and play in that. So they've had a hell of a lot of time to come in towards this event, fresh, first of all, rested, which is, you know, at times a bit of a rarity in the tier one scene, and then also prepared, right? They know who they're coming against, what the goal is. And for Vitality, the goal is Anything that isn't a win, it's not good enough, right? I think they they they, they said that themselves. They, have, they hold themselves to the highest expectations. So that's what we're looking at towards. This is the team ratings at the moment, of course. No surprises that the chosen one had a 1.35 rating. And Spinks and the one has been so damn important to this team. When this guy gets going on the rifle, he is unbelievable. The big difference I've seen recently, Flames on his anchoring on that CT side has been so reliable. This guy kept Vitality alive time and time again at the Major. So I have a lot of respect for what he's been doing recently. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, you know, uh, the Mezzi stats are maybe a little bit um, lower in terms of like the impact, in terms of what he's able to do behind the pack, as it were. I think one of the best and most willing, I think, ultimately role players within the game at the moment, um, alongside Apex, you know, they can pick up a lot of the slack, but they have to be careful with where they're at on the leaderboard, where they're at in yeah. the fragging, if that takes away from them. You know, Mezzi has shown a little bit, had a few maps here or there. One that springs to mind, I think, for you and I will be the, the yeah, semi-final, yeah. the Vertigo uh, against FaZe. You know, he topped the scoreboard there to kind of keep them alive in that series. So uh, there is capability for um, those two guys, but ultimately it is about the three. It is about making sure that they all come alive at the right time and it all uh, works out. They have hit a bit of a ceiling with this team, 
but at the same time, they've not necessarily had uh, loads of time to bed Mezzi and Flames in. You know, it's all coming together a bit slower than maybe they would like. We do have the Veto going down here, of course. Um, actually, Vertigo being picked out by the Sharks and the Mirage out from Vitality. So um, I, I think both teams playing towards their own strengths, not really considering the Punishers too much. Just yeah, the only thing for me is that, you know, confident. prior to this event, Vitality only played Mirage three times in the last three months. And, you know, only one of them is a win. So it's a, it's a little concerning, but that obviously for me shows that they put a lot of time and effort since that kind of post-major coming in towards this event to really flesh this one out. But it's a really damning map towards Sharks. It's not been great, you know, 30% win rate is simply put knock it off. So we're looking at this side and thinking for Vitality, just in terms of their raw individuals, they should be able to put up some serious, serious numbers on it. The only real, I guess you could say, worrying point is actually that Anubis. That is traditionally the first pick for Sharks. When it's open in a veto, they usually pick into it. Now, that makes you wonder that Sharks expect Anubis to be floated. It's a map in which, as being floated prior for Vitality, has looked good for them too, so they probably would have assumed that they keep it in. Not that it's going to initially give them a boost in the veto process. I still think on paper, this looks very, uh, you know, favorable, very positive over towards the Vitality side. But yeah, I think uh, for me, Sharks, it's a workable veto. You've got a Vertigo, which you've played a hell of a lot, but obviously primarily domestically, a Mirage, a map which everybody knows. There's nothing new on, right? And then, of course, the Nubis, which is traditionally your first pick. As vetoes go against a side like Vitality, that's not bad. Yeah, it, it's completely fair enough, and I think the uh, Vertigo maybe pick, there's some logic behind that I would like to think in the sense that um, it is a map that Vitality, they played it uh, a few times, yeah. a good number of times, three times at the Major. Little inconsistent for them, some clean wins, but also a difficult loss against Complexity. So, you know, there's tape there, there's evidence there that they're maybe not super familiar with their game on it, but... Trafoon. It is coming up for a month ago now. You know what I mean? So Sharks have got to be careful with walking into this trap. We are straight into the action though, Neo. Not wasting any time at all. Very, very quickly into this a bomb site. Flames going a little crazy through the smoke. Oh, they've got to be careful here. There's utility everywhere at this point in time. It's really, really difficult, I think, for Vitality to get in and take this fight. Spinks with a big one to drop into the two versus two here. Down to just... Irena Zhao, and he's this not tough, man. Healthy. One v two. 37 points of HP, tapping away. A hope and a dream to try and clutch this one out. He's being flanked upon. He's going to say fight spot. Too many tasks, too many places to look. And it's going to be Vitality. Quite scrappily, though, finding that first round on the board. But. And I know that I live by in my pugs around as round. We take them all the same. So first nil, our first round on the border, one nil start for Vitality is what matters. But Sharks do get a bomb plan and a few kills, which at the very least is going to facilitate an investment coming through. They're going to have a buyout. We're expecting the likes of Galil's Mac 10s, good amount of util as well to try and once again have another go at it. But a very scrappy round, all things considered Vitality, flying through smokes, a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a quicker pace retake as well from them. Yeah, they'll take it. They'll take it in the end. Apex seeing it off. And as expected, that force buy kind of come through from Sharks. With those Galils, Mac 10 and Suplex, of course, on towards a Deagle. This time, looking towards B. Fast again from the Sharks, not wasting any time at all. Mezzi got to be careful not to get caught off here. He actually loses his teammate. That leaves him exposed. Man advantage comes around for the T side. A clean bomb plant. They'll be pretty happy with how this has gone down. Nice late smoke at back gen. So we might have spotted a shadow there. Not quite sure either way. They're trying to find a gap. Flames comes off the angle ever so slightly. He'd been told about an M4 and it distracts him away from the kill that could have got them into the round. However, with the M4 found, it is a save. That'll be that. Good round. Good response to the Sharks. Only the one casualty too. Not going to complain at all. Apex is going to go for that save with his M4, and he might get tested on the tail end of it as well. Good thing, though, it's not a bad angle to get a couple of X's from. You can kind of tuck your head after the initial fight spot. They don't even give it to him. So Sharks should answer back. Not bad. Doc of a double to his name. Giving them a, a, a decent amount of work in. I think for the likes of the Shark side as well, that's actually a really well done B take. A little bit of pace, good trading as well. Mezzi only allowed to get one. Spinks getting caught in rotation as he goes towards back gen. 
not a bad little spot to find yourself in. Vitality, as expected. They'll answer back with a force by their own. Double MP9, Famas and that double M4. That was saved from the previous round. I'm going to try and make it work. Bit of damage being dealt to Apex and by Apex, but it's Flames to find the first. Not going to get caught. That's an important opening. Now they've got the numbers. Yeah, Vitality obviously showing what they are capable of in the early stage, just trying to send it back in towards Sharks, who uh, were only a couple rounds in, but they have been very much favouring the aggression. The approach from them towards this B-bomb site in particular. This is slightly guessing what the game plan is going to be from the Sharks. I think they're just looking for a head at this point. Yaren Azal going to lead that charge, but it's less of a charge than usual. Mezzi finds himself out here once again, not alone. But it's only two MP9s left to defend the B-bomb site. They have to play around the strengths of the weapon. Quick headshot coming round, but space potentially created. Trying to just keep presence, make sure that they don't end up behind these smokes. So a man advantage before the bomb goes down is a pretty good result. 3v4. Molotov down, and again, there will be, as time starts to tick, a bit of a temptation to save, but an opening kill might spur them on here. They can bring it back to a three versus three is a chance. Great flash. All four blinded in some way. Tapping away backside as well. We're going to fall. Are close. AK for two. Make that three. Looking for the four, but trade it out. Now into the one versus one. It's Flames looking to clutch it out, but looking for an upgrade, which he can't find. And I think as the time ticks too far, that will be the round. He'll save his M4, but it's Sharks who make it two in a row. Most unfortunate. Terrorists win. Very unlucky indeed in the end for Vitality, but yeah, Sharks. Yeah, good. Holding their own a little bit, you know? In these in these post-plant situations. In the mid-round, they lost the early kill. You know, it's not absolutely mind-blowing just yet, but looking good. You know, we're quietly expecting them to struggle here, and it doesn't look to be the case. As I spoke about, man, these Brazilian teams, you can never write them off, never underestimate them because they always feel like they're capable and there's just so much belief behind them. Huge 3k there from Iren Azal, who I feel is certainly one of the more experienced members of this team, but definitely one to watch. You know, he's, he's dotted around a few different teams uh, within that Brazilian scene and he's he's decent. Yeah. He is decent. Of course, just cool. actually as we're speaking as well, Fnatic have beaten Vertus Pro on the A stream. What a result, oh, man. That is goodness. crazy. Vertus Pro Super Team who? Where? Not yet, anyway. Game <laughs> refunded, no, mate. No Get your refunds, money back. The heroic classic. But yeah, that's a big result. Credit to Fnatic. I think mean, even us, we didn't... I mean, I don't think many people would have predicted that one. So maybe today's a day of upsets. Let's see where's the case. Let's see if Sharks got anything in their pocket. The Molotov, that's great. That's going to force them off that boost. And they'll hear the, the ticking of two, right? So they'll know there's a good amount of presence around this corner. Nice quick trade. M4 making itself known. We're going to have a bit of a swap up here. Of course, nobody else has got armor, but still well placed. That automatic weaponry can be deadly. Lovely little lurk move out from the Sharks, though. They understand in a round that is likely to be an eco. There might be something fishy going on. So they will slowly start to back away with this information gained. Well, making their way over, 4v4. And of course, with that B-side basically secure, they got plenty to work with. Not so much time, but information. So we're coming down towards Gent. The bomb will go down to Vitality. I have to make a decision. I don't think the rifle is going to have a look in, but at the very least, the pistols can maybe stick around for a bit of an exit. It's a bit of a hunt. Mezzi of B250, Spinks of USPS. See if you can get yourself an upgrade. Have a little trade. I might get a chance here. Zywoo's making his way down, and Diogi's got the right idea, sticking around for the fight, but so does Zywoo, but Diogi going to rip his head off. It's a crazy start for him. First kill on the board being catching Zywoo, trying to save that rifle is not a bad way to go about it. Mezzi, late into the round, looking for something, looking for a fight. He's given it, but it cost him his life and his head. Oh, Spinks fighting his way out too. Pistol pulled out. He'll go down to the bomb. So gets a kill. A consolation. Nothing more than that. Sharks, three to one. 
There's a story brewing here, Scroof. Something that I don't think many would have expected. Definitely not myself. It's a yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Listen, man. <laughs> your vitality as well, you know. You're coming into Pro League. You've got Sharks as your first matchup. Now, that is a game that you're just going to rely on what you know, the experience, and the fact that, you know... Spinks as a player is probably more valuable and more experienced in the big games than the entire Sharks roster. No offense to them. So it's one of those things. I think Sharks will have put so much work into this first map, into this first game. So, you know, it, it comes down a little bit to the Apex reads. That's a lovely little play. Spinks getting caught off. Took a risky move not to look away from the flash. I mean, maybe he didn't quite see it as well. To be fair, it is a bit sneaky, but there you are. Sharks for the first day in round number five. Already, that opening kill. Onus on Apex. And call them kind of back into this. He's been tagged up, though. So it won't be individually what you'd expect at the very least. Lurk smoke and a flash behind it. Boost going to come through again. Got mollied off last time. It's kind of assume it might be the same here. Did give Sharks a very important kill in through short. It's double stacking, making their way towards, have at least a little look over towards B as well. Maybe something brewing, but that bomb was hit B again. They've had so much success here, so why not? As he, out of the back gen, pretty popular spot for him. Smoke goes down, allows him to isolate some fights here. He knows there's likely to be a man around the corner, finds the perfect timing for that. Oh my goodness, they've got to know that he's inside the smoke. It's all a battle of survival. Apex makes life a bit harder here. For Vitality, Mezzi can't be the hero. It's just down to flames. Oh my goodness, the B-bomb site is a real problem right now for Vitality. Very, very weak it's looking, isn't it? Time and time and day again being cracked open. And in that instant, too, Vitality, when they lose that initial fight, when Spinks falls, you can sort of see Mezzi, he's, he's dipping and diving between that mid and B position. And because of it, he leaves a real kind of rough gap, essentially, which opens up for them. Flame trying to save his gun on the exit here, but not easy. Talking his head, he should be fine, I think, just about, yeah. So an AK kept alive is something. Four to one, though. I wouldn't mind seeing a pause on the Vitality sometime soon, because at the moment, it isn't looking uh, all too good. But, uh, you know, as things go for Sharks, you're on my pick, and the start of the series against one of the best teams in the world, or the expectation of them, right? Not bad at all. Four to one. There's obviously a lot to love in the way they're playing this as well. They're just so confident. And I guess, you know, to a degree, it's, it's exactly what I asked for. I said, give us some of that South American flair, right? Give us a little bit of the... Uh, you know, the audacious plays that we love to see out of the region. And this is what I feel like we're getting at the moment. Flames gets boosted up. He'll drop down. He's the only rifle on this side of the map. Zywu, of course, is in support as well. But he's in no man's land. Oh, the double entry coming through. Make that three. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Sit down, Vitality. Sharks are rocking and rolling right now. PG50 coming in to try and do something. But it's just damage. And Zywu... He's left an hour to 1v5 just to keep out of his rifle. That is miraculous. Very close to the wire for Sharks, for sure, but still looks really good on the entries. You know, they've taken a lot of damage there. If there was maybe this M4 in the mix, I think it would have been kills, but not necessarily the round because they were just real crisp for those first two, especially. Really well done. Yeah, and I think Sharks continuing to impress. It's a bit of a different round, but again, favoring the B-bomb site. So if I'm Vitality here, if I'm Apex, I'm taking a timeout, and I'm like, right. Let's maybe touch upon the B-bomb site, not read into it too hard, because that could be part of the Sharks game. You know, this is where the mind games come in. Oh, they're going to look to bolster up B. Now we'll pull out our A strats, right? But it's still something that it's just looking all too easy. You're not asking too much of yourselves here on the T side. Right. A momentary breather. Vitality of being given anything but in the server. Honestly, a really good display. Attack ball is going to come through. And you can see, uh, I mean, without too much surprise, x is looking a little bit pissed off right now. This is a side that are not competing the way they should be. Not a lot of confidence flowing through the veins of this 
Vitality team looking a little quiet, literally speaking, and in the server, but still early doors. This is your opponent's map pick. And so far, it's not. Alarm bells ringing off just yet, but we are rapidly approaching that sort of a scenario. Has to be said as well, our Denizar, what a star for him, right? This guy's looking incredible. Individually, stepping up in a real big way, time and time again, cracking open sights individually, more or less. The Sharks find themselves a 5-1 scoreline. Slow build up into this round. Vitality looking to play things a little further forward. Mezzi with a lot of early utility here out on the B-bomb site. And just more presence from him rather than playing retake setup as it were. He's got a lot of backup here in the form of Sphinx as well. They will again be looking towards this B-bomb site. Mezzi playing forward but he's so very blind. Oh my goodness as is Sphinx. Difficult dot for the double. My goodness, this is really, really heavy stuff out from Sharks. Very impressive. Bursting forwards behind the nades. Really good flashes. You know, they're just not putting it's a foot wrong right now. Even worse as well, where just not giving the luxury of a save. Apex will get one. There's a known quantity as well. Where do you try and go to keep yourself alive? Because they know there's a bit of ramp aggression coming through as well. And throw it back towards mid. Hoping there's a bit of a gap in the uh, the attack here, but actually there's not. Doc, this is pretty good angle. Apex gonna catch him on the drive-by. So the very least gonna get one. Molotov will come down and towards mid two to deny any sort of harm in this direction. Then AK scooped up isn't bad. They gonna come out the corner a second as well, hoping to stay alive, and he just about will. As he gets a tail end kill there. On towards Togs, but man, this is so good. And hey, Trim, uh, let's be honest, man. This is this is the scoreline we expected. Just not in this way. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, I, I can get on board with that. Yeah, it, it definitely felt like uh, Vitality were going to be the ones doing this, but... Look, it's, it's a well-planned T-side. It's very aggressive. It's very individually based. There is really not too much to think about, let's say. Um, Vitality not having to get the reads or anything like that. It is just the case of Sharks getting all five members, maybe four, with a bit of a lurk and just sending it, you know? So I think they do have to adjust to that on the Vitality side of things. This is what happens, you know? You play off against a tier two, maybe even tier three Brazilian team. You're just not going to be ready for it. You know, you're expecting a little bit more back and forth mind games and in and out, but... You know, Sharks just showing. Sometimes the simple stuff can be super effective. Um, this is where it gets a bit more interesting for me then. Playing it a bit slower, a bit more spread out. However, Suplex is going to open, so maybe this will work. Yeah, chance. But again, another opener, right? This is getting a little bit ridiculous now. Vitality. It's a real gap opening up for them. That's a good response, though. Messi and Sphinx will combine. That'll bring the numbers back level with 40 seconds to work. And it looks like now they want to hit A. Speeding up. But not looking as confident with the A hit. Hey, in comes the utility. It's not effective enough. Zaiwu on top of the smoke. Looking good. Down to just dock all of a sudden. And he can't get anything done. Yeah, that, again, speaks to the Sharks' game plan. The Sharks' prep. B bomb site looks really good. They feel like they've dried that out now. They try A when they've got a lot of rounds in there. And you just saw there was just a moment where they were like, oh, I, mm, yeah, we got to do these nades. You know, it just not Yeah, you can definitely fluid, tell. Really. The hesitancy creeping in. That's Zywoo. Kills from backside as well, boosted up. Didn't even move, right? Bit of a turret here, but it works. If you're gonna give him the opportunities, he's gonna take them every day of the week. First time we've really seen Zawu step up as well so far this map, this series. This is the start of something new for him. We'll have to wait and see. But plenty of money for Sharks to work with to buy it back in. They've guaranteed at the bare minimum a tied game at the turn of the half. And the way they started, of course, we'd expect much more. 
We'll see, though. Is this going to be the awakening of Vitality? All right, Bex, that's not a bad start. Doc, trying to creep around the backside. He's going to get caught as well. Good work from Vitality. Here, Renazal getting boosted up. Nate goes in, but Mezzi's already moved. Oh, Sphinx will fall. They're going to know about Mezzi, but where is he at? What is his game plan? Spotting in, getting info. Molotov off from Dupree. Able to make it away, but it's Zywu who's come round while all this is going down to get the catch. Let's pick up, though, to bring it back into a bit more of a doable situation. Still looking pretty good. I think Apex has been picking members off on the other side of the map while all this is going down. All the same, Shark's still capable here. All goes eerily quiet for a second. Tog's boosted up, and now he'll start to make a little move as well. And he is going to have a lot of freedom here. A lot of space to work with. I should come over that. I'll give him a cross. The shot from Zaiwu basically gives him the side. But this comes down to Apex, who had knife out. Who gets caught. Back into a two versus two. Zaiwu up close as well. But a gen smoke as well is going to make their life pretty tough. One for one. But he can't double it down. Big trade from DRG. And Flames all fall. Seven to two. And a five-round buffer built up again. This is already becoming kind of insane. Too much thinking. Too much thinking from Apex, man. You know, he was like, oh, do I do I walk? Do I run? He's got his knife out. It's like, gun up and run or knife and walk, I think, to be honest. He was, he was caught in between two minds. And the thing is, again... It, like, to me, it doesn't make much sense either. Yeah. What is DRG doing here, to be fair? You know what I mean? It's 3v2. He should be stacked up with his teammate ready for a trade, but he's just getting a Molotov out, maybe because that's part of the game plan, maybe because uh, that's just he wanted to expend it or he's got a little bit of an idea and the freedom to do what he wants. But realistically, when you're 3v2 like that and the bomb's just gone down, you should be covering yeah. your homeboy from getting rushed. So uh, Apex instinctively is thinking, okay, they're going to be together, so I've got a bit of room here to at least, you know, close the gap or be annoying, make some noise. And DRG's like right there. And it's like, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. You know, the one in 100 chance that this guy is like, you know, behind and not with his teammate is exactly what happened. So difficult for Vitality here. They do not have the rounds to play with. Those types of timings, those types of mistakes are going to be compounding and doing more and more damage to their scoreline. Absolutely spot on. It's uh, a bit of a weird start to the round as sharks are still primarily towards their spawn. Once again, looking to go back towards B. This has been a real focal point of sharks, but maybe a little too focused because Apex is spotting nothing here and the rotation start to come through as well. Zaiwu making a move over to support. And that's being said, Amezi. Back white and back sight, hoping to do something. MP9 damage and a kill coming through for Spinks as Messi wants one of his own. Running low on ammo though. And Spinks gonna try and I see another and he will. Look some more, he'll find it. And Tog's all that's left. He's seen off. That is much better. That's the vitality that we know, that we expect in this sort of a game. And they finally find, pick their moment and to great success. That's flawless. That's what we want. Aggressive setup, confident setup. Yeah, much, much better. And again, it, it's like, it's one of those things. It's not a round that you're expecting to win. You're a little bit more desperate in your play because of the buy, the, the half buy down the middle. So I think they have to get into the mix, but they have a bit more freedom to do so. You know what I mean? Less pressure if they uh, mess up there. Less consequence. So employ some of that into the rifle rounds and... Maybe they can close the gap here before the end of the half. So far. So slow. Pot flash can come through. Try and give him a bit of room, but so I'll be more than happy to post up. And of course, Spink sticking around. He does eat a grenade there. Down to 46. Sharks in a slightly lesser buy with, you know, Mac 10. Galil's creeping through as well on the investment. This is a little bit of a kind of a make or break situation. Lose this, and it actually could allow Vitality up to that fifth as well with no run money in the pocket. Dr. The deer. wrong execution though, and he will fall, but at least the trade comes in.
Apex left to back away. Mezzi, meanwhile, has pushed in towards B. A lot of information because there's nobody home. 40 seconds, Sharks on a timer. If this flank is fully realized at the moment, I think they're just holding for the information and playing around that. It's the mid presence that is interesting to me. So we'll see what they're able to do with that on the Sharks side of things. He is very late moving in. The whole team is very late moving in. 20 seconds to get down here. It's a oh, big smoke coming around from Vitality. They don't really have too much to deal with the site itself. Spinks turns away. Not quite ready. Oh, no. And Apex was expecting his man to cover him. Zaiwu walking in. Finished. And now it is just Mezzi alone on this flank. Surely going to be dealt with. And indeed, he is traded out. Eight rounds come in for Sharks. Oh, yeah, this is really not looking Vitality. good now. I'm getting considerably concerned. It's safe to say that was a prime opportunity. Find that. And you basically get a bit of a two for one special with your vitality. You break the economy of sharks. As, you know, as long as you can deny them getting a bomb plant. But with the sort of buy they had, you kind of assume that to be the case already. Mac 10, few Galils. I thought it was more or less on the lock and key, but anything but. Man alive. Vitality will have a buyout in towards the final round of the half, but it's not been a pretty occasion. Not at all. Apex gonna play up close once again. It's worked for him a couple of times, but this time Doc holding as Tog's gonna find the first. Spin to overextend and another opening kill going the way of Sharks. Apex continuing the push, but Doc holding. He's caught with his pants around his ankles. Iren is out, looking for more of an entry towards this B side of things. But again, not fully moving in, man. If they can find nine rounds before the turn of the half, goodness me, it would be quite something. Apex is desperate to find the fourth. Shadows spotted. A bit of pre-fire. They are quite hard to read, to be fair, on that angle, I think, as well, with the uh, Molotov in. Makes it a bit weird. Going to get a smoke down. Able to get out of dodge, but not unscathed. Still keeping them back, slowing them down for now. This is the aim of the game. Four sharks to pump the brakes when sharks get going. They start snowballing in rounds specifically. They can be deadly. Oh, this is dicey though. Really dicey. But a double trade coming back. DRG gonna find two. Suplex gonna get one of his own as well. And in a matter of moments, Apex left all alone. Vitality are crumbling at the seams here. I know it's mental. It is mental. This is kind of wild to see. Apex jumps in. Only good for one, though. Not going to be enough. Nine to three at the turn of the half. <sighs> Man, yeah, I'm just absolutely baffled. We'll see if Sharks can clean things up moving into that second. Catch you in a few. I was just talking to Flames. He said you guys haven't seen each other in a while. Uh, since when? One month? Major? Yeah, it's been a while. We didn't see each other. So, yeah, it's been good to, to see everyone, to enjoy again together, like family. So, yeah, it's good. So, did you have, uh, you know, a bit of a break or was it straight back into practice? Or should I ask Dan because he's listening intently? No, we, we need break. We need break. We, we took like one week off. And after that, we we back for to back for work and everything like this. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, so how that's you feel, how you feel like pro league in terms of the event? Like, oh, I'll give you this number. This is for all you boys. Two hundred and twenty-two days until the next major starts. Oh, okay. yeah, two hundred and twenty-two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a long day. I yeah. mean, a long time. So you know, you got an event like pro league now. There's a couple more events before we get to the tournament break in the middle of the year. Then we got Cologne. We got all the events on the other side. Then the major. So it's a long time away. So an event like pro league now. You now you come into this as like, oh, whatever. What, how, how does the team feel? If we win this one, what's the thoughts? Anyway, at every tournament, we're here to, to kind of win. Tournament, we're not here to chill and watch other people win. So obviously, we're here to, to win any tournament. <laughs> Look at this guy. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's APL or obviously, it's, it's kind of hard to find like, like a good 
harder. I don't know how to say it, but good like feeling to play again after the middle. motivation and yeah, stuff. Motivation yeah, motivation and stuff. So, but anyway, we we here to win. Yeah. For this season of Pro League, uh, we have the players facing each other with a bit of glass in between. I, I saw that when I, I I crossed, and I remember with we talked about that in the uh, counterpoints mm. uh, together over there. So that's a good thing. Even make it like entertaining a bit a bit more <laughs> while. Um, but it's not the most important tournament, most likely right after the major, not gonna lie. It's not the easiest going from the major to here, but with a bit of fun and entertainment, I think it's gonna be good. Okay. So that's a good idea. Yeah. Happy with that? You got any new trash talk sorted or are you just gonna see what comes out of your mouth? <laughs> okay, you need to know something for myself. I prepare nothing. It's just coming out from my mouth and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm even thinking. Yeah. It's just going straight away, straight out, and so, yeah, no, nothing, nothing prepared. All right, cool. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. Hello, one and all. Welcome back into the second half here. Of course, some smiles in the Vitality camp. Fair to see, at least for Zywoo. Um, Apex looks like he's stressed. <laughs> just, you know, zoned out, mate, a little bit. What is he, what's he doing with his mouse? You know, making sure his mouse pad's working or whatever. But uh, we should be getting back into the action momentarily. Still, shocks, surprising us all, uh, to be honest with you. The Vitality Vertigo looked like it would be serviceable enough. However, Sharks, they must know something the rest of us don't because they have just hey, put up nine it rounds. It goes without saying, I've been absolutely prepping for this map specifically. Whether it has that kind of effect on the series, who knows, but nine to three at the turn of the half. Never, never did any of us expect that. Now they move on to arguably the more favorable CT side. What is happening is uh, the big one running through my mind. Let's have a look and see. Mid pop to come through. Claims setting up a bit of util as well. For now, it might be a, all part of a bit of a ruse. They're playing as a pack here, Vitality. Through mid, and Flames can join them. In they come as well. DRG first contact. A little bit of attack. Nothing more than that. Pop flash around that corner as well. CT open. And they're basically giving this for free. This is good control that Vitality have. Flames Ooh. holding behind. Oh, rough fight, man. Yeah, it does go down, but... At the very least, yeah, they are going to know that B itself is clear, so a bomb plan is not the hardest thing in the world. Indeed, it goes down. Julie's in from behind, though, looking to pick up the pieces. They know that Togs is down here as well, scaring him away. So really well done by Vitality to get the shoulders out, you know, just brute force their way in, find themselves one, looking for a bit more. Spinks Ooh. traded quickly. Leads it into an even situation again. Big one from Apex. However, Saiwu pretty much sealing the deal. Togs is in from behind as well to find that first, but surely not going to be able to get any more. Messi is the unaccounted player, and he will end that round. So a big, big deal for Vitality if they are to get back into this. Was the pistol. Yeah, I mean, take it super cleanly. needed, right? This is a side who you can actually probably start to make conversations already. Lose that pistol when the mentality just gets just broken immediately. So... Good thing for them. Take that. Give themselves just something to work with. And also, don't give Sharks anything. That's the other thing, right? You know, bomb pawn, all the kills. That's going to be a confidence booster. You can see them, though, really turn the narrative off the back of a poor first half. Only picking up three rounds on the CT side. Simply not good enough. There's no two ways about it. Four Sharks. Five stacking. Here over towards ramp. Not really doing all too much. They're making a little move. Waiting. I'm. I'm gonna. I want to assume there's a tech issue. I. <laughs> I'm. A, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume maybe there is, but. Okay. Okay. That makes way more sense. I was yeah, looks so confused. Way. I was like, "What are both these teams cooking?" Right. That makes way more sense. Right. Tech issue. 
That's fine. We can get that fixed. We can go again. It looks like it's flames. So uh, hope we get that fixed in just a second. But yeah, maybe like a crash or something of the sort. Thankfully, I guess. Not mid-round or anything of the sort. But um, yeah, this is a round which, you know, fundamentally is a little bit of a throwaway anyway. The expectation is that uh, Vitality should have it, no problem. So while we do have the sec pause, Scriff, I'm going to propose you a question. And I guess this is sort of for everyone to a degree as well. If you're x you're at the half-time break, and you've got, what, three, three and a half minutes, what are you saying to the to the lads to, to, to get them back in the action? Okay, so in a professional environment, because uh, obviously, you know, I, I don't take things super seriously, you know that. Um, so I'd probably make some kind of a funny joke. But if I were x uh, I'd probably have to say to them to just focus in on their game. Don't think too hard. Don't think about the opponent and sort of how they're approaching it. Um, I think, yeah, focus on your own game. That's a little bit cliche. Maybe into the series and the matchup itself that we've seen so far. It's just have your guns up a little bit more often. Expect more fights. Um, expect a few, you know, dry moves, unexpected moves, right? Just don't approach it like we do a lot of the other games. Play with confidence. Play around your individual ability, you know? Um, and I think one of the things as well, you've got to zone in on Apex a little bit and say keep the calls quite simple because you know it feels like the mid-rounding especially was over thunk in that first half nice. i like it and by the time you finish your your pep talk we're back to you know ready to go and they're going back for the uh the classic that they had prior to the crash of stacking ramp here three let's see side here to meet them i don't think it'll be that much of an issue one pot flash one nade and you get kind of the bulk of the information already Taiwu on the entry here, kills one, spots another. I think they know what is coming. Yeah, and they're very set up, <laughs> firing range at the bottom end of ramp. One kill is all good for sharks, though. You know, any damage going to be good damage in that one. Kill bonus, etc. It is now all about what they're able to put up into the first rifle. Oh, they'll take it. They'll take it. It's one of those things where expectations were pretty tempered. A kill for suplex. Yeah, it's one of this. I right, take it. Us though, uh, you know, we know we're not going to be taking all too much away from it. Back in the action, back into the buy as well for Sharks. What have you got for us? Fam us out for one, but bar that, rifles across the board. A much quicker round there as all well. Vitality trying to get to all the fights immediately. Trying to cash them off guard. Mezzi boosted up, gets close, but no cigar. Apex setting up for an aid in towards back default. Again, not spotting anything. It still looks like they want to commit towards B, but the bomb isn't. Charging forwards here, off the back of the flashes. Here, is out. Hiding out mid is semi-successful. Oh, they're trading things back, though, on that shark side. They're not out of the round just yet. Still, it's not a full sell on B. As he will go down, pretty big kill coming in. And then Flames backs in with a free bomb plan. Yeah, it's a little interesting. The kind of trickled-in B hit here from Vitality. Does find them success, but they're a man down. Off flash. So I would just gonna slow them down with that. As DRG and Doc do get caught. Got the numbers, just play the trades here, boys. You should be fine, or you should line up. Instead, Flames lines them up and knocks them down. Sharks had the numbers, but no more. And Flames are gonna bail them out of a bad situation when things are looking a little dicey. Oh, that was, uh, yeah, looking worrying. Like maybe Sharks are gonna get going once again. Flames finds, picks his moments, and delivers. Really well done. Find a much needed round on the first full buy. Okay, Vitality closing this gap exponentially then. Sharks onto the half buy. Very quickly scrambling, aren't they? Yet to put anything up on their CT side, Vitality. Bit more control of the game and the fights. Ooh! Weird stack on top of each other nearly costs them. Spinks will get the trade out still. 4v4, Spinks being low. It's not a bad start for Sharks. Not at all. Doable. I mean, these, these five sevens individually for me are the ones that I always look towards. They are 
at times. A little scary in the right hands. Oh my god, that was a risky jump. Suplex, lucky man, still be alive. Molotov does miss, though. Doesn't go as deep as intended there by Flames. The 4v4. Vitality posturing back towards mid to reclaim some space, which they lost a little earlier. And this time, they're going to be given it. And two through lower stairs looks like a commit towards B. Patience, though, for the rotations. Lovely find and a great entry into the bomb site itself. Spinks doing so much work for this one. I think these remaining two will hold their weaponry. Especially the armor for Doc. Maybe Suplex sticks around for a little bit of something. Something. There's, of course, that gun towards middle that might still be there. All the same. Vitality. Continue the roll. Looking good in all the rounds right yeah. now, to be fair, Neo. And showing no signs of slowing down. So I think this could be a recovery for Vitality. It's just a question of if Sharks can get that one round, what kind of impact yeah. will it have? It makes you think, right? You know, this next gun round, again, is for me, probably the one that's going to be the big kind of storyteller. Sharks find it, lock in double digits, game on. They don't, however. Vitality are able to find it, especially with kind of some of the ease in which they found some of... Sharks are able to respond in, in kind, right? Get back into the conversation. Then there is something to work with. They lock in double digits. It just gives you real positive, uh, real kind of confidence, right? You know, you go three rounds ahead of, of Vitality. You go three rounds away from taking your map pick and starting this series off positively. That's what you want to see. Let's see if they can. Quick around once again. Great Nate going to come through. Good damage towards Messi. Flames all taking tags here. They are going to be given B stairs reluctantly, but sharks have to just fall away. Ooh. Suplex, crack angle, flash comes around, but he's still brave to stay. Actually going to go digging in. Could catch Sphinx here. Oh, he gets the tag. And that is lucky for Sphinx, to be chances. honest. That felt Bad. like a really, Early really smart round. move from Suplex. Or Sharks. Chip damage, yes. Information gain, yes. So enough to work with. Two playing three. B, a swing from Doc. That is so ballsy. And it works. Goes in dry. Goes in before the flash, in fact. And you're going to find the kill. Flames just gets caught completely stunned by the audacity of the swing. Spinks trying to make a move here. Gets in towards CT. Drops another Molotov as well as the deny rotations coming through. So they're trying to split B, it seems. But kills are going the way of Sharks to keep the numbers in their favor. Backside behind double for the first. Looks for a double, but denied. As Zyru will trade thrusting him into a one versus three and a big ask. First, offers up. Finds as well, but he's a reload. 1v2, 20 seconds. Bomb has to go down, but he has no security, no information. Where are the rest of Sharks? Flash on towards Jen. A tap on towards the bomb as well to bait in a fight, but he loses it. Zaiwu falls, and Sharks are going to find 10. Pretty clean idea from Zaiwu, I must say. Unfortunately, does not come off. And there you are. This is what we were talking about. Sharks, it felt like with the lead that they had, the cushion from that first half would be enough to allow them to at least get that one round. And now it's a question, what will this achieve? You know, are they able to turn it into two or three? Maybe even four, right? The distance to get that victory here on the first map is really not that far. Vitality have to answer back immediately. Keep things interesting here. I move through the smoke and find one. That's important. Whoa, got to be careful. Open Maybe up. spotted a little shadow as he goes back away. Well, in that kind of sigh of relief is huge. Togs, this is massive. Is he being held? He is. And Apex just aware of the possibility. That's a big kill to find. If Togs is given a bit of luxury there, they're in serious trouble.
slow down massively. Vitality, they understand the position that they've put themselves in and how important it is to convert this. We have had some shaky rounds out from this team. Molotov. Slow down a little bit. Didn't do too much. Doesn't reveal positions necessarily. Smoke over the top. Flashes to join it. Here is out in an aggressive spot here at Dupree. Good for one. Overlooked by the second. So His teammates are trading things out. Meanwhile, towards middle. Spinks doing what he does. Suplex does not know where to look. 12 HP and finished by an aid. That will be the round. Vitality responding kind. I think he just gets a little bit of an opening in that smoke, which he works well. And Apex finding that flank is so important. The thing is for Sharks, they're giving themselves opportunities, even when they're looking a little bit on edge. They find a chance, but it still is. A two-round game in a bit of a lesser buy, so to say, out for Sharks. Double M4. Pistols as well. Hey, back to the first. For a second, this Flames will clean it up. That's going to give them a lot of room towards the A site, but the Deagle. Nice shot. But for more. And the double's not bad. There's a chance. Oh, goodness. Spinks nearly finishes the round, though. Trade comes back round, thank goodness. Sierra Nazal had that armor. Bomb going down on the other side of the map. Mm. I think might just do it for Vitality, but we'll see. Or maybe we won't. Yeah. Because I think Other he's going to say. Round as well out of DRG. 18 yeah. and 13 for him. In the round over here. So Vitality going to move up to bad. nine. Double digits still there for Sharks, as well. but it's, it's a question 14. of how deep this goes here. You're not going to complain with it. So, one round game. Vitality from a 9-3 first half have made this, uh, you know, a possibility on a map which looked already out of the realm as a possibility. This is a much, much more conclusive showing and also probably shows as well a lot of the... You know, conversations that, that we as casters, but also the, you know, just the community I talk about, the seaside economy is pretty brutal at the moment. And this feels like a real prime example. It's, you know, sharks buy in, lose the round, double eco, a half bite, and back and forth. So it's tough, man. It's seriously tough. Let's see how things go. Back into the bite. Suplex back on. AWP as well, and Zywoo. Taking pop shots, hoping to find what something on the wall bank. If anybody had pushed up towards top, so he looks for damage. So uh, one attack from this position. Oh, avoids a flash as well. I mean, a shot will be punished. Spinks going to find a really important kill. Nay going to come through as well, doing a hell of a lot of damage. Already not a bad start for Vitality, giving themselves some room. DRG, though, gets his chance, finds it. Apex falls. It's back and forth, this chess game in the server. Looking okay, as Doc going to want to back. This is carnage, but it's looking positive as Sharks now find themselves in a 2v4. What is going on, man? Oh my goodness. These big rounds from Vitality have been very messy indeed, very costly indeed. Definitely not over. Two of the players you would want in this situation as well. Potentially the best two. Zai Wu, top of the head spotted. Can't get away from him, Doc. Three... More to go, but only 35 seconds to do it in. It is Zawu that reveals himself. Oh my goodness, that is unfortunate. Nade should be able to find this frag, but it's a full-on clutch going to be required by Sphinx. Does he have time to rotate? No, he does not, but he's trying to add some mix-up into the situation, change positions ever so slightly. Working his way around. Smoke going to go down to buy some space for the plant. He should just about be able to get away with it. We'll see. Yeah, up above him. Unfortunately, Togs was ready for that move. 11 in for the Young Sharks. I think that's also worth reiterating. Technically speaking, the Academy team. Either way, a really, really, really nice find from them. And this is, uh, yeah, this is a, a real story opening up out of nowhere, which is looking kind of incredible. I mean, to come into this game and make this narrative of there is a chance never felt like a possibility. But they are fighting their way back into rounds when it looks out of the realms of possibility. Two rounds ahead of Vitality. Two rounds away from taking Vertigo. Who would have thought? Not us. 
So a pause called here. And a buy back in for Vitality. But look what they bring to the table. Triple Galil. Not those full belts are util. Yeah, and this is kind of nuts. Timeout called here, though, by Sharks. And they're going to get back underway here. But yeah, this has been brilliant. I I've got to keep singing this guy's praises, DRG. Another great round of him. Two massively important kills to his name. Every single time, Vitality tests this guy over towards A. He's stepping up with a double kill, at the very least. I mean, you've got to love it. You really do. What a way to start the series as well. Your first kind of time in Pro League as well. <laughs> Man. That'd be crazy. Especially considering with how deep the Brazilian scene actually looks at the moment. Imperial, Pain, Legacy, etc, etc, etc. Sharks were never in that conversation. And now, they're taking on, what, the sixth best team in the world? They're absolutely cementing themselves in that conversation. This is a team that you can't mess around with. Beautiful nade to start off proceedings. Molotov as well. Makes its way down, but Vitality wasting no time. They're going to go fast again. Bursty flashes here. Irena Zhao hidden away, uh, I guess just buying time. Not really much that he can do there. In comes the rotation, but maybe a bit too quick. Nades super effective here. All round from Vitality. That's got to be the round. There's no way you make it in. I think they know that on the shark side, they will take the save. Oh, it's getting so close. It is 11-10, my God. We had, what, three overtimes, first game of the day, in that uh, Saw 3D Max banger. And um, this one has all the right kind of markings of an OT as well. 11-10. to 10. Vitality, hot on their tails in reaching distance. They go for a little bit of a hunt there as well, but... Will gift DRG his one, his guaranteed one that he's getting every time he gets tested. I say he's normally good for two. Let's see if that's the case. Nades. Might just do it. Oh, damage dealt. Molotov at his toes, but he's got a smoke. So he'll be okay. Stays alive. Yeah, alive with 11 to 10. Bit of a sigh of relief there, I guess you could say as well. For next time, an apex. A leadership core in this team. Go for a bit of a quick apply, a pop out towards B, and it works well. Ice is in the fights very easily. Flames are messy when they're called upon, step up, get theirs, and before you know it, Sharks don't really have any foothold in this one. Lose this round here, and Scriv. Sharks have been in a bit of trouble. This could be Vitality B. They could actually, this could be the two for one special. Win this round there, you break the economy. It's not only getting 11, but you could actually get map point two. And to steal it away the tail end of that would be heartbreaking. Indeed, it most certainly would. And Raj coming up next is not the most confident map for this Shark squad, so. But at the same time, a, a thought that runs through my head, if Sharks are able to take this, Mirage, we always talk about it, it's a risky, risky pick, and Vitality, also not loads of experience on it, you know? It, it may well be a map that they're trying to work into the pool, for sure, so they can have themselves that solid six maps to work on, but still, <sighs> there's a world of possibilities with the way this map could finish. The B burst, again, looking very effective. Oh, man, yeah. Two clean entries out from Mezzi. It's got to be another save from the Sharks. Vitality, though, they've found their rhythm. Just taking a couple steps off. Not quite as readable, but ultimately the same goal with the B-burst in the end. That's it. And they have to save. They have to. There is no two ways about it. Sharks cannot stick around. They've, they've done damage and, you know, relatively confirmed damage, I guess you could say, as well, but... Yeah, this is a really dicey spot you find yourselves in. Zaiwu. Sticking around. Uh, so we can see whether they can do anything. We're actually going to get caught by the orbit. Any more for any more? Apex. Got the right idea. Might just slip the net here and tell it around. I don't think it'll make a grand difference. But might get a chance. Sandy will. Not the second, but he'll take a one out of it. Hunt is good. Three staying alive, reinvest in their problems. Two staying alive, conversation to be had of whether you're going to give it a go. There is an argument to be made that if two staying alive and only two drops, does someone take a hit and they play a gamble?
but you play it safe and just try. And I guess play for OT. It's a really weird one. I think probably knowing the region as well, a buy here wouldn't be the most outlandish thing in the world. And that's what we're going to get. The Farmass coming through. I guess the orb staying alive is a real priority. Something for Suplex to work with. But it's the big man of uh, DLG taking the hit on the firepower, though, I guess you could say. And it's him who gets caught early. Flames pops up his head onto our sandbags and rips off DLGs. Good start. Vitality again in control. They have to be one of the best teams in the world playing from a position like this. You know, they do very, very well when they are ahead. Apex. Yep, lovely little read. Nade goes in. Tiny bit of damage onto Doc, but might also reveal his position. Spam away is not going to be able to find him. He is trapped in here. I think they're so ready for him. And indeed, he will go down as soon as he reveals himself. Oh, not looking too good, is it? Togs tries to be a hero. He will fall as well. And the save of the orb? Not quite denied. Not quite close. However, they have to back off again. Vitality. This is almost perfect counter-strike from them in the past few rounds. And the save is under threat. Scope heard. Shot rings off. And he will be the next to join his teammates in the grave. 12 to 11. Vitality are doing it. Nothing saves. Nothing gained. And Sharks now reeling. Vitality at the tail end. The final hurdle might be just taking this map away. I mean, simply put, it actually hasn't been good enough for Sharks in the second half. 9-3 is the half that Vitality had in the first. But Sharks might be limited to just two. We thought that Vitality was a crumble. This could be worse. We do have a buy to work with, thankfully. But a triple FAMAS. The worst nightmare of many of us. That kind of gun. Double M4 as well. And both of them are tags. That's not going to help either. Decent nade here. Apex leading the charge on the entry. Oh, getting a little weird. Getting a little weird. They have managed to find some trades back. It's the RG that goes unanswered. Ultimately, he's not able to rely on a teammate to bring it back to that two versus two. It's definitely doable, though. The issue is getting the read, getting the info while this nadeage is rolling in. They're not really able to do too much. Togs, again, loving the aggressive move, but just not finding success with it. TRN is out. He's had a great game thus far. He's got three to find in order to keep Sharks alive on Vertigo. More rounds required if they wish to take the victory. Vitality, though, they feel they've got this one in the bag, and they are about 90% right, I would argue. No kit available for this guy. They know exactly where he's at. Flash over the top, more info, more aggressive stances here from Vitality. Double peak, and the finish comes in. What a recovery coming round from Vitality. So, so impressive. Sharks, though, will absolutely be kicking themselves. They could not take that one over the line. We've got that Mirage coming up next, a break first, and I think we all need it after that.
go to broad daylight. Seating every night like Friday night. I keep the party on rock and I bomb it ice. Gotta see the stars like Broadway lights. I told a baby girl, you don't gotta kick it with the daydreamers. You can skip the line, I'm the gatekeeper. Plus I got the crowd going crazy. Dance floor blazing up, going. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling glowed up. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling so, feeling so. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling glowed up. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling so, feeling so. I'm with the VIP in your city, getting litty as a BIC. Huh, yeah, screaming life's a gift. So we live to the fullest till we DIE. DJ, put it back on. Keep it hype, we don't wanna hear no sad songs. Everybody up in here just wanna celebrate. Sip a little drink, get the dance on. That's all, it's an everything good over here. We don't want no problems, we just want cheers. Toast to the good life, wine, liquor, beer. Haters getting blocked if they trying to interfere. Swag on 100 in my drink. Fresh, certified son, I need a big blue check. I don't got no time for no BS and no negative ideas in my vibe, cause I'm just too blessed. Run it back. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling glowed up. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling so, feeling so. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling glowed up. When they see me show up, I'll be feeling so, feeling so. Everybody, welcome back into EPL Season 19. Continuing on, it is the Sharks up against Vitality. If maybe you are just joining us, maybe you have spotted this match uh, and it's it's caught your eye on the pages. And indeed, yeah, there is a good reason for that. Vitality have just had to battle incredibly hard to win out that vertigo. 
it was Sharks' pick. That's about all I'd give them going into it of a little bit of, oh, yeah, maybe they do have a game behind them. Um, but, yeah, Vitality very nearly lost that one. A really incredible sort of run of five or six rounds towards the end. Commiserations to Sharks on that. But in the same vein, bringing it that close against one of the world's best is uh, pretty incredible. That's no joke. It is no joke at all. I think a hell of a lot of credit has to be given to, to, to Sharks. I mean, a 9-3 half they put up. Their T side was so good. But you can never count out Vitality. You can never give them any sort of leeway. You know, the age-old anecdote of give him an inch, they'll take it a yard. And, and that was exactly what we got out of Vitality, right? 10 to 2 was their T-side response. I mean, incredible work from being really in the gutter the way they were. I, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the mental resilience. I think a lot of credit as well to the leadership part of that team as well. Apex, x -Tiles. Basically, the way you've got to go about it is you know, fall back on the fundamentals and take it one round at a time. That's exactly what Vitality did. They weren't looking at the big picture. They weren't looking at the long-term narrative here. They were just looking at, right, let's just get something started. One round at a time, get the individuals warmed up, start getting some of them in towards these fights and get them hitting shots. And that's exactly what they were doing. So, man, what a game. What a game to start off, our, you know, our ESL Pro League B stream, man. It's just the most ridiculous story to see Sharks very nearly taking a map. But now things are a little bit concerning, right? We're going to Mirage. It's Vitality's pick, and it's not a great one for Sharks. No, it's, it's very true. Uh, there is, again, that caveat in there. The Mirage uh, can be dangerous to pick into, especially when you're against a team that you don't really know what to expect from them. Um, and it, it's it's something that Vitality are working into their own pool as well. We can have the prediction in there that they have been um, behind the scenes putting some time into this, you know, as, as we've just seen in sort of the uh, interviews and all that good stuff. They've had some time off. I am very curious here to see whether this keeps up, though, in all fairness, especially from DRG on the other side. The IGL of Sharks may be a bit of a greedier IGL in terms of the positions and whatnot, but he has just put up a hell of a performance there. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, still slightly new kid on the block for Vitality in Flames. Um, looking really, really good. You know, maybe not the guy that you expect to be taking names. No, I, you're absolutely spot on. I mean, I, I, I got to really give DLG so much credit, man. What a what a showing from him. This is a guy who on that CT side was so confident in his own ability, always stepping up for a couple of kills. Every time he was tested, even when they were like, you know, hunting on exits and stuff like that, they were making sure, making sure that uh, he was making it expensive. I've got to give him a hell of a lot of credit because he really did kind of put his individual name on the map. But I think Sharks, you know, for them, Unfortunately, it's not good enough overall. We need to see the rest of that team step up a little bit, especially heading on towards this uh, map number two. It's a big ask. It's a big task ahead here. You know, Arda Enezal had a really good run of form, I think, at the what, after the first half for him on 10 kills, 10 and 8, he was really looking very good. And then by the time he got to that CT side, he really tapered off. He really couldn't find that form kind of again for him. He went 4 and 10. He dipped off massively. So the, maybe the inconsistencies, we'll call it, plague and sharks a little bit. But of course, it's a big step, right? This is a side who, you know, you can make arguments then potentially what being fifth, sixth best in the region, in Brazil that is, right? And going up against one of the best teams in the world, the expectations for them for the masses were were pretty minimal. And they've really made a narrative here. But Mirage is going to be a big ask. And I think as well, now that we are seeing the riflers come alive here, we saw that head to head as well of that kind of flames versus DRG. But when flames gets going, when he anchors a site, man, it's so difficult to be. Yeah, it's it's not going to be easy here, right? And I think this is one of the things as well uh, you have the wider context, the bigger pictures you like to talk about, right, of what you've just said there, regionally where they're at, internationally where Vitality are at, things like this. You now also have the context of the game itself. There is the fact that they were in a winning position, regardless of it being Vitality, just against anyone. They should have taken that first map by all accounts. They will know that. It's their map pick so you're very 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 dejected now moving into this second map it is all a question of sort of the stakes of being a pro league the fact that you're on LAN are they able to take this 15 20 minutes in between maps and turn it into something good or is there going to be a couple of heads in here that are just not quite feeling it not quite focused and you know disappointed in themselves still stuck in that first map and unable to get the clean slate into uh, Mirage here. So really going to be curious uh, for the Sharks team. And this is something as well that you just really cannot train. You really can't practice for things like that. It all comes with the experience. And unfortunately, they've had a negative experience rather than a positive one. So they have to try and learn from that very, very quickly. And it's, it's really no mean feat for any caliber of competitor across any kind of sport. 
I think it is going to be tough here for Sharks to bounce back. Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. Well, as we head into Mirage as well, we do have to look at basically the bigger picture here. You know, for Vitality, this is obviously kind of an expected win coming through from them. But like we said, you know, obviously made to work for it. Uh, winner of this matchup as well takes on the winner of our second game of the day, which is M80 taking on Bet Boom. And for Vitality, as opening games go, you you take those kind of every day of the week, right? You're looking at kind of guaranteeing yourself to the playoffs, guaranteeing yourself to the next stage. Um, if they can pick up a win into kind of the upper semifinals, quote unquote, this is for them a really, really important couple of games. And you mentioning, right, they had a little bit of a break post-major, which is good to hear as well. A lot of teams sometimes don't, and it can lead to a bit of burnout. But it seemed like they were saying, you know, haven't seen each other in like a month. Mm. So the expectations is no boot camp or no in-person boot camp. So a bit maybe, you know, just primarily the online type of thing. Um, or they may be just getting off a, l a little bit of the rust, so to say, of playing back together online next to each other and all that. It's, it's a tough call, isn't it, as well? Pro League, the thing is, is uh, for a tournament like this, especially if you are one of those top teams, I think you're really, like you say, burnout. Yeah, you're really going to drain yourself if you're doing prep for all the other 31 teams in there. You know, maybe you can cut that down a little bit once you get the groups, but it can be uh, deadly. So I think they've been working on their own game, playing. True, true. A semi that, oh man, yeah, really, really uh, difficult to watch. This is a fresh day and a different team and a different tournament. So trying to find the right mindset moving into this series. Doc in from behind. Good catch on to the first, to be fair to him. Suplex up in the ladder room. Not heard jumping up. You can technically hear it. It's very faint. So if the comms are a bit loud, you may well have missed it. And that oh, looks to be the case. Doesn't catch the player in the back. Spinks in at window. Has been thwarted. Has been spotted here. But what a great cutoff for the rotations this spot can be, right? Bomb going to go down. They need Spinks to find at least one or two. Making a move. In through CT. Creeping their way with the numbers favoring Sharks. This would be the right way to start off this map. Give themselves a chance on Vitality's pick, but it's not looking good. Mezzi finds one. Drops him down, but Arta backs him through. Mezzi still causing problems, and Mezzi lining them up. Now thrust into a one versus one as Messi just creeps around the back. He's looking for that ace, looking for all five as well. Tap on towards the bomb. Does he expect the stick? Does a kick? They've got a kick, but Messi's going to find all five for the Brit. <laughs> Merry man by name in the server too. Vitality get a first on the board and it's much, much needed. Some nice finds in there from Sharks, but ultimately I don't think they were ready for the strategy of vitality, you know, very, very confusing, very weird to deal with. Well, five rifles out from vitality as well, so not looking to make any money. They may be expecting a force by here, one would say. Wanting to battle off against the armor a little better. Charging out on towards A quickly once again. USP does chime in. It's a lot of money taken away, you know, when you get one kill here. Because of those five rifles, and Mezzi as well, also worse for wear. I think they should be all good. Mezzi not really close to the action. There comes the final kill. So a quick one for Vitality. No real sweat off the brow. Sharks into the buy early. Yeah. One of those sort of, you know, throwaway rounds. You know, if you can get a couple of Constellation kills, you take them, but I'm not expecting a hell of a lot. First four buy. Can be very important here, though. This is going to be a big one to for us in terms of looking maybe where the mental state is a little bit over towards Sharks. Had a really good run of things up until the tail end. You know, that second half simply not good enough. And it can be quite kind of sort of mentally deteriorating, right? You know, just constantly getting broaded the way that Vitality can. It can be really difficult. Chips away at yeah? the uh, mental game. Flame's going to find one. As that smoke gets broken, Doc gets caught. And Togs is not close enough to trade here. So Vitality find an opener. Just no ability to trade. Oh, Spinks clean find. Quick boost towards the window. Playing very fast. Very, very fast on the Vitality side of things, which again, yeah. against higher level opponents, they may well look to get that war of attrition going that is so, so popular. Against the Sharks, they're trying to lay down the law. They're trying to show who they are, what they are capable of, and mm. let them know 
by the odds are so heavily stacked against them. Just keep that reality alive. Shark's definitely feeling it here in the third round. Apex, top con smoke. All goes a little eerily quiet here in the 5v3. Double stack towards B for Sharks. No one on A, but at least one close enough. Yeah, not a huge amount really being offered up here. They are looking towards B, though. The might get a little proactive. Nice shot. Finds one, but instant trade from Flames, who looks for more, but he will fall himself, but it doesn't matter. Tony DRG towards Ramp, who's going to be the difference maker. The bomb might get caught on the cross here. Whoa, oh, no, DRG. We've bigged him up so much coming in towards his second map, and he fluffs his lines. That's tough, and that's the round. I mean, there's just no point. Oh, Dennis, I'll just keep hold of the orb. Yeah, makes sense. Vitality, though, very, very quickly, I think, putting the fear into Sharks. And on the hunt, Apex. Round this corner. Here's him coming, takes him with the USP. A little bit, little bit BM, but uh, going to make it work. Picks up the AWP as well, so there you are. Two for one, denying a save and getting an AWP for Zai Wu. You take a little freebie. A little present, gift wrapped as well for a 3-0 start. This is the worry, though. With a map like Mirage, if you are Sharks, is that, you know, fundamentally, pound for pound, Vitality are a side with the better players. And if they want to just pug this out and, and play quick and rely on individuals, rely on angels, they can. My God, Zyu, it's a leg. Suplex gets caught on the cross. They're down to 16. And the star he would have wanted for this one. A pot flash. Oh, it's smoky. They're not a pot flash because, I mean, they would have hoped it would have been one of those. The RG gets up. Finds one, not gonna make a difference. Doc, gonna burn the flames. They know somebody's clear or near. Are well, they gonna clear out that position? These pistols for sharks can be a little precarious, but again, expectations for this round are pretty minimal. Smokes over the top. Kind of an eerie silence there as they come over. Still quite slow from Vitality. I think they're weary of a stack. It's halfway there. Most of the players are ready for the A hit, but they're not necessarily on the A bomb site itself. There comes the important frags. Little head spotted out by Apex. Suplex dealt with easily as well. Vitality, patience plays off. They know they have the upper hand. The fights are probably going to come to them. Let's play it safe, play it patient, and what do you know? They peek in. So again, this is just I mean, fundamentally very simple from Vitality. And the fights offer up, they're winning, them, and Sharks really aren't offering up a huge amount for us to really discuss just yet. Barely getting off the board in terms of the fragging department, never mind, kind of strategically. Four to zero for Vitality. And this is probably, you know, a little bit more of a the start we sort of expected for this series. Quick, Zaiwoo. Doc flies into a fight and it'll cost him his life as Zaiwu's never going to miss a freebie like that. Or in no man's land, does get a kill, but instantly traded. No impact, really. And then a matter of moments, oh, the Enazal alone. 1v4 and again, probably just to save. Damn. Yeah, this is looking pretty egregious now, isn't it, right? Uh, five really, really fast. And it's just not looking very difficult for Vitality. The Sharks, Mirage... The trouble that they have behind it, the the lack of success, I think is the nice way of putting it. But yeah, it's not a great map for them. It has been clearly punished here and vitality. Whew, the work is paying off. Oh, well. Anything that's LN would be nice, but again, not really going to ask too much out of this. Just save I am for if you give the luxury of it. Mezzi gets caught jumping up. Does he expect a second? Well, now he will. The Sphinx's going to rip his head off regardless. Nobody saving. So with that nothing saved, nothing gained from the situation, this is again just vitality. Stroll in the park these first five rounds have been for them. 
And you can already see Sharks getting very, very kind of on edge, right? Swinging through mid, no supporting util, or alone playing through bench holding under, getting kind of one kill, but unfortunately a bit of an impactless kill. You know what I mean? So this is already where you can see, mentally speaking, Sharks getting just a little bit on edge. Unforced errors creeping in, vitality punishing. And us getting pretty concerned. Same smokes over the top once again. Same as the last anti-eco round out from Vitality. Are they going to follow on them? Not quite sure. It looks like they'll hold for a little bit. It's that bomb that's right at the front, though, that sort of gives the game away, at least for us. Playing it slowly again, waiting to see if sharks take a peek here. They will not move, despite the smokes. James has to go through the motions again. Are we going to get the same smokes out? I mean, it's kind of an interesting move out from Vitality, the, the double pump. Mm. Keep the CTs guessing. There goes Apex for a clean one. That might just start the hit here, but this is a really, really slow moving. From Vitality, DRG up close on the Deagle, trying to find some good timing. Ooh, it's a clean shot. The second denied away, his teammates finished off as well. So looking good, but for just a split second there, I thought maybe we could be onto something. On, up towards stairs, bomb, gonna go down. Fire range, AK versus MP9. I know who I'm taking in that one. Spinks just holding for anything on the tail end. Does he expect somebody up closer? The 5 7's creeping. Making noise though. And Spinks away. Good find. Nice headshot. Doc gets caught. And oh, Denizal again, unfortunately for him. Just a save call. And even that. Just an MP9. Might not be given that luxury. I was posted. Holding, waiting, finding. Because he's never going to miss that every day of the week. Quick reactions, quick finds. 6 to 0. Oh, I don't know about you, man, but I'm already getting very concerned that map number one might be a completely opposite to what we saw. And uh, yeah, map two to map one it might be completely different. This one is looking quick. Yeah, it, it's tough. It is tough, as we talked about, you know, difficult for them to bounce in. I think uh, that first map, they maybe had put all their eggs into that basket. It very nearly paid off for them. Anubis is the decider as well. You know what I mean? It's like it's so close to being a picturesque story for sharks, but it's that mirage in the middle. It's hard. It is very, very hard. And as we talked about, I think clearly prepped for that first map. Maybe that means they've not put as much time into mirage and they just don't know what to expect from vitality either, you know? But suplex. Finds the opener. Maybe this could be the first. Orb. Burning, but still alive. Making a move here towards B. Sphinx. Right idea, but doesn't connect in that shot. But he talk come through. Now one backside spotted. Damage dealt. And he just turns away. And that's enough. Oh, Denizal to get active. He'll find his kill. Burning in the flames a little bit. Being tagged down. Lining them up. And this three, as I and Apex combined, and that's already the B side coming through. It looked like potentially under lock and key. And our bomb to go down on a 2v2 into use. There's a chance. Apex doesn't die initially to the A, but he will. The DRG thrusting Zaiwu into a 1v2. Holding door, finding that fight. Pistol pulled out. DRG lurking his way out towards Bin as Zaiwu holds. Posted hand cannon by name. Will it be by nature as he looks to try and find this fight? And time starts in the tick as well, dancing around the angle. But DRG going to find it. Seen off in the first round of the board. Four sharks. Not exactly been a long time coming, but it's better late than never. That is so damn close on the Zaiwu shot, but... Doesn't come off. Doesn't come off. Here we go, though. Sharks. First one in for them. Have we got a bit more available in the tank? We'll see. We'll see. It's, it's as close as it comes. That's one of the difficult things. Not to immediately uh, be negative, but to keep it real here. They only survived with one player. That's going to be very costly, isn't it? You know, it's not going to do a lot for the bank. And uh, on the Vitality side of things, they've been having some pretty dominating rounds. So they will have loads of cash available yeah, you can see 
not awful to be fair, but there's going to be a couple players, I think. Oh, okay, we're, we're swapping the monies around a little, and I like that, making sure that the stronger players maybe have themselves uh, the rifleage. All the same, taking a time out there after that one as well. Didn't quite catch who that was for. I don't know if you did, but uh, all the same, we'll see. This is going to get interesting. It is. I think as well, Sharks is, you know, it's good to see this side get a bit of success, but it's just the fact that if they don't find consistency, it's not going to make a difference and arguably hinders them a little bit, right? You were talking about the buy that they've got through. Well, it's going to be way worse if they lose this round because they have lesser loss bonus. I don't know, it's a tough jump. I feel you, man. He's going to play up close and this might be heard. Now it's definitely expected as well. Burning. Flames. Chasing, hunting through the flames itself, but he maybe overextends and gets caught. Ardenzal desperately beckoning over rotations, desperately trying to isolate fights, and he gets two, so enough at the very least to keep him alive. Only for the time being, backside Spinks delivers. And now 1v3 for Suplex feels like too tall in order. What do you do? Do you even go for the save here? Is it worth it? Well, now too little, too late, as he's spotted, desperately trying to move around, and he's not given that luxury. Back to winning ways, and like I said, losing that round is arguably worse. Because now they're back into an eco. Yeah, really tough. Really, really tough. You know, you, you want to try and answer back for at least one more. And it, it was close. It was close for a moment there in the middle. But unfortunately, the B-bomb side just overwhelmed and, and the retake uh, disjointed. I think they needed to put a pause on things when they managed to find a 3v3. Take some time. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. But unfortunately... They trickled in and fell apart a little bit. Eco round out now from Sharks. Vitality though, eight rounds already is pretty nasty. Shot. Doesn't find, but as he and Spinks do. These pistols not expecting huge amounts. I would pre click on the reaction. Last man of Doc, a dead man walking. But he'll get his consolation. He will find Zaiwu with the nade, who at the moment is absolutely cooking on gas. This is, um, yeah, it's just tough though, isn't it? I mean, this has been the, the story so far this series. It's all about the T size. CT sides, of all of them we've seen, the three out of four we've seen, have been really lackluster. Both of them on Vertigo were tough to watch, to say the very least. And this one's not exactly been any better of a viewing experience. Back into a bite for Sharks and an orbital work of a suplex. He might be able to slow down Zywu a bit, but many have tried, many have failed. Thanks. Oh, just as the smoke goes down, it's so perfectly calculated by Vitality. Really, really well played. Finding that opener once again. And a back away from the T side. So Sharks are going to struggle to find some kind of an answer. The mid control, super important on this map, of course. They just don't have anything available to get a response at the same time. Still got this AWP in action. Oh, Suplex spotted the back of a player. Knows he's got to be careful. Misses a shot. Lucky to be alive, to be fair. Tiny bit of info, I guess, but yeah, not looking too great. I like the push-in from Togs. Meanwhile, oh, and the dink lands on the second player. This is all over. Great flashes over the top, however. Pierre Anazal just completely caught on that B side. Probably a save here for the A players. Sabe, I think you're absolutely spot on. After Subic had a, had a chance to give them something. If he finds that killing Con, and obviously the short guy delivered on his, it could have been a completely different you know, scenario that we find ourselves in now, but unfortunately, just more of the same for the shark side. A big save and now a big hunt to come through as well. Apex and Sphinx. Gonna have a little look in. Not the right idea, but both these guys are so low. 17 and 13 HP respectively for Apex and Sphinx is not easy. Apex has a flash, opting against it, being a bit of a human flashbang. Big trades come through as well. Orp is hunted. He's in a bit of trouble, and he will fall. He gets a couple on the tail end, but it won't really make a difference. 9-1.
Yeah, not bad. Not bad. This is, uh, yeah, this is just a massacre. This is, I mean, easily one of the most one-sided showings we've seen in a long time. And, and maybe in some ways, kind of what we'd expect out of Vitality in this game. You know, no disrespect to Sharks, but, you know, they're playing completely different, basically, scenes, right? In terms of the Tier 1 versus the Tier 2. Vitality just showing how good they can be. Great opener again. In this low by round, we're not looking at a hell of a lot. A quick B take. And this is going back to something you spoke about earlier, Scriv. The pace of some of these Vitality rounds, just no respect being shown. Yeah, really cool to see, I suppose, that Vitality have uh, found their feet again. They look very shaky in the first half, I will say, of Vertigo. Definitely picked it up into the second. Don't get me wrong on that T side, but yeah, man. <sighs> some of the retakes on Vertigo had me very, very worried. Uh, man advantage scenarios being lost, etc., etc. So it is good to see them finding comfortability on the T sides across these two maps. Keep our eye on the CT side as the tournament goes on. But yeah, this is a, a much better response and honestly more of what we should have seen. Not necessarily wanted to see or expected, to, but definitely should have seen. If Vitality are vying for uh, a win of the tournament, a team like Shark should be no trouble for them. Yeah, exactly. The RG trying to play up close there as well, see if we can get anything on the hunt, but instead the Predator becomes the prey. And as Mezzi, you'll see him off at the tail end. That low bite not really amounting to basically anything. The 5.7s and the MP9s cannot scratch the surface. And uh, yeah, now a real difficult situation. This halftime break has got to be one of the most emphatic pep talks you've ever seen to try and turn this around. 10-1 could be 11-1 as well. And it already does start to feel like the beginning of the end for Sharks, but see whether that's the case. Molotov's coming towards under. Apex does tick a little bit. At the very least, though, good amount of control they're giving through mid. Sharks don't want to fight this. No, well, I mean, the mid area has been quite troublesome for them. Um, they've lost a lot of early exchanges in this position. Particularly window, though. Vitality have been abusing this area with early kills usually however here the difference is that they're sending a man in spinks behind enemy lines there's two players on either side of the window area for him to find one and two all right that's a bit too easy isn't it really clean spray downs 5v3 with a minute remaining okay this spinks guy's getting a little silly now to be honest <laughs> all too easy for him Well, as you'll see it off as well, of one of his own. Oh, and Apex going to steer it out. 11 to 1 at the half, ladies and gents. That was a brutal. Sharks, is there anything left in the locker? We'll have to wait and see after the break.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back in. Second half getting underway. Much smilier across the board this time around. You remember we came into that second half of Vertigo. It's kind of Zywu who's having a good time. Apex was in the zone and it paid off on that first map, to be fair, because he really was in the zone in the end. But here, much happier and a much smoother ride thus far. I got to agree, man. I think you're spot on. Everyone looks pretty chill. And I think that also probably shows by uh, the way they've been playing. Vitality have been loving life. People who haven't been loving life, Sharks. That was a brutal first half of Counter-Strike. They could barely do anything. Let's, you know, let's just be frank about it. It was a really, really tough display of a side who just got outclassed individually, outclassed in terms of not only just the raw mechanics, but the strats as well. And the strats of Vitality were just... Unfortunately, hold W. And they couldn't even basically close it here, right? And you can win a pistol on your CT side, deny a bomb plant. Sharks are really not going to have a hell of a lot to work with. Now or never for Sharks to find a bit of momentum. Can they deliver? If they want to go towards A. Nate's over the top. Not following up just yet, waiting for that flash to come from behind. Oh, this could be a bit difficult. They're set up and ready. However, the Glocks closing that gap. Look pretty good. Apex P2K, he actually found that kill around the corner. I didn't even notice, but goodness me, he's not able to get anything else. Sharks looking good here. As he, a fellow P2K -er at the back end of CT here, deleted immediately. It's just Sphinx from jungle. On V3. Not impossible. Still highly improbable. Crossfire's good. Talk to see it off. This is the star that Sharks needed. And of course, uh, you know, a bit of a story that's been developing across this series is just both sides have been having quite lackluster CT sides. I mean, it was in a 9-3 first half, then a 10-2 second half, where the T side's doing all the damage. They made an 11-1 T side here. Granted, it would require an absolute miracle for Sharks to be able to respond in kind and push this towards, you know, 13-11 or an overtime or anything of that sort. And we're not even going to get close to opening the door to that conversation just yet. But Vitality didn't exactly have a whale of a time on their CT on Vertigo. So we'll see whether things have been cleaned up a tad as they've warmed up into the game. But this round here, bit of a low bite. Deagle. One flash, and a Zeus is all they've got to work with. Doc making a lot of noise. Ooh, actually takes a fair bit of damage there. They will eliminate him out from triple. Reveals the stack though, doesn't it? Sphinx does well, finds that one kill, another one. Of course picked up. So, he gets himself a Galil. What's he going to be able to do with this, I suppose, is what we're all asking now. They'll be buying into the next anyway, so you might as well give it a little look, but I think with nothing revealing itself, he will look to hold on to it. Having a great game thus far. Looking to continue that trend and close it out quickly, right? Get this 2-0 in the bag. Let's see. I mean, two kills isn't terrible, right? In that, uh, that sort of instance. You take it. You take it all day. Shark up to a third. An expected round taken for them. Sphinx is going to have a buy until the next round. He was on the look whether he's maybe going to give it a go, but I think he'll just keep hold of that Galil. And it will be a buy and a reinvestment for the Sharks. Coming through, and of course, now a first investment. More vitality. What do they got for us? Gun's going to come out. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think enough for the air to be, and that is the case. Triple M4, Famas, and a Galil to work with for Vitality. Full belt to Utah and all the rest. Oh, they got This is the instance where they can give themselves a little run in. Molotov trying to be blocked there by Zai Wu, but just misses the bounce. But even still, Shark's not really going to aggressively claim mid control here. Bit of util. And they pump the brakes waiting for a push as they start to make a manoeuvre through under. Yeah, they're going to try and activate these under players, aren't they, really? Apex obviously pushing in. Spots of smoke coming out. That one does get blocked. So that could put a bit of a spanner in the works, but the contact through under has worked pretty successfully here. Flames does his best. It's two. It spinks out from short, however. And there are no real smokes around. They tried to play the contact and... Works initially. Is it going to be enough for them? It has left the A-bomb site open with the way that the kills have fallen. And 
situation we find ourselves in. Bomb plant Bomb easily enough. Kit available for Spinks. So curious here. They're split massively though, right? It all depends if they push in towards CT. Spinks could find himself caught. He's not ready for them to be so close. Oh, but they line up for him anyway. How's he gotten away with that? Oh man, that is brutal. Sharks, you know, we talk about bad spacing and more often than not, it's when you're kind of not close enough to trade, but they were too close to even do anything. They just get flustered in the situation and Spinks, ice cold as ever, delivers really nicely done. And that could spell the beginning of the end here for the shark side as they find themselves now at their opponent's map and series point in this opening best of three. Yeah, and this was tough, seriously tough. I mean, not only the fact of them lining up, but then Suplex doing damage as well to his teammate, tagging him up, which would have been even easier to kill. I mean, I oh, just hate to see it. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Top three. Sharks are coming back in with whatever they've got left, right? We've got a Mac 10 double Galil, and a bit of Uto, but it's not exactly conclusively across all five. As they look like they want to head towards B. Nader come down, maybe a little preemptively. Mezzi up close here as well. Gets his one, and they're all actually just falling apart. An answer back, but is it going to be enough? Suplex. Moving forwards, footsteps definitely heard. Back spotted, Zaiwu finishes him off. That might just be it here. Indeed, it is the case. 13 to 3 on the second map. No sweat for vitality, I think it is safe to say. Sharks, though, putting everything they had into that first. Unfortunately, could not quite get it over the line. I think Vitality, in a, in a way, may even be disappointed that they had to work so hard for that first map, but ultimately coming away with... A one in that W column here, man. Yeah, man, man, this is, uh, you know, a, a weird game of Counter-Strike. I'm not even going to give it kind of anything more than that. It was just a weird game. Map one was way closer than uh, we expected. And then I think map two was way more one-sided than we thought, yeah. considering Sharks were, they were competitive, you know? So neither way, the expectations into each individual map were completely the opposite of what we were kind of initially preparing ourselves for coming into this game. I think, you know, fundamentally, we have to give a lot of credit towards the likes of Vitality. You know, that first map, we already kind of beaten it to death now, but that was a really miraculous comeback. And once they were warmed up, they just did not pull any punches. They knew that actually they had to give the respect over towards Sharks, and they did. They, you know, they, they, they weren't uh, going kind of half arsed in any of these fights. They were making sure that they came into it, went into sixth gear in towards Mirage, and just didn't give them any leeway. When you give Sharks a bit of space, they actually are a side that can work with it. They're not kind of some uh, some slouches, right? We know this the, the South American scene can produce some really decent talent, and Vitality made sure to see it off and not give themselves any more scares. Yeah, I mean, that is true, right? I think scares is a good way of putting it at the end of the day, because uh, that first map, as we mentioned a little bit, started dire, you know? It was kind of like the... Yeah. Both ends of the spectrum in terms of where Counter-Strike should be at. You've got a, a really, 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 really worrying uh, opening from them in terms of the retake. CT side, not great. And then that T side, the calling, the reads, you know, the um, subtle changes to their attack was just really, really well done, really well executed by the entire team. You know, so yeah, very much impressed by what Vitality showed us that they were capable of. But in the same vein, there's there's a few issues. There's certainly a few issues, and whether it is just being cold initially, um, first game of the tournament, a team that you're not really sure of what to expect. They're playing a lot more aggressive than you maybe thought. You know what I mean? And just for 30 seconds of the round, bursting straight in towards B. These are things that you have to readjust to. So yeah, it is curious. It is very very curious. But hopefully. Vitality, we get to see um, the final three halves of them throughout the tournament rather than that first one of the series. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, something I mentioned at the start of the series, I mentioned again now, when it comes down to it, a win's a win, right? And, and that's all that matters. I think, like, you know, we were talking about coming in towards map number one for a side who, uh, you know, they ha the guys haven't seen each other for about a month since the major. They took a break as well. They're j I think they're just getting a bit of the kind of official rust out of the way, you know what I mean? Back on land, back in that highly competitive environment, just making sure that they... Uh, Start to you know all click back together the way we know Vitality Camera. This is a side who are coming in towards a tournament like this and and do expect 
to, uh, you know, at the very least be at playoffs, but, you know, by their standards, be going the whole way or going the full distance, at least pushing towards a kind of top four finish, right? If not further. So I think for Vitality, yes, that map number one was very scary, was a little weird, right? But I think they can sit back here, have a little chocolate and be like, Thank God we won it, right? But, you know, we did, right? And that's all that matters. Now we're okay. Now we're awake as well. I think sometimes you do just need a little bit of a kick up the arse, right? You know, when you when you, when you you aren't really awake in the server, you do just need a little scare. That'll get you going. And they did, right? And now we expect Vitality to be at that level, right? And, you know, like we said, the next game for them is going to be the winner of the M80 Bet Boom game. Regardless of who it is, it's a winnable game, right? There's no two ways about it, right? And then they've got a really good opportunity. I mean, in this part of the bracket of Group B, they're without a doubt the best team, the most consistent team here. The only other big names being the likes of Falcons, inconsistencies have played them. G2, inconsistencies have played them. So Vitality should expect to be number one in this group. And now they've got to win. That's the right road to be on. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, as, as you say, a great look. And we can see exactly what they should be able to deliver, right? Yes, it is against Sharks. I think one of the things that they have there, and we definitely see it on the second map, is just individually, you know, Sharks might be in the right place. Um, they might be uh, sort of prepared for a move, but unfortunately just can't land the shots, can't react fast enough. You know, it's it's a difficult one for them. Uh, I do believe we have an interview ready here, indeed, to uh, get underway. I think we might have Mezzi coming in, um, to be fair, which is pretty exciting stuff. But yeah, I'm... Um, Looking forward to uh, to getting into a little bit of a chat um, with one of the Vitality players. Yeah, it should be good, man. I, I, you know, it, it definitely is a good time for us to really uh, have a little deep dive into the mindset off the back of a, you know, it's a weird game of Counter-Strike. Um, and sometimes it's, it's nice to kind of hear what they, what they are thinking. Obviously, a bit of relief, I think, more, more than most. I think we have the interview ready, though. Let's bring on, I think we may have Mezzi. We'll have to wait and see who it is who's joining us. It is the three Brits on <laughs> camera here for Pro League. Mezzi, hello, brother, hello. thank you very much for joining us. I will preface and I warn you, there's a, there's a bit of delay. <laughs> so I give it a, you know, a good three, four, five seconds. There's a, a chunky bit of delay. It's quite funny. But thank you for joining us, brother. I want to start by talking about that game itself. That first map was a little precarious, a little scary. Talk me through what the conversation was like at halftime and then into the second half. You know, you're 9-3 down. It's not an easy deficit to climb back into. How did you get back into the game? Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, we, we're always confident in our T side, especially on Vertigo. I think... Um, like our CT side is always a bit rough, especially towards the B side. I think it's like one of the hardest positions to play. And for me, I had a, a rough game on the CT side. But um, I think overall, we just didn't play our game on our CT side. We didn't uh, impose the game on onto them. It was kind of letting them set the pace and move around. And we were we're not we were kind of a step behind, even though. We kind of had good information. We weren't really rotating towards it. But yeah, we just said uh, we, we knew we were confident. We took a minute to breathe and uh, go into the T side. So we knew we were confident. We knew we could uh, like get rolling after a little bit and get it warmed up as individuals. So yeah. So talking about uh, that Sharks team as well, like you say, allowing them to sort of play their own game. Um, it certainly is something, again, that's going to be a bit unorthodox. We're kind of making an argument for them to maybe be a tier two Brazilian team, but obviously uh, qualifier wise might not be the team that you were expecting to face off against from that Brazilian region. Um, yeah, just talk me through maybe what you were expecting from this squad in terms of the way that they play. Did you have much chance to look into them? There's not as much info available for a team like this. You know, did they catch you off guard, I think, with how bursty and aggressive they were? Uh, I, I think they did a good job overall of switching it up. I think we had obviously some some data to look at, but um, like I say, it's very limited and you you, you can't always like uh, take it for certain that they're going to play the exact same. I think I think Mirage uh, was definitely kind of similar to how we had seen from the prep, so it was a lot easier. But Vertigo, I think they did a good job at switching it up and switching up the pace, like I said, to, towards B. They did a good job at uh, catching those timings and, like like say, bursting into their sights really fast. So I think, it, yeah, I think I think Vertigo, like I said, they did a good job. At, I think they countered us pretty well, and um, it, it definitely caught us off guard a little bit. But, um, yeah, they, they played they played a really good T-side on, on their Vertigo. I 
And, and now I wanted to talk about you guys as well, just overarching in terms of the event, right? What's the vibes in, in the camp? I know there's a little bit of a, a content bit with Sponge where you're talking about, you know, you guys haven't seen each other for like a month. You had a, obviously a week break as well, post-major. How, how are things looking over on your side? Are you feeling confident? What are the expectations as well for you guys coming into the event? I know it's always a win, but uh, yeah. How are you guys feeling coming into us Pro League? Yeah, I think we're we're feeling really confident. Um, of course, uh, it's it's always a bit uh, going in a bit cold. Obviously, having such time off, we played not playing since the major. So um, obviously, you get into the, back into the officials. It's uh, it can be tough in the first one, but um, yeah, I think practice has been going well. The the atmosphere has been good in the team. Of course, after a disappointed uh, end to the to the major run, but overall, like you say, in vitality, we're always looking to win. And there's only a few tournaments left before the uh, before the break. So that's that's think our goal is. We want to be winning some of these tournaments and and getting back uh, back to the top because we know we're capable of it the practice has been going well and the preparation is always good so um it's 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 our main goal all right wonderful stuff i reckon we'll leave it there uh we've obviously got a bit of that delay like neo mentioned and as is evident so it's kind of adding a lot of time on to the interview so thank you very much for uh joining us mezzi and hopefully we'll speak to you again uh in the near future my man take care brother Thank you. See you later, guys. All right, there you go. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll we'll try and <laughs> I know, a little bit, a little bit, because we're just also there. Like, it's a bit of a, a guessing game of how long yeah. uh, it's going to be. I suppose you know before he answers, staring is he thinking, into his or eyes. is there a delay? You know, so it, it is it is a little bit comical. Uh, I believe we do have our U.S. Air Force aim high player of the match here uh, to present. Actually, a bit of an interesting one. We get to choose this, of course, and uh, we went for Apex, right? Obviously, with the way that that second map goes down. Pretty much everybody had a nice showing fragging wise. Um, I'm not quite sure towards the end. I think maybe Spinks might have outdone him numbers wise, but uh, he looked really good on the first map, right? Especially again towards the end of things when they were uh, pulling it close and, and taking it over the line in the end. But I think the big thing that swayed it, especially for yourself there now, is the fact that his calling was really, really solid in those final six or seven rounds of Vertigo. Yeah, you know, for me, obviously, you know, numbers-wise, we, we, there's a couple of different discussions. I we had a pretty good game. Spinks had a good game. Flames had a good uh, map one. It's one of those things where we could have gone a different, uh, a few different ways. But I really think for us, one of the things of why we wanted to go Apex here is just probably how important he was to this side in terms of the response. This is a team who are in a bit of trouble, nine three down, and we look towards the big, you know, the, the, the big names in the leadership department of this uh, team. And obviously, X has only has a couple of moments where he can get on the mic, get active try and save this team a little bit. A lot of the onus, a lot of the pressure is on Apex's shoulders, and I think he called really well. I mean, Mezzi sort of alluded to it a little bit, saying we back our T-sides, we know what we can do on T-side, and we know how we can find ways back into games, and a hell of a lot of that has to come from Apex. I think a lot of credit to this guy. For me, so important, so crucial to the success that they just found, and of course, these tempo shifts that we then saw in towards map number two really put sharks in the mud. But ladies and gents, that is just game number one for us on the B-Stream, game number two overall. We've got one more best of three to bring you over in group b and it's going to be a bit of a banger as well so you do not want to miss this one from myself and scriv we will say goodbye temporarily and we'll join you again for that third best three of the day in just a moment see you after the break at some point in every gamer's life there's a question to be asked do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. See a couple of smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. 
Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Now it's three versus two. It is doable once again for the Mongols. Stuck in the shadows. It reveals his position. Now as he comes out of hiding, oh, triple kill. What a kill. Getting 
flank and two players lie ahead of him. Oh, he is suddenly alive! them out. Rotate um, through. Out. Next has got a lot of pressure coming his way and he does stand in the flames. Delivers! Triple headshot on the P2K! The rest is Hunters. He'll finish it with style! This would be a necessary clutch from Frozen. Will Frozen aggress into Nexa! He's bringing it together piece by piece! Frozen! Now it's all on to Nexa. He has some Kev, and he's got a clutch in front of him. What can you do? Five seconds as he to hold it, closing the gap. It's Nexa's chance, and it's glorious. Triple kill from Nexa.
done it. Miller shoot four and two with the back off the cake, and now he's separated it. But it's nine seconds left. He's so damn close, enough time to plant. Bludgeons them to death. How's the uh, general vibes coming into this one? You've you've been kind of on the grind in the uh, some of the online cups and the lands. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we actually didn't practice a lot because of a lot of tournaments. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I would say that that was more important than uh, any practice because when you green in a lot of like games officials, it's obviously gaining like a lot of experience. It's gaining a lot of uh, chemistry between players, and I feel like uh, in this lineup we are like. We're on the right way, let's, let's say. Yeah, okay, the right way. Uh, what would you say, uh, just a random question, but I'm intrigued, intrigued, is is there a particular player on your roster that's impressed you or surprised you? Actually, I would say uh, Magna Jess. Yeah. Uh, not only because he like a good player, if we will look uh, on statistic, but more about how he communicate while the game. Uh, I would say he even uh, became like second caller in our team. Wow. And it's pretty impressive if we will uh, like look at his uh, experience and if we will look at his age right now. So I would say that he have like really br bright future. Yeah. How, so how old is he? I remember seeing his name on all of the 19, face 19. it top player. 19. 19, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. But and again, uh, in my opinion, in CS, it's not uh, the age is not important if we will compare it uh, with uh, uh, how long he's on the scene. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because he playing like maybe two years or maybe three, it's it's not really like long time. He hasn't even got a five year coin, and he's yeah. about to play against these pros who've been doing it for ten years. True, that, true, true. That's cool, man. That's cool. But you get to see new talent rise up and to be able to be kind of a part of helping their understanding. Is that are you enjoying that experience? Kind of getting him up to speed. How is your system coming along? Has there been evolutions in the Nafani system? Uh, actually, for now, we're trying to uh, change it a bit. Uh, we change coach right now. Uh, railway trying to uh, like being a big boss, let's say. So I'm just uh, trying to uh, giving some advices. But in general, playing in CS, which uh, railways yeah. like can see. I can't help but fall back into my emotions. In my emotions Cause all the good times that we had Is flooding like an ocean Sometimes I wish We made it through the summer I never thought I'd lose my homie Love and friend but it's over
what you read, not all words are the same. Not everything you say, you can't trust anyway. All the thieves dress as sheep, tell you they know the way. So bite the hand that feeds you to the wolves as prey. on the page Now they're pleading on the fifth and last mistake But I know that Take these secrets the game Keep us all the keys to the gate Only open for the pawns It's how they just to play I don't keep up with the fake We are not the same So go take your lies It's plastic and products Left in a box with nothing to promise Snapping a boss bubbles, I think it's how creators see Other creators be perceived this fly, you're whipping right, but off ID, you're broken cheap. I need an electric bike to bend this food, to bend these rules. Get these tools, cause hate is true, they're watching me. Haters discretion and vibe. Oh me, oh my, I just want to survive in the sea under darkness. Hiding from the light, all we do is push violence. Pain over violence, radio silence. Turn up this up right now. Right now. right now, I like this up right now. Right now. You might be stuck. 
In every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. 
Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. That's it. Double smokes in the same place there. Simple. Just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Hello everybody, welcome back in here, continuing on with our games for today. Of course, the uh, third BO3 of the day, if you've been here the entire time, especially on the B stream. I mean, fair enough. Thank you so much for that. We are looking forward to getting into our next one here. M80 up against Betboom for this Neo. I think it should be a close affair, I'm not going to lie. It should be. I mean, there's a lot of question marks about both these two teams are in uh, kind of different places. You know, you've been bet boom, you've been trying to make this team work for a while, but it's just not quite been clicking, right? Especially against the better teams, so to say. And they've got M80, new boys on the block in terms of Sin, joining this team, taking the mantle as well. You know, we saw Def playing at the RMR. He wasn't bad, in all fairness, but I think he's more than happy going back to his coaching slot and kind of watching uh, from a bit of a bird's eye view. But, you know, I'm interested to see how this team looks with Sin on an international stage. They did quite well domestically. We saw them qualify for the Esports World Cup over Liquid, which I think is very, very good. But how are they going to look on a big stage against international teams competing on LAN? Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the, the big question here, of course. Um, I don't know, a pretty exciting team. M80 been doing an awful lot domestically that I think is really, really cool. And, you know, there's there's uh, not as many tournaments, of course, that go on uh, in North America in the same way that they do for the Tier 2 uh, EU teams like BetBoom, right, to really cut their teeth on. But at the same time, that um, means that you have a little bit more time, but a lot more stakes to work with, I suppose. A lot more pressure coming into something sure. like a Pro League because um, it does feel a little bit rarer, whereas BetBoom may be going through the motions a bit. And they're difficult time for this bet boom team as well right i think that they are at a level of like okay anyone below them within that tier two they're doing pretty well but they're struggling to break through their ceiling you know and it is a, a weird sort of team that's come together um i don't necessarily want to say like rejects but there's a lot of names in here i think that have had tastes of success is this a project that they are putting um 110 into or is it a bit more of a for sale sign hopefully to get back into the tier one Etc. Etc. So I think BetBoom is a really difficult team to to read and to know what kind of game to expect. Yeah, absolutely. And some of the individuals as well on towards this BetBoom team are no joke, right? I mean, I think for me the big one, uh, Magna Jez, of course, previous Spirit Academy is a seriously talented youngster. This guy, um, I mean, he's been putting up numbers for a long, long time, and for me, he's been looking like one of the most kind of uh, influential in towards twenty twenty four kind of young CS players. Definitely one to keep an eye on for. Um, not quite kind of at that donk level from Spirit Academy, but definitely up there. This is a guy who can play tier one, I think, in my per personal opinion. And I think probably in the future, we will see him do that. For now, I think BetBoom is actually a perfect sort of breeding ground for him where he can really start to shine a little bit, maybe, in terms of the tier 1.5. But play against, uh, play alongside, may I say, guys have a hell of a lot of experience. Nafali, prime example, somebody who played at the top level, played for a long time in there, and it's kind of, can teach him a hell of a lot. Chiron as well, had a stint with VP, really showcased that this guy is somebody that can play at kind of a little bit of an elite level. So I think for me, um, a lot of this team revolves around whether they can get Magnages activated. He is the real kind of source of firepower, him and, and Zorte for two different roles. And I want to see whether they can do that on, on a LAN environment. I've not caught this guy on LAN, but uh, for a guy who's pretty inexperienced, he's pretty damn good. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that there are some exciting prospects um, for that Bet Boom team, definitely. You know, it, it, again, it opens up a door for a really um, close, really exciting sort of series here between these two teams. I think that we should be in for something that delivers a little. We're hoping for three maps out of it. You know, our first uh, 
series that we casted at the very least um, ended a bit quicker than we would have liked, I think. But yeah, so it, it would be nice to see yeah. something kind of close here. But I think it is definitely possible as well. Like the way that maps work out, etc. They both look pretty uncomfortable on the same maps. They have a lot of uh, favorability on on the same maps as well. So I think when that veto comes through, it'll be pretty interesting um, to, to see how that is going to pan out between them. Yeah, absolutely as well. On the other side as well, M80. This is a side who I think recently have kind of looked, you know, no joke, right? I think for me, Malbs is an incredible talent. Somebody who, I mean, there we go, picked as well. But I mean, this, this is somebody who is so damn good. I mean, recently as well for M80, he's been such a source of kind of firepower. And without a doubt, one of the most talented players that I've seen in a long, long time coming through the South American scene. And he has been for, for ages. I mean, he always has been so damn talented, so damn reliable as well. Coming off the back of the eSports, it's gonna work up North American close qualifier. 10 maps played for him for 1.45 average rating is just bonkers. Out kind of playing individuals, you know, like Twist, Snaf, uh, Doom Arrow, etc. etc. I mean, this is somebody for me who you really do have to keep uh, a big eye on. And I think it's gonna be probably without a shadow of a doubt, um, the bet boom guys coming in towards this game, that is the main guy you look towards to try and shut down. How can we make sure that Malbs can't get active? If he does get active as well, they could be in for a hell of a lot of shots. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, they, they really have to have done their work on this uh, M80 team. I think uh, the, you know, Mal Malbs is one as well, but Slack's also a name that you've got to watch, obviously pulled over from uh, the European region. Um, and was really, really making waves over here as well for, for quite some time uh, for the alternate attacks boys. They've had a bit of a drop off since losing him, unfortunately, uh, a bit of sprout before that, you know, so a really, really solid German scene player for quite some time. And M80 took a bit of a chance on him. I think it's paid off. He looks really good for me, has definitely helped them step up their game on that domestic level once again. Um, so there's a couple of prongs for M80, of course, that you really do have to watch here. On the bet boom side, I think Magno Jez, also, to touch on that is a fantastic name to highlight. He's this young gun, as you say, coming in from the academy team and going to be probably the hardest player to read, the hardest player to fully recognize um, his his game style. So that's something that Nafani can use to his advantage is just having a guessing game around Magno Jez, how he's going to approach things and whether indeed they've been able to mold him. He's only been within the team for a month, right? So he might have a certain way of approaching things mm. uh, in the academy scene, in the academy team. But now that he's in the big leagues, as it were, the the world is his oyster kind of thing. But more so, I suppose, yeah. like Nafani's oyster, if that makes sense. You know, like he can really yeah. use this piece to his advantage if Nafani uh, has a game plan behind how to facilitate Magno Jez. Yeah, and of course, a bet boom, you know, we were talking about kind of esports World Cup qualifiers, and they were in one of their own against sides like uh, Sashi, Cloud9, and Eternal Fire. And they did pick up two back to back losses to Cloud9 and Eternal Fire, which, you know, they're not bad teams. I mean, Cloud9 obviously are in flux. Eternal Fire, definitely no joke. Taking a map off them wasn't bad at all. And then prior to that, they were picking up a, a fairly decent run of wins, and decent streaks were primarily in kind of that tier two, tier 1.5. As you can see, the veto is running through a nuke banned out by M80. That's more or less their permit. They, it kind of changes a little between that and overpass. Uh, and an Inferno banned out by Bepboom. That is their permit. There's no kind of hesitation about that. Nubis is going to be picked up as the first map. Now, this is a real interesting one for M80 picking this in. It's not a great map for Bepboom but they play it a hell of a lot. It's the second most played map this year, right? Just behind that of Mirage. So an interesting one for MAT, you've played it three times, only won one of them. Then we're gonna see Bet Boom pick in towards an Ancient. And again, another kind of interesting one where it's not exactly been fantastic for Bet Boom. They've looked a little inconsistent on that map, so it leaves it a little vulnerable. But Mirage, as a decider, that's kind of perfect. They both play a hell of a lot. They're both very successful on it. That feels like it makes more sense. That first map for me though, is the real big talk. Yeah, I mean, I expected this Vito, maybe not in this order, right? Mirage picked out um, potentially by M80 and then Anubis as the decider is, is more what I was thinking. But this way round also works a little bit. It's kind of riskier, you know, that, that Mirage um, as the decider could indeed go both ways, but you've got to get there, right? And I think Bet Boom will feel pretty good about the ancient pick. Yeah, Anubis is one maybe coming into the tournament that they have worked on. Low sample size, they can start from scratch, as it were, and maybe they see something about the Bet Boom game. You know, it is, uh, again, statistically, as you say, not one of their best, despite the amount of reps that they have on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough. It is tough to call here, I think. It's an interesting, risky move from M80. 
I'm kind of a fan of that. I think maybe you do need to, as the slight uh, underdog and from the underdog region, have to come in and do something unorthodox, do something to maybe just set your opponents uh, into kind of panic mode or, or um, indeed shake them up a little bit. So, yeah, I think I can get behind the logic of it, but they surely have got to have done some work as well, right? Because it's not like it's a sneaky pick or anything like that that may well it is a map that they really don't like and don't play at least traditionally true the one for me that i felt like was potentially going to be a possibility is actually bet boom trying to punish pick back into an overpass i said kind of coming towards this veto where for nuke and overpass are both kind of hovering around it you know they both play twice by m80 they kind of flip between either of them as kind of uh their perma ban or their ban that they like to go for that's the one where I maybe thought that Bet Boom could use it. They play that a fairly decent amount. The only, I guess, caveat is that M80 have the two times that they did play it. One of them, you know, against Legacy, another one against Take Flight. They did pick up wins in both, which obviously is good. But I thought like that was maybe an opportunity for a bit of a punish pick. Um, but they didn't go for it in the end. They ended up, uh, again, banning the second wave there by M80. So, yeah, that was the only rule question mark that potentially could have come through and that might have put them on a bit of edge but it doesn't matter ladies and gents let's get ready to get rocking and rolling anubis is where we're going to be kick starting this one it is for me an absolute question mark that it is picked in with three times played in 2024 and only one of them being a win one of m80 being cooking up in the prax hopefully we get to answer that sin kicking things off flash around the corner the other German within this squad alongside Slacks. No kills as yet, but a lot of pushback here. There you are. Swisher comes around with his Julies. Eliminating the first. Sin, meanwhile, deleted, in fact. But Swisher's looking good. Keeps the Julies rolling and keeps that man advantage strong for M80. Still, Bet Boom have got this really weird position. Uh, not a game state that you often have to deal with as a counter terrorist. It's just Swisher around this corner that needs dealing with. Shadows, edges, oh my goodness, going for the ace, he's going to get it on the pistol, let's go for Swisher, the Julies, some people, they always say, why are, why are Julies bought up, but that's why, that's the potential behind the Berettas. My god, that is something so special, fair play, when called upon, Swisher delivers, a very, very important sort of talisman in this team, and my god, does he deliver. First kill, first round, may I say, and five kills for him is not a bad start for somebody who, when he gets active, can be so difficult to shut down. That really is a beautiful little star, it has to be said. Bet boom. Just a little stunned, a little shell shocked off the back of that. Zorte, gonna pick himself up a Galil. Alongside that, Glocks, 250. Swing in the corner, Slacks want to stick around. The MP9 to reclaim a little bit of space, but this should be a bit of a massacre here. Slacks at range for one. Looking for a second as well. Zorta will do a bit of damage, and the pistol's swinging. All right, 3v3. There's maybe something to work with. Yeah, Molotov is well placed by Wreck. Oh, weird fight going down here. Ah, he gets traded, right? That's kind Come of on. the key thing. What are we looking at here? What have you seen? It's a 1v2. The numbers are good. Bepin can actually pull away the win here on a P250 and a Galil. And Malbs was expecting a rotate back towards B, but he's got it wrong. So he's got a long rotate back towards the site and he smoked through camera. So this clock is really going to chip down for a guy who doesn't have a kit or a smoke for the bomb. Yeah, no information as well is kind of the key thing. Oh, no way. He's going to save it. He's going to save it. He doesn't fancy his oh, chances. Yeah. Take that M4 into the next. So yeah, Bet Boom coming away with a huge steal. It felt like for a moment, maybe he was positioned to get in behind, but just, you know, teammates died a bit too fast, I suppose. Yeah, it's a tough call, but in the end, it's an easy call, in fact, for Malbs. Takes this M4 out and gives Bet Boom the low buy win. It's actually crazy. That's a really poor one to lose. I mean, a really great one to win. If you're Bet Boom, though, Zorta. Hero Galil, a P250, and that was it. And they've made it stick. Fair play. And yeah. It made it just get pulled apart. And actually, not even just pulled apart, but pulled into the fights there that they didn't need to take. They very easily could have, you know, pumped the brakes a little bit, played back sights, and 
essentially relied off the back of the uh, the more premium riflery, but they tried to get into the thick of it, into the chaos, and the chaos is what cost them. Not bad. M4 gets the lead to Matsorta is making this Galil sing, dude. Back 10 for some good control in at dark. Get that M4 scooped up. But yeah, they're looking good early on, aren't they? These are uh, the individuals. Magno, Jez, and Zorte that we want towards the top end of that scoreboard. Wreck close to the action here with the 5-7. Trying to get a bit cheeky in and around the smoke. I think they're weary and aware of the fact that there might be another player around, or rather that there should be, you know, a bit too easy onto the A-bomb site. All the same. Mm. M18, not much that they can do here. So I think, yeah, they're going to try and save what they have. That looks quite likely. So, you bottom what they've got, which is that MAC-10 and a, a bit of an upgrade in terms of the pistols. But, you know, it was a forced buy-in. Didn't go all too well. Only the one casualty. You're not really going to complain all that much. Bet boom. Good start, though, for them. Two to one. Take it back a lead and give it nothing on the tail end as well. Just in case there's anyone peering around the corner. So, all things considered, not bad. Not bad at all. You'd see a little bit more of M80 then, of course. Just the same sort of buy in towards this one. Sort of that one kill does basically the primary bulk of the damage. A gamble stack and the gamble didn't pay off. 2 1, realistically, should be made 3 1. Quiet start into this round from Bet Boom. Waiting for a push maybe to come their way. Uh, nothing of the sort. It is a stack from M80. Again, something that Bet Boom might be waiting for, digging for, looking for info, you know. And, and it is also maybe a little weird not to have any presence in this round. So, so quiet from Bet Boom. It's like, surely you'd expect a pistol or a deagle to get a bit cheeky. I'm going to look for it in towards dark. Magno Jez got to be careful. He does have come around this corner. Magno Jez leading the charge as he does manage to find a big kill. Nade going down, leaving Sin on 2 HP. We'll see here. Looks good for the A hit, to be honest. They've got the utility out. Not that it's needed, but this should be doable. Well, let's take a look and see. Probably should be fine, though, like you said. You two are going to come down, and I think, for the remaining three of M80... Maybe a little bit of a posture for an exit frag, but they're not going to overplay their cards in this one. Ooh, Magna Jez. Big jump up, but that was a messy spray. Really laboured. Very easy, could have just reset himself and seen enough to find a bit of damage, but he doesn't. Slacked 1 HP, soon 2 HP. The pistols for them looking for anything at the tail end. Smoke will come down. That could be a recovered weapon, but it's a bad smoke. Got a huge gap in it. Oh, but Wreck using that to his advantage. Gonna find Karen with a Deagle. We don't mind a couple on the tail end. We're not gonna say no to it. As Wreck, he moves in for that Galil and will get it. Now still in the smoke for the finding remaining moments. No hunts. So they're given that. Not that it's any really sort of premium weapon. That boom, three to one. Not terrible, man. Not terrible. I think this is a... But from inside looking very confident. They're more than happy to get into fights. But of course, this is against lower buys. Now we need to see if they can keep that confidence up when they have much more scary firepower on the other side. And in all fairness, what the response is looking like for M80. What have they got in the locker? On these four buys. Slacks, of course, picking up his favorite AWP. What has he got for us? Again, just the nades raining in, but no initial faces. It's Naphany above the smoke, spotted and finished. A nice, easy pickup for Sin to kick things off here. M80 will be really, really happy with that. They've got to do something with it now. Of course, but again, Bet Boom not really giving them the scope to expand their man advantage. Zorte, I like this, contacting in. Oh, and he's going to get good timing on it. Will he keep going here? I think fancies it. 
Trying to be the hero. No one around to support him, but he's taking matters into his own hands. Oh, misses the edge of Malbs. Still going to put the fear of God into them, I suppose. And the Molotov, super effective. Malbs nearly going down, in fact. Meanwhile, over towards mid and A. The rest of Bet Boom looking for a way in. Smoke going to go down. Angler is also met with a smoke on the other side. So, Bet Boom with the numbers disadvantage. I have no clear way to a site. Are they going for a long rotate back or they try and force their way through a smoke? That's the big question here. Re smoking towards B makes me think they want to commit A, and that's going to be the play. The bomb starts to make a move, but so is Wreck. He's got the support of his teammates who may resort as quick. Very quick indeed, and Magnus just stepping up too. The bomb starts to cross, it's precarious. He's getting forward from all angles. No way you go for a knife. Zorta, what are you doing? What are you doing? Wow. It barely had time to get to the side, but Saxon misses shot. Oh. What is happening? Bomb being planted right below you, Slax doesn't realize. <laughs> it goes for the jumping no scope. What has just happened in this round? Zort is going for knives. Slack is going for jumping orb shots to deny a bomb plant, which has to go down. What is happening? I don't know, mate. I don't know. I, I am perplexed. Perplexed by some of the decision making. I think, you know, initially it is Zort that we've got to look towards, but like, um, yeah, I think that strews enough chaos in there. Slacks gets caught up in it a little. There probably is someone getting kind of vocal at him that it's like, he's he's got no time. He has to plant. He has to, you know. Mm. So, I don't know, small bits of panic or maybe completely accidental with just uh, adrenaline being all over the place. I can't lie. That may be the worst round of Car Strike I've <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of mind blowing, but uh, hopefully we're in for a bit more of that because those early rounds were oh. very, very <laughs> slow, especially for an Anubis. So maybe yeah. we see a pickup in pace after something like that. Mm. We have a little tech pause. Hopefully, only a brief one, and then we can get a back on the way. It seems like Saren has some sort of an issue. So, yeah. We will take a look and see. But yeah, I mean, a weird round. But uh, a round one, I guess, is basically all that matters. And Bet Boom keep this uh, kind of streak alive. Question mark as well as for Def when he wants to get on the mic. And I, mean, I guess what he's going to say, right? It's been a bit of a scrappy game of Counter Strike thus far. Yeah, needs to see this guy back in the mic, see what he can do to. Just alleviate a bit of the pressure. I feel like the M80 are playing with pressure on their shoulders right now. They're feeling a little bit constricted at times by Bet Boom, who are playing very fast, very loose as well, and just on the fly. But it looks like Tech Pause is concluded. Everyone seems to be uh, moving around to a degree. And now this is a Tech Pause. We are getting a conversation to be had here called by M80. Good to see Def get on the mic as well. I think even though it is relatively early, it's not a great start for M80. Pissed around, yeah, but it's one man's heroics, an ace out of Swisher to get that pistol. And then since then, it's kind of been one-way traffic. Yeah, that last round, definitely the closest that they've come uh, in, in a while. And it was just absolute carnage. I don't know that you're really going to be able to uh, replicate the parameters that got you down to that 1v1 situation. So again, another low buy another rough economic situation for m80 that's one big thing here for the ct side they've just never been able to get the money off the ground t side of anubis though but boom we expect them to do well from here Utah being set up for a b pop there's three players in this direction it's going to be a bit of a brawl for a mac 10 trying to get active caught by the second flash of his teammate but he's crossed and he jumps across it's kind gets the kill but Human flashbang, so to say. Molotov directly hits Slack, and that's the round. They're just like that. This sort of low buy amounts to nothing. Still stick around for maybe some level of an exit frag, but that's got to be the round already. Beppum going to find five in a matter of moments. Again, kind of fair enough. You're not really expecting uh, all that much out from M80 on a buy like this. Still, that boom, it's great for them. Very, very simple rounds. Very easy indeed. And just uh, not having to ask too much of these players, right? I think that's sort of the key thing here. Trying to eliminate what they can in the end as well. Kind of on both sides, I suppose. Oh my goodness, there goes Slacks. Ooh. 
Double on the dig. Not bad at all. All righty. You take a couple of consolations. You're not going to say no. It's not changing what is this kind of developing story here of... So far, so good for Beppu. Simple stuff for them, right? I mean, it's been pretty damn easy. Carrying up double entry, that basically confirms it in place. I think he did tag uh, Manglages as well, threw him with a headshot, and confirms it the second bullet. Not bad. You take him. Like I said, though, not going to make a big difference. Slacks with the AWP. Zorta. Over towards there's a Magnages near as well. So has had pretty good success from in and around this position, but it was primarily rifles. How does he now look with the orb? Oh, nice find from Malbs, to be fair. Two of them round there, obviously, uh, waiting. Not the end of the world on this map, it feels like, to trade one for one. We talk about that quite a lot, you know, which way does it swing? Generally, it's towards the T side, because you have to weaken things up, but I don't know. Anubis... Close packed enough, telegraphed enough that it's not awful. Softens up the attack. I like the move here from M80. It's all a question of the timing, though. They are slowly hemorrhaging control towards A as they do this. Looks like they will find decent timing on it, though, to be fair. Wreck moving back before they've pushed in. So it all works out in the end. It's a question of how Bet Boom look. Trying to contact in. Chiron very close to the action. Goes down to Slax's orb, though. No smokes, no flashes to deal with him. They walk right into the trap while blind. Wreck getting another. So here we go. Looking for that second round, and I think they might just get it. Zorte, three for him. And they're not giving him an inch here. 20 seconds. Spotted him out. Can he even get the bomb plant in this situation? Slack says no. And M80 back on the board. Good, right? Uh, about time. That's a much more conclusive round. See, Sin as well, just really going to rally the troops a bit. Make sure that they keep this a competitive first half. This, for us, is a real question mark of a map in the sense of what have M80 been doing in the off time? What have they been doing to solidify this map ready for Pro League from a map that originally wasn't a big part of the pool or anything of the sort? We'll see. Nah, funny. A little conversation with the ref there. And I think maybe something of a bit of a technical nature again. That was my assumption. Coaches aren't involved, so yeah, maybe. But I think you might be on the M80 side this time. They all look pretty chill. They're vibing out. i got to say, it's, um, I don't know if you've been catching much of the player accounts, but it seems like managers and Kyron have a pretty pretty good relationship they uh they seem that they, they were doing a like throwing gang signs or something earlier they were practicing celebrations it seemed like a mini handshake it's good he's been integrated into the team quickly which is what you want to see everyone got their headphones on back over to m80 so i think hopefully should be back on the way in just a second There is potentially, I'm just having a little uh, quick check here, may well have been mm. some crossover. Um, let me see. Okay, no, un unfortunately not. Chiron was done with Spirit Academy by the time Magna Jez joined, but I think they might be familiar True. with one another um, just from the scene, similar ages, you know, coming up at the same sort of time. Yeah, and pugs, you know what I mean? Like, I, I they, they, they seem to play a, a lot of these, like, up and comers as well. You see them playing, uh, you know, like your face, yeah, of course, and your uh, your FPLs and all the same. I mean, for a while, Magna Jazz was like number one in FPL, like multiple months. I'm pretty sure. I think he's had a pretty good like run of it when he was, uh, I think, prior to the pickup of Bet Boom, and then of course since Bet Boom, in you know, a hell of more pugs, hell of more scrims. I mean, not pugs. Nafani gonna find the first. So the four IGL versus IGL. Nafali to kickstart thing. Nice opener. Now they've got a good amount to work with. Yeah, nice change up from Bet Boom as well. They've been playing pretty conventionally uh, the past few rounds. Quite slow. Just get the utility, let that do the talking, and then they'll go for, you know, a mid round move. However, here, a bit happier to take the fights, particularly in a solo venture. Nafani gets aggressive based off his spawn. Zorte holding. You know, it's worked out really, really well. Just some clean. 1v1s. Mm. I'm going to go down, save for M80 in a sixth round for Bet Boom. The immediate response. Oh, that's so, so tough. 
Yeah, and I think for them as well, M80, even then, it's not exactly going to be a nice turn to the round. I, I, Pepe, we're going to look around here. They're going to try and find these rifles because they know they're dropping these. is going to be so damn big. Just damaging the economy. Make sure there's nothing to work with. Siren leading the charge alongside Chiron as they look to try and find these rifles. One to the left, one coming right around to the right. Swish is starting to make a move to support him through mid. Steps are heard. Magnajay is on the swing. He will fall. And a good little one-two punch of a setup. We'll give them security. The Molotov as well. Trying to lock it down, but Rek gets caught back turn. Nafani will find him on the tail end. So Nafani opens and closes that round. And Beth Boom back to the winning ways. Six to two. For M80's uh, map picking, so to say. It's not, not exactly looking too fruitful at the moment. Replay speak for themselves, to be honest. Clean, easy kills. No damage taken, etc. Right, they are very, very crisp. Nafani quiet before that round. Wanted to get into the action. He most certainly did with the three-piece. Magno Jez. Trying to spot round the corner here. Baiting his teammate a little bit. It's not quite worked out, though. Two for one in favour of the CT side. Looking to get aggressive. Wreck. Little jump. Frag for him. Slacks with a heady. And Chiron's all alone. All right. M80 with a response of their own. A little more American in style, maybe. <laughs> Individuals getting nice and active. Oh, that was spotted. <laughs> I think Switch just did on purpose. Yeah. I'm going to bait him in. Trying to bait in a shot. Oh, I'm the scout to see him off. Lovely stuff. That's nice an easy. Good little run there at the tail end. Slacks up great to an AK 47. Better, better for M80. Still, a lot more to be done before we get confident or kind of comfortable about where we're at right now. It's in a bad position to find yourself in, at the very least, responding. If you can make it a solid length and a half, then we're working with something. This is a map which is, you know, probably the closest thing we've got to being that seaside. So the fact that Beppu are in the lead isn't exactly a surprise. If M80 makes close, maybe a whirl. Good nade. Chiron. Gonna be caught by it. Still gonna take all of this mid control. There's nothing really they can do about it. Mal playing aggro. Trying to get out in front here. Zorta spotted with the bomb. Doubles away safely, thankfully. Swisher. Oh man, I thought he was gonna go for the spam. That really could have ended the round, to be honest. Sin. Spotted has to stay strong here, has to stay alive. He's got Wreck behind him, who actually finds a frag really, really big. Puts massive threat on the eight hit now. The bomb and the extremity Wreck. He checks it at the last second, but it's maybe enough confusion to allow his teammates to get in. A really difficult round here to read until they line up for Magno Jez. Slacks, what can you do from here, my friend? One so far before the bomb goes down. It's not impossible. He's got 12 already. I think he'll be feeling himself for this. They have money for the buy into the next. He's got permission to go for it. Not able to spot anyone just yet. There was maybe an edge in from heaven. Nade goes down. Try and soften them up, but that's not much use for an AWPer, is it really? He will back off and reluctantly save. Yeah, he doesn't want to, but I think, yeah, like you said, it is this thing for him of saying, maybe he could have given a go, but the inherent risk behind it, I don't think it's worth. Slacks, we'll keep on of it. Not a bad game as well for him individually. 12 and 4, he finds himself. It is still Beth Boom, four rounds ahead. Magnitude's really leading the charge as well in terms of the numbers department, as expected over towards Beth Boom. He's looking really good. Wreck did well. It's just that unfortunate timing as he turns away and he doubles back but he can't set himself and a beaut from Magno Jez M80 Def getting back on the mic really trying to get this side back into a competitive position but it goes without saying they are dancing with the devil a little bit loses half badly and set themselves up potentially losing the map and before you know it the series becomes in quite a kind of a jeopardy situation. M80 recently have looked really good. 2-0 over Liquid in the Grand Finals to qualify. The Esports World Cup was really, really good. 
where Bat Boom didn't do too well at the, the EU equivalent. It felt like maybe a chance for Matey to spiral a bit of confidence and momentum in towards this series, but look, anything but right now. 7-3, penultimate round of the half, and M80 desperately need, at the very least, four, if not five, and Slack's going to try and do it single-handedly. Good opener. Lovely stuff. Swisher, back round for another. Oh, and it keeps on coming. Oh. Fantastic. M80 revitalized here. Still able to lay down some numbers and answering with a flawless one from them. Seven rounds on the T-side. I think for Anubis, that is... Good, that is your bare minimum, but they hit it quite early. So we maybe expect them to go a little bit True. deeper than that. So I'm I'm gonna be impressed here uh, if we see M80 with a really quick, really successful turnaround in the very few rounds. Yeah, I'll have to see. We will. It is a weird situation that the Bat Boom find themselves in, like you said, where it's all well and good that Yes, you've got these rounds on the board, and, and yeah, you actually built up good stability. But like you said, because it's early doors, if you actually, in the last few rounds of the half, let things slip a tad and maybe lose kind of a bit of the momentum that you built up, you actually open the door a bit for M80. Had a you know good piss around with one individual earlier, and th there is a chance that all it takes is that pistol, the force by following, and before you know it, seven all game on. I think for M80, they understand how important this final round can be. Eight to four, completely different conversation. We got, unfortunately, Vepu, final round of the half is not going to amount to all too much. AK, Galil, Mac 10 and a double tech nine, and Mac 10 and Afrani trying to get into the fights here. He's got the run of the Oh, he rips the head there. Beauty of a shot. And he distracts Swisher too, who gets swung upon by Magnages. That's not a bad way to crack open the B site. Yeah, it might seem simple. It might seem like Bet Boom are just picking up the aggression, but I think they really do condition this M80 team quite well. Um, very, very hard to read Bet Boom at the moment. They found a gap in on this B bomb site. Is it going to be enough? Magna Jez instant trade absolutely needed there. Slacks, though, on the AWP. Still around, could be big. They're peeking into him. War fights and he's not expecting to come his way. With him falling, Sin on 5 HP, you don't expect too much of, unfortunately. An 8 4 finish. I think they'll be pretty happy with that on the Bet Boom side. M80, they show us flashes. Maybe their T side will prove something here. We hope so.
touching on me. I'm getting so. Welcome back to the second half, ladies and gentlemen. An even fair finish across the board. It felt like eight rounds out from your T-side, pretty good. Four rounds when it started poorly, also not bad out of your CTN. So there is a lot of pressure into this pistol now, particularly for M80, but I think that it's not over before it's begun kind of vibe. True. Pistol round here. We're talking right now. No, no, they don't have something to work with. You lose it though, and if Beth Boom were able to get a ninth, that might change things. It was actually not a bad tail end by M80. It took a little bit of time to get started, bar of course the ace from uh, Swisher in that first. I was trying to get up close here. Chiron taking a fight. And as Julie's around the corner, they could be the difference maker because they, at close range, are deadly. Magnages, nobody else in. He's got the bomb. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that's not great. Slacks, however, he's brought it back, hasn't he? One versus three. Quickly into a one versus one. He's acutely aware of Zorte's position, but Zorte has given it up. Going to face the retake. Bomb plan going down. Nice and open for Slacks. Got his hands onto these Julies. And digging, looking for Zorte, wanting the fight. Oh, did he hear a footstep? I didn't. I went quiet for a minute, but I think he might just have caught the last little step before Zorte started shifting in. But now he's doubting himself. There's really not a lot of time here for Zorte. I think Slax is going to have this just based off of position, to be honest. Zorte has, like, no time at all, no kit to work with, obviously. And, yeah, Slax is nowhere near to give him the fight. He goes down. But you hear that 10-second timer come in. M80. Key, key pistol win. Yeah, I, I think he must have heard. I'm pretty sure he, he must have heard that step because he, he seems like he sets up in the perfect spot to try and catch anything coming through. That's those, uh, those ace zones for you. Of course, other headphone brands are available, but I'm pretty sure that's the ones they wear as the pros and the in-ears, of course, but heard a step that we wouldn't. And he wins it, like you said, just off the back of positioning alone. It's a nice open plant. Can play through temple, can play through hieroglyphs. Everything can sort of work well for him. And it just sows the seas of doubt, basically, into a Zorta. Nice shot from him, of course, but that's all he will get. They are going to go for a force. MP9. Double five seven, a FAMAS and the auto shotgun. I always knew Magna Jez was a based individual. The XM 1014. It's a good gun at close range. I've seen it do some serious damage on this map. And he's joining the group. They are gambling 2A here. And it might be a right call. We'll see. M80. They're uh, playing patiently, though, waiting for steps to come their way, waiting for a fight. And oh, oh going to get it. Did Miles just spot? Not quite. Oh, clean find from Siren. nothing he's got his man covered as Siren went greedy for the gun. 5v3, right away here in the force buy. And now they can pull off eight. All right, they drop the smoke in towards main. They can sit two behind it. They just, they do not need to face it. Bet boom, double back with a double stack on towards B. And, and already, M80 have no idea where to go to make this work. Karen's going to go have a little look. And they're playing together over towards B, which I do love. Just a little peer around that corner can be all that it requires. The Molotov is aptly timed. They can't go through it. 25 seconds and M80. I mean, even in their mind, this is the last ditch effort. They've got to find a kill early here. And nothing just going to double away. This is really good. Time ticking. I don't know if they have time. They might even call this. Ooh. Sin? Yeah, it's just like not far enough forward, is it? Weird little situation for M80. Saving here. I mean, it's not awful. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. If, you, if you're yeah. going to lose the round, you're really, really screwed for cash. They're going to have to force anyway. Um, so it's kind of fair. It gives them a bit more of a chance. I'm not a massive fan of the call, but you shouldn't really be in that spot. But best of a bad situation, I think. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. Not a pause called, and you know. You always kind of talk about it and say the force bar is way more important than the pistol and this is a prime example of it where it is going to put 
just a bit of that pressure on the shoulders towards that of M80. They are going to go for a buy of whatever they can, but it's Reno Wreck, Tech 9, One Smoke. Malbs is basically as, as good as it can get, really. Same for him, and of course, it's half armor too, which makes the MP9s, M4s, Galil, etc., etc., all the more perilous for like the likes of uh, Wreck and Malbs. I mean, Malbs even have armor. Deagle, full util. So he's hoping that that double Galil AK setup can do the bulk of the heavy lifting in this one, but it's been a good game out of Bet Boom. It's a very important round. That 5 7 first kill is so important. It sets them up in such a strong spot. Chiron met the smoke here. Gonna stick behind it. Doesn't play through, which I think is pretty good temperament. Magna just as close, he's just jiggling, but with Util. If the AK catches him, though, he's gonna put Chiron under a bit of pressure. Flash is good. We'll drop a Molotov. Magna just played that perfectly. Just, you just do not need to face. Oh, Nafani takes a little bit of a tag, but indeed, speaking of the face, you are correct. They are aware, taking very slim peaks here. Minute already gone. M80 need this round. So they will use the limited utility that they have to the best of their ability. There's not all that much they can do with it. Deep in towards middle. Try and make that work. But there's nobody here from Bet Boom. You know, they want a fight. So they can find an advantage and pummel a bomb site. But Bet Boom are just not giving them that chance. They are trying to go for a split through A here. And they might actually catch a gap. Sin has step to. He's a known quantity. The problem with the smoke. Malps for one. Zorta and Nafferty combining. Frags a piece all over the shop. And then two versus two. Bomb should go down here. That's the main thing. But a quick rotate coming through main to try and deny anything. Sin does get it down. But at this point, making it very difficult indeed. AK picked off a Magnum Jets. And in those hands can be a scary prospect. Back pillar. Not clear, Kyron. Nice shot. Lovely shot. And now 1v2. Sin, the new boy on the block. The IGL needs to lead by example. There's the first. Low on ammo. Three bullets. And Magna just goes up on height. Round one by Bet Boom. Close, but no cigar for M80. And that's Bet Boom finding a 10-5 scoreline, doubling the rounds of M80 as they inch ever closer to stealing away on Ubis. Nasty. Again, very, very nasty to be on the end of, you know, these rounds. Come a little close. M80 just can't quite find the special source, you know, to get the final few moments going their way. But that is a decent try within the context of the round itself, the lack of utility, the sort of forced save, as it were. It's not a bad look. What now? AK available for Malb's bit of utility, but not an awful lot to write home about here. No. Oh, spotted. Nate could do a hell of a lot of damage here. Doesn't do as much as it initially looked, but the rifles are probably clear this one up. Not too bad. A casualty over towards out of Bet Boom. It's only the one. Not too shabby. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Simple and effective in there. And he ever close. I mean, that was a bit of a throwaway round as things go, but yeah, that was pretty damn simple. Pistols. Couldn't really even make their way on towards the site itself. They don't even get through main. Bet Boom are making this look like a bit of a walk in the park now on the CT side. Retakes are going well. Shutdown's even better. Concerning. One for one at the start of the round over on the A side of things. Oh my goodness, so fast here from M80. The Bet Boom boys are about to get caged in. They're going to have to fight their way out one way or another. Slack's just trying to keep them entertained. Nafani. Just stay alive here. Three versus two. Still looking good for Bet Boom as Nafani goes untraded. Big retake required. They've got kits. They've got nades. Nafani's location is known. The rest of them not so much. Nice little mid-round here from M80 to move in gather some info and indeed try and find the kills thus far not so good malbs 
the man to watch. He's got three. Oh, and Magno Chess ruins him there to find number 12. Man, that is not bad. It's not bad. I'm not going to say no to that, really. 12 to 5, and Beth Boom, you know... We saw there was a, a bit of the tail end of where we were saying, for M80, it's a bad run. This is a, you know, a little bit of a response off the back of a slow start. But yeah, since the second half, only the one round out of them, it's not good enough. It isn't. Death for the last time, I'm going to get on the mic and try and do something. There are conversations to be had, but off the back of that pause, there is, you know, some... Pretty uh, lackluster emotion shown over towards M80. This has been very good by Beth Boom. Triple Galil, double AK. What have you got for us, boys? Anything left in the locker to save themselves? Any hopefuls on their map pick? Not looking that great. Zorte opens us up here into what could be the final round of Anubis. Nade onto Malves is pretty chunky. The bullets hurt even more. Chiron. Wow. Sees it off. Has to. Wreck versus the world. Sin will be the next to fall. It was incoming. They were after him. Wreck, meanwhile, five to find from down below. Double spray down, to be fair to him, but that is all he is able to find. 13-5. There was competition in the first half, anything but into the second. Bet boom, just a regular game on Anubis for them. No real challenge at all. And they steal away the slightly risky pick of M80. A revitalization going to be needed for Ancient, but it's not looking good. We'll catch you after the break. point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. Yeah, double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it. Control it. Face it. Your boss man's been bigging you up, bro. He's been say, talking about how uh, exciting it is to play with you. It, it, how has it been so far getting into uh, the, the Bet Boom jersey and getting yourself ready for competition? Mm, I'm fine. Yeah? Yeah, it's easy to play on this level for me, so nothing special. I've been ready for this, so... Yeah, is this, does this just kind of... To, does this feel like a natural kind of step for you? you like, you've been doing the grind. How long has this... Have you, how long have you been pursuing professional Counter-Strike? Mm, I'm playing in pro teams like around two years, I think. Damn. And uh, I meet a lot of players. I played with a lot of players. I meet some good coaches. So I've been ready for this level. I understand how people are playing here. And so it's fine for me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like as you've gotten to the point now where you're you're starting to kind of play your game against the best opposition? Do you have you worked out what your game is, what you bring to to your team? Uh, I have a lot of space in this team, cool. so it feels like I'm a star player, yeah, baby. so 
I, mean, I have a lot of things I can do, yeah. and uh, I can do a lot of things to change the game. So yeah. it's fine for me. You're gonna let your gameplay do the talking at the pro league this this time. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude, Magno Jess. Am I saying that right? How do I say it properly? Yeah, Magno Jess. Magno Jess. Thank you, bro. Knuckles. Good luck at the tournament.
Hello, welcome back. Map two underway here between Bet Boom and M80. A little bit of a mouthful there, I suppose. And it certainly was a bitter pill to swallow on Anubis for M80, as it did not go down all that well. Um, their pick, you know, we did say somewhat risky. They've had some time coming into this. It's a weaker point for Bet Boom. Are they going to be able to abuse sure. that? Unfortunately, the answer in the end was no. Uh, the pick backfiring is a very one sided affair in favor of Bet Boom. Yeah, it was pretty brutal to watch at times. I mean, really couldn't get going. I think mid to late round struggled a lot. And I think this is, uh, you know, probably one of those instances where you get to see uh, individuals like Sin, obviously new to this roster. We had those question marks about him. You know, the previous time on Big didn't exactly go fantastically. I think towards the tail end of his tenureship with Big, he actually got kind of removed from the calling and he was just sort of there as a player, right? Which when you're IGL there for essentially you're fragging, it's not always going to be the best thing. Hence why he got moved and they went through those changes, came over towards M80. It has worked recently in some of the online stuff, but in that game, mid late round really did struggle uh, calling wise. And I think Nafani really showed his experience, kind of flexed his muscles a little bit in terms of sort of not only himself, but really got his individuals active. You know, we got to see kind of uh, Magda Jesu, we can bring you up in a head to head now as well. Saw this guy get so active in the game, so confident in himself, the youngster, and really stepped up in a big way. It wasn't a terrible performance out of slacks, it has to be said. He was the real shining light towards M80. But in the grand scheme of things, it didn't make a difference. Magic just 1.54 love and life in the server. Yeah, for sure, man. Really, really looking good. And uh, a brief little catch there, I believe, that we had. Um, maybe was it afterwards or just before the game? Not quite sure. But, you know, Machine was in there obviously chatting to him. And uh, he, he felt pretty confident. You know, he said that this was kind of the environment that he plays best at. Um, and indeed, I don't know whether he means LAN or whether he means maybe the level of opponent, maybe a mixture of two. Um, so, yeah, he certainly... Talks a decent game, not absolutely massive, but a decent game. And, and he showed it there on the server as well, you know, putting uh, his money where his mouth is, as they say. So very, very impressive stuff out from him. Slacks on the other side, you know, doing what he could. Um, or pin, maybe you'd expect him to be able to take over the game a little bit, but it just really wasn't enough. Uh, it's hard to kind of read into. Anubis, not super, super AWP heavy, I suppose. But yeah, only five rounds out when Slacks is putting up some really good numbers is a bit disappointing from M80. Yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes down to it, we really do see the need, uh, need to see uh, a completely new M80 adding in towards this map number two. And we, we need to see the side really start to step it up on towards Ancient. The real risk here, it's not their map pick. It's not a bad map for M80. This is the main thing. They've had some decent reps under the belt. They've played it at an okay level. I caught them playing it at the America's RMR. They beat, uh, they lost the Legacy, but it was an OT. It was actually quite a good game. I remember seeing some real kind of positive moments out of them. And they actually beat Legacy recently in the, uh, the Esports World Cup qualifiers. But when it comes down to it, it is a much better map on paper, on statistics, and in the server for Bet Boom. We expect them to come in towards this one and take it to the zero. M80 are really going to have to dig deep here, even if they want to stay alive in this best of three. Yeah, absolutely true, man. Absolutely true. We move on to the Ancient. Um, certainly not the worst looking map in the world for M80, right? But it is one of Bet Boom's favorites, to be honest with you. And then uh, even if we do go to a third here, which we're feeling is less than likely, I think, to be gentle to the M80 side of things, we end up on Mirage, which is Bet Boom's favorite map. Um, at the moment, at least in terms of, you know, the, the amount that they play it and the success that they find. It may be the same for M80 as well, but it is um, a little bit of a larger sample size out from the Bet Boom side of things. So yeah, this, this map's going to be very, very tough and there's even more pressure on them if M80 are able to take it to three. Yeah, I think that is absolutely spot on. I mean, the, the only real caveat, and we'll kind of touch on it in a little bit more detail when we get there, the M80R on a bit of a three, you know, a format winning streak, I think it is, on towards Mirage. So they've been looking okay on it recently, but it might be for now, right? It might not even make a damn difference because uh, I think Bet Boom, they not even really once broke a sweat in towards that previous map. They, it was very, very comfortable, very easy. You know, we highlighted back in just 19 and 12, that guy went 1.54 rating, but then really was a bad performance. Azorte, who had some really impactful kills. I throw back all the way to the second round where uh, that force buy was one off the back of his solo Galil, right? Incredible work for him through mid. And Chiron as well. He was a bit of a dynamic duo with Magnages. They played this sort of... Uh, 
buddy system together and it worked so damn well. I don't think on the other side, I mean, some of the big name hitters really struggled to get active. It, well, Swisher, despite starting the first round of the game with an ace, he only got six more kills in the rest of the game after that. That's not good enough. Um, you know, nobody else finished positive over towards M80 bar slacks. And Malibs, who's meant to be the main point of firepower on this team, only went 7 and 15 with, you know, f less than 50 ADR. It's not good enough, right? This is a side he really couldn't get active. Def tried it is most, right? Three timeouts called by him and no difference was made at all. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. It, it, it's a difficult first map to stomach, right? And then you move yeah. into the second, it's like, how do you approach it? There's many different ways uh, that you, you may look at it and it is more of a team dependent thing, but there has to be some kind of uh, a shift, I think, in the way that they were approaching the game, the way that they were playing. Is it a case, as we heard out from Mezzi and saw on the server, that you have to believe in your own game a bit more, stop playing to their pace, set that a bit more yourself? Um, is it a case of just kind of going in and not letting the pressure get to you? Or is it the opposite, that you really, really go uh, as, as hard as you possibly can, right? It's a very, very difficult sure. call for uh, a relatively young team, kind of inexperienced on the international stage. How do you turn this around and i'm sure if we had the answer to that we wouldn't be sat here would we now um but either way it's not going to be easy for m8 yeah man, i think uh, you're spot on there's a you know it, it goes well saying we are coming in towards this map building upon this and kind of pre prefacing that ancient is expected to go the way of bat boom this is a map that has been very good for them it's been okay for m80 but it's okay enough for a side who are looking like they at the moment have been barely scratching the surface let's find out as we head back on the way in towards the action m80 starting on that ct side bat boom starting the t side and they are flying in towards mid but then again flying through a main okay wreck falls but malbs will trade Confident start, what we like to see. Noise being made for Slacks Ooh. to work around and they find a killer piece. Or, oh, oh, Slacks. Look at those finds around the corner of Big Box. Oh my goodness. And you can see a bit of energy, a bit of giving it after a moment like that. Completely fair enough. What an open for M80. Yeah, you're not going to complain about that at all. My God, Slacks. Fair play, mate. Fair play. What a call as well. It has to be set by Sin. Rush, eh? For through main and don't stop until you fight. That is, you know, off the back of a poor map number one, losing 13 to 5. You can't discredit the balls on that sort of a call. That is an insane one. And it works. And then Slacks, of course, a couple of moments of brilliance, keeping up his individual form. And Sin will step up as he takes down Naphany. It's a low buy, though. Four bet boom, no bomb plan. Not that many kills. Not enough in the back pockets for some funds as Malbs and Sin just mop them up, mow them down. Last man of Magnages with a Glock. No chance in hell. Malbs with a, you know, poor game. He got seven kills in the entirety of map number one. Well, he's got five already here. Map number two, much better. Much better indeed. The energy, as we said, needed uh, working out, needed resetting. It seems like they have done that. It is very, very early rounds, but... Looking good, I have to say, straight out of the gate. I think I am impressed by the fact that it's not necessarily been a fade away here from the M80 team. However, Bet Boom coming round with a pretty strong buy into this third round, hoping to make themselves known here on Ancient as well. Double flashes, both blind. One in towards Cuddy. Ty Tyron? Tyron lost track of him? I don't know. But a free kill given over towards Sin. It's highly questionable. Thankfully, Nafli can answer on that flanking player who was the big risk. And a Zorta drop slacked. That probably feels like the round. Molotov comes in towards the default part, but it's too little too late, to be perfectly honest. And Switch are going to get caught regardless. Last man a wreck. MP9. We'll get one. Little fade away. Not going to say no to that. Any more for any more. Be nice as Nafferty won't get caught. Down he falls. So the hands off Nafferty. I've already the two casualties. Not bad. Not bad for Beth Boom to find their first. Making sure that their first gun round is pretty conclusive as well. Yeah, very quickly back into things. So this is where it gets difficult. M80 starting off well, but we'll see. Can they keep it alive? You know, can they stomach a difficult 
rifle round because realistically it's like pistols are very very important but for a lot of players a lot of teams it's always the rifle rounds that feel like the point at which the game actually starts aggression towards mid not wasting any time here fights all over the shop chiron lucky to be alive not a bad result for m80 shot at the scout tag but the kill gonna go the way of magna jesu keeps his relatively emphatic form of the aim sin and malms combining oh that's important the pot flash as well gonna make mal's life even easier as he'll double down leaving zorta with it all to do molotov aid and a double flash to work with and it will not be enough sin sees it off three kills to sin's name two for malms as he matches his tally for map one already, this is already much better. Yep, keeping it up. Wonderful find there in towards mid, right? The the aggression, especially, I think, super, super effective. All goes quiet here. That boom. Yeah, not going to be a breeze. M80 coming back with a vengeance within the game itself and within the series, of course. Oh, the nades out towards middle. The flash as well. They are happy to take the fight. And M80 at the moment really doing well in this scenario. It's got to be said, this side... Looking really good. Bet Boomer. You know, maybe trying to keep that same mentality that they had in towards Ancient, where it's, you know, quite loose but quite aggressive. And M80 responding well. So a 10 to 15 minute break that they had is done well for the Malbs for only one, but it should be good enough now as Bet Boomer thrust into a two versus four. That was Zorta and Chiron tagged. I don't really know what you do or where you go in this situation, but they're going to double back towards B. And it's going to be, by the time they get there, at the very least two to meet them. Yeah, not looking too good here. But you never know, they might be able to pull something out of their backside for this, and I uh, think it is, as you're sort of alluding to, incremental goals now, isn't it? Do some damage, yeah. get the bomb plant, win the round becomes almost a tertiary objective. Gotta stay realistic. Swisher spots a little bit of a head, flash goes round for Sin to work with. Work with it, he shall. Just Zorte, he's not long for this world either. Lead growing for the CT side. So far, so good. Here is, there's something to work with him. We were a little bit worried about Angel, I think for me, internally. I was kind of feeling, maybe a little preemptively thinking it was done before it even started, but M80, I gotta give them their credit. Decent little run out here in the early part of this. 4-1 out the gates, not bad. And considering that Bet Boom have no money, in round number six. Five one as a start, which you'd expect they get the fifth here. Absolutely workable. Nades are great. MP9 is better. It's in for three. Looks for more. Malves will steal it away from right under his grasp. And the last man a siren. A Deagle and nowhere near the action. M80, five one as a start is not bad. Siren looking to be cheeky here. However, oh, he has heard the footsteps, but he is getting flanked out. Oh, there you go. Oh. Nice find. And for a moment here, the B-bomb site uh, is undefended, but there's not much that he can really do about that. Oh, the boost. Yeah, he doesn't fancy it. Uh, walking towards him. I mean, it's a little boring, but you just have to wind the clock down against him, really. He's going to go looking for this kill on towards Wreck, but I don't think it will ever come. So yeah, M80 getting savvy to the fact that they just can't afford to give these guns away. Siren, what have you got for us? Give us a little bit of magic at the tail end. Swish is tagged. A body shot would be enough. As he is spotted. All right, we'll take him. We'll take him. Looking for a gun here. And he might just get it. Okay, AK picked up. I mean, of course, Siren, you probably want to die for the loss bonus. But actually saving the AK isn't the worst thing because that's basically all you're going to have next round anyway. Just don't die off the time. It's basically what we're asking here. 
as he is having a little look in. That'll be that though. Round finally done with a slow ending. I saw the Raptor. Oh, hang on a second. He can actually the time and he will. Oh no. There was a couple of positives in uh, that round there for Bethboom, but there was one real big kind of mute point, and that was him dying off the time. That's going to hurt. He's in with, I think, 2.3k in his back pocket. That's not what you want at all. No, sir. Yeah, a little bit disastrous. And again, especially while you're down on rounds, etc. It really is not a good look here. Timeout coming in. Were they going to call it anyway? Are they just calling it to deal with what's happened in the previous round? It's it's tough. It's very, very tough. But things are not going as planned. They may well... Still a few smiles in the camp. There you go, Naphany. Looking good. But uh, yeah, they may well have been in a yeah. sort of similar mindset as us. That it's like, all right, the hard work is done. We just rinse them on Anubis. Surely now everything else should fall into place, but not quite yet. Obviously, a lot of time to turn things around. So, we got Siren and Anova. I kind of respect it. Pretty based. As well as it's got the Kree Guard as well. And often you see that. Slack's playing up close right up here. Shadow my betrayal! He actually saw the shadow, which made him just flinch a second off of Zorto, ripped his head off. It's those incremental little things that can make the difference between life and death. And in that instance, it was death, but Malb's good lineup for him. Good swing from Sin, who finds Magnages and puts the numbers in M80's favor. Just about. Is it going to stay that way? Siren can't land the shot. Kyron, meanwhile, moving in behind. I don't know if he was spotted there. I don't think so. Swisher, is he going to have any idea at all? Not looking likely. Oh, that timing is kind of crazy. He might start to check it again. Kyron just trying to close the gap here. The orb slowly making his way out. There's one in towards default. I think they've secured that fact. Orb making a lot of noise. Kyron. Oh, got to be careful here. Covered around the corner. Going to stack together now as well. Big find from Sin. Brings it down to the 1v2. Oh, it's close, but Wreck will clean up house. Sixth round for M80, and again, looking very, very good, even while under pressure. Mm, yeah, yeah. Got to give him credit. It's that one versus one at the tail end as well, just backing himself, and knowing that they can take that fight. Maybe, just maybe, against what we initially thought, that, uh, that third map might be needed. 6-1 right now. And again, not, not a bomb blown on a bet, uh, bet boom, right? I and mean, this is the big thing. They're actually getting okay space towards the site. And they're getting, you know, small positives to work with. But they're not getting the bomb down. They're not giving themselves chances to set up post plants. And because they're not getting the bomb down, despite their hefty loss bonus, they can't keep buying in. Even if they were losing rounds, but they were getting a plant, they could buy on wreck a lot of damage to players two and three push through main there that a siren that a chiron but he will fall oh could be a bit problematic here kills keep coming round and m80 having to deal with a really weird kind of round here oh they're thinking about the swing shadow Ooh, oh, spotted slacks on scopes but he keeps his cool for two and it will just be left onto the Beagle of Zorte. Nothing that he can find. Uh, boom, getting a bit desperate. You know, you're, you're 3v3. Yes, yeah. you're on the lower rifles and, well, a lack of rifles. Do you necessarily need to go for that temple peak? Now they will say absolutely not, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I, f I feel like you just sit in your positions and hope that the individuals will outmatch. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things as well. I think... I think maybe I'll throw the onus on Naphany a little bit, but he does need to try and slow these guys down. You know, they're quite aggressive in terms of the play style, you know, like we've already spoken about, but they they do back themselves, right? Which you, you, you've got to respect to a degree, right? They go into a lot of these engagements thinking, well, I can win this fight. And at times, the best thing to do is not to fight, but it's just not the bet boom style of play. So, you know, I think a lot of this is on Afrin to try and slow these guys down. Just a side who, for me, they overfight, which when they're feeling it and when they are in control is just a, you know, a guaranteed win, right? They just rock and roll over teams like they did map number one. But when they aren't hitting their shots, when they're not feeling it, they just give away so many positives. They give away 
so much of the space in the room that they've just fought so hard to even get there. And a credit to M80. It's not giving them anything. Seven to one. Switch up. Swing it out. Doesn't clear. But Nafani will be traded at the very least. He was hella low. So that's that positive. Blind. He's good to keep Sin alive, but he takes a lot of damage. Tyron, good timing, creeping through the smoke there. However, it's still not quite enough. Alps brings it back. He remains alive in towards middle. Oh, giddy for the fight, wow. and he's Ooh. going to absolutely ruin Chiron and Siren. Suddenly, it's Magnajez all alone. He's good for one, but he's taking a dink in the meantime. Surely not. They will say, does have that bomb. That's the one thing he's got going for him here. Time taking 1v2. Magna just is so low. So low. Yeah, I did, but yeah. He knew they were somewhere over towards uh, Balk, but yeah, over the shelf. But there's just nothing he could have done. That range, orps him off. Simple as. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And again, a bit of a scrappy round coming through, but Malb's just uh, the miracle man at times, right? That is just beautiful stuff there from him. That double kill is so important. 8-1. This is a lightning fast first half for Counter-Strike. And Bethboom looked like a completely different style. A shadow of their former selves of what we saw on Anubis. Yeah, really surprising to see it fall apart in this fashion. Sin gets a flash in. Gonna go for the spam. He may well have heard Nafany there, to be fair. Trying to bait in a fight, but they're not giving it a bet. Boom. You know, they just want to survive, keep their players alive, and get into a late round scenario. M80 not letting them. Slack's gonna find the first into this. Oh, there's a trade back, but it's not quite enough. Still a man advantage for the CT side. And Bet Boom just do not know where to look, how to react. Just a game of survival, really, on this T side, it feels like. So, making a little move there towards Donut, which actually could give them a bit of space considering it's one man backside wreck. Called upon, delivers for the first. Molotov will come down at the time. Nobody had a main just yet. He's met with a Molly. A fight going to be found in the second as well as he's trying to dance around the box. He might just win it out, but Siren turns his head. Tap on towards the bomb. He's expecting it. Donut player quick on the rotation, but nobody's offering up just yet. And Siren's not going for the bomb blonde. He's continuing to move in towards Dona. Even though nobody's there. The longer he takes, the more opportunities it gives M80 to move back on towards the site. Plant goes down. Oh, sort a big one from him. Is he ready for that next player? No, he isn't. It's all left onto Siren. They needed Zorte for a moment, right? Siren is so low. Just trying to play the catch-off game, but they will begin to clear. And they have an inkling. Tap onto the bomb. Smoke on top of it. He's hoping that it's not a hold, but it is. He's forced to fight. And he will lose it out. Bet Boom edging closer, but still not getting the rounds. No. Not at all. Man alive. What a game we're being treated to here, but in a weird way for kind of all of the wrong reasons. I M80 coming alive, but Beppu really falling asleep. But I've got to give so much respect to M80 in the sense that they're making something out of this, right? They're, they're uh, it, It's very easy to talk about how you, on your own map pick, you find very little form. You could kind of mentally check out of a game, but at Pro League, there's no time, right? Every time you pick up a, you know, a loss of any sort, you've just gotten to realize that Yes, it's not game over here in this map, right? We've still got a whole series of play, and, and M80 aren't giving up anything. This is good. Nine to one. Even if that's all they get for M80 on this CT side, it is more than enough. So, so wild here from M80, the turnaround, but also that boom to see them struggling. True. We're all quite surprised. 
slow round here, Bet Boom. Still little bits of confidence in places as we will see a contact here towards eight. Smoke over the top. Calling for the Molotov. Wreck gonna wait though. Play things patiently. We'll get that Molly down as more smokes come in, right? Still feeling confident on that Bet Boom side of things though, even though maybe the jig is up another Molly to keep them at bay. It's only two players here. Draw the attention of three. Maybe a fourth as well in a moment. Oh, well. Sin. Waiting. Finding. Second. Oh, he delivers on both. Kyron and Nafferty get clipped. And Bet Boom left down to three in a matter of moments with 40 seconds to work with and basically no map control. Oh, it goes from bad to worse to the size. M80 about to, well, it looks like lock in double digits unless from the trenches, Bet Boom can bring themselves back into this spot. Sin, talk about leading by example. 16 and 6 for him. Yeah, same for Miles as he gets caught. Oh, big shot. Second delivered. Beautifully done. Bye bye, Siren. Bye bye, Zorte. And Magnages. The star man of last map, forced to just save with only four kills to his name. Crazy, crazy. What a drop off from Bet Boom, man. You know, it's um, kind of wild to think. Uh, all I can assume is that they just got a little bit in their own heads, a little bit like, oh, okay, all good. Don't worry about it. It should be over now. We've yeah. done yeah. the difficult bit. Yeah. It's wild. It is wild. And M80 just, I mean, making it really, really quick here. <laughs> to be honest, Malb, Sin, looking fantastic. Slacks as well. Mm. Not like Swisher and Wreck have necessarily been needed, I suppose. Yeah. Spot on. Karen falls. Magnus answers back. So Swisher going one for one. What a bad spark. His information. Oh my god. Nafferty. Bye bye. Jumping for a smoke like that with no control over towards cave or mid is crazy. Magnajez. Oh, got to be careful here. Gets the smoke out and yeah, Will kind of cost him. Just could not correct his crosshair there. This could be a little brutal though. They're running back through the smoke. Nope, doesn't matter. They will work the numbers. Looking so good. 11-1 out from M80 at the turn of the half. Surely has to be enough to take us to a third. We'll just have to find out how fast it's going to be. See you in a few. Future pros, knowing some B smokes on Ancient can lead to success. So let's look at the classic short smoke. To throw this, stand in the doorway in the middle of this section. Aim at the tip of this leaf. Then throw the smoke. Pretty easy to be honest. From the same spot, you can also molly the pillar by aiming at the gap between the plant and the wall. A very easy but effective combo. Hey future pros! Mid on Ancient can be some vital real estate. So let's look at a donut smoke you can throw to help take some space. 
To throw the smoke, position yourself in the middle of this section of the window. Aim at the corner of this knobbly bit in the wood. Then simply throw the smoke. I class this as an ancient essential you should know, so commit it to memory as it's a very easy lineup. Pair it up with the red smoke and you'll be cooking. I can't explain I can't explain it I go insane When we get naked Hold me down Never let me go Take me in I want you to show Hold me down Never let me go Take Hello everybody, welcome back into the second half. Might be a swift finish here as M80 have returned into the series. They have woken up. They have, uh, I don't know, got new mice or something. Because they are absolutely farming here. 11 to 1, bet boom. Really good showing out from them on Anubis. We thought, okay, should be over in two then. You know, the Ancient not great for M80. But here we are, eating our own words now. It's got to be said, this has been a, uh, you know, if you told me 13-5 and then in response a team who got five, we're going to put up an 11-1 half, I, I wouldn't believe you. In front of Pistol, it might be over and done before we even begin. Nafani, though, will line up two. Good work, but Malbs gets two of his own. Three versus three, and already not a bad spot. Bomb will go down. And Beth Boom, we call upon them in the retake. The goal had been laid down here by M18, the bomb plant. What's the response looking like? I go Jez, trying to work it on the Julies denied away. Yeah, they're just on another level right now. The ascended plane for M80. Chiron remains alone. You know where he's at. Don't need to give him the fight. He doesn't have a kit. That's not necessarily confirmed information, but may well be assumed these days. And there you have it. Timer going to tick away. Nothing he can do. 12th round for M80. And by all accounts, we are off to a third map. Just a wild chain of events we've had. Chiron doesn't even get the luxury there at the tail end of the save, and as well, he just has to, oh, I don't know, bow out. Yeah, a couple of kills is great, but what a weird, weird first two maps. So dominant map number one, and then so dominant in the other way, map number two. It's just kind of completely out of the realms of expectations. But again, I mean... You can't really take anything away from M80. They deserve to be winning. And they deserve to be winning by this fashion as well. They haven't, you know, scraped through any of these rounds. They haven't won any undeservedly. It has been a walk in the park. Bet Boom on a map in which they're meant to be on paper quite good on. Anything but. On a round, potentially. And Jez, oh my god, he'll eat a nade. But two spotted onto a shelf. So now he's going to rush B because they know he's going to be under man regardless. That's three players in a known quantity. That's funny for one. Looks for more, but it's not enough. Five, seven, lots of back, though. Little bit of presence here from Bet Boom. Man advantage comes around. However, can't deny the bomb plan. Yeah, they give it a go with the spam, but yeah, can't deny the bomb plan. Deep smoke in towards CT. So they're being kept pretty heavily at bay here. Wreck with a nice find. Has to be careful with how he plays this now. Waiting for a flash. It's ineffective. But oh, maybe I thought it would make the fight awkward. Not going to be the case. Slacks, meanwhile, round the corner. Going to get two. Yes, indeed. And now all down to Zorte. The bait plays worked out. Again, not a lot of time to work with here for this ET. Might just be all she wrote. It is indeed 13-1 M80. Laying down the law on Ancient, showing Bet Boom that they are indeed capable and that we will require a third map. We will see you on Mirage.
some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. How are we doing? Touchdown in Malta, long flight? I think every single person had a delayed flight or an issue with baggage. Oh, so. so the vibes are at a premium right now. Not we always keep the vibes no. high. Yeah. Not it's immaculate. Not immaculate. Right That's now. a very British way of saying it. Okay, I like it. But uh, coming into this, you've got what? Straight into games? You, have you got time to reset? Time to get yourself situated before the game start? We came off a qualifier the day before we f flew. Okay. So, I mean, we're ready to play. We yeah. played tomorrow. I think we played the last game. So, plenty of time. Yeah. And I know you've had a lot of roster turmoil. For those that haven't been keeping in tune with it, how would you kind of... What's the TLDR of the M80 roster saga? I think this is the first time in three LAN events where we actually have a full roster going into Hallelujah. the game. Hallelujah. Because I yeah. know you've been having the, you know, a, a, the short end of the stick and it's not been going your way. So yeah. first, rost first time we're seeing the actual roster competing against European opposition. So this is exciting. Exactly. And we've got our boy Sin here. Yeah, boy. I'm very excited <laughs> to see you in the server. Yeah. Uh, you've been keeping tabs on um, how Big Clan's been cooking over there. You've been keeping, do you watch their game against Bleed the other day? Yeah, of course, of course. Like, I'm still talking to them, see how they're doing. Obviously, things are not going too well for them, but I still believe they dig out of there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I got some other things to focus on, so yeah, you do. it's okay, it's okay. He's definitely got other things to focus on. But yeah, you feel yeah. like you got a little diamond in the rough here? Yeah, for sure. Like, he's obviously learned a lot over there, but uh, excited to see him play with some NA players, not yeah. German players. Yeah, what would you say is the most notable difference for you in the environments between the two teams that you've competed in now? Is, there, is it too early to tell or is there a difference in the, I don't know whether it's the energy, the mindset, what, is, what would you say? I would say in Big it was focusing on playing good a lot. And here, <laughs> and here, like, good, right? no, no, and here in the it's like, as long as we feel good, we'll also play good. So yeah, he, we focus on feeling. Hold W a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's like, everyone in America just holds W the entire time. <laughs> Would you say that's about, that's a good summary? Yeah, like people play, like they stop for the freeze time yeah. and then they just run and they throw their nades out and then they try to go kill in the first timing always. <laughs> Okay, wow, today I learned about NACS. That's the summary right there. Yo, nice to meet you, Rec. I've been watching you play online. You, you look like you've been killing it. Are you excited to be in this environment? Are you excited to do some damage? Definitely. I think with our full roster, we're coming right. very strong. And we just came off a qualifier and we won it. So okay. confidence is high. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're just going to go out there, play your game and uh, disrupt. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. Okay, I like that. That's Rec, everybody. Keep your eyes on him in the server. It's
Welcome back in. We are here continuing on with this series in a place where we maybe were not expecting to do so. You know, a very, very, very one-sided affair there uh, on to the second map. And I think after Anubis, we just felt that this one was going to be over, right? The bet boom had showed us enough and M80 looking flat. But yeah, the Ancient, I don't know where it came from, but they're going to have to find where it came from and do it again here on Mirage. What a weird game of Counter-Strike we are witnessing. 13-5 map one bet boom win so confidently. And then 13-1. Where the hell did that come from? I mean, you got to give so much credit to M80, right? I mean, this side really did just show up. There's, there's no two ways about it. And bet boom was anything but. This guy on your screens absolutely popped off. 21-80 and 80 went with a 2.14 KD Malbs. Miracle Man in the server really did put up some serious, serious numbers individually for him. And coming off the back of being the lowest rated player in the entirety of the server off the back of map number one, for only seven kills to his name, that in responding kind with 21 is not a bad way to kind of pick your head up. You know what I mean? Yeah, very true. Very, very true. So I think it would be very interesting here to see whether we get the return um, from one of the Bet Boom players, right? Or if Malbs can keep it going. He's obviously a name that I think a, a lot of people for a little while here have said that this guy, you know, eye test wise, looks very, very good when he's comfortable within his own region um, at his own level. And that level has been growing steadily over the past couple of years, for sure. It's a case now whether he can do it on the international stage. And he did just there, certainly not against Europe or the world's best, but all the same, really, really impressive. Yeah, exactly that. And, and now, you know what? Let's turn our attention towards our final map, Mirage. This is a really interesting talking point, right? This is a map, just to run through kind of some numbers for you guys for at home. 75% win rate for the likes of M80 played eight times. 72% win rate for the likes of Bet Boom played 18 times. So both of these sides love this map. It's been a really solid part of it. For a while, this map actually was a perma ban for M80 that's now started to change. Um, and it, it is actually a map in which has become very confident for them. On the other side, this map is usually first picked by Bet Boom, but they decided to float it here. We have the knife round for you so we can continue discussing, but M80 at the moment find themselves with a four map winning streak on this map. You know, one at one time was their perma, is now actually arguably one of their best maps. It's been really good for them. They've worked hard on it and made it a strong part of their game. Oh, into the 1v1 here. Whoever hits the, the, the right click wins the knife and gets that CT side start. Soon showing a bit of love. Couple of stickers coming down. All right. What do we got, boys? Oh, there we go. Zorto see it off. So, Bat Boom get their choice of where they want to start. I'm going to assume CT side. Yeah, it would make sense. It's obviously not the craziest CT side, but I think just every pro player. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you at home? Wouldn't you start on CT side? Exactly. Why would you start T side? You know, uh, Anubis, maybe there's an argument to be made, but even then, uh, that's only really for the top 1% of the top 1%, I would say. So, you know, I think uh, it doesn't really matter too much on Mirage here, but a lot of teams, they like that CT side. It's comfortable. Uh, it's familiar. Yeah. And I don't know. It's kind of tough, isn't it? If you start on the T end and then you have a rough run and then you're going into the CT side as well, it just feels a lot harder. You have to really step your game up. 
Yeah, I think the, the word you use there is exactly that. It's the familiarity, right? It's just, you know, from going towards CS2, it, it is just one of those things where teams found a lot more favor in terms of being able to not so much dictate the tempo, but be able to respond to it in kind and, and try and put pressure on that C side. I mean, it is a, a game which has always preferred that CT side in terms of percentages. And I think that's a big thing, of course, now at the top level. Mirage, though, is where we are heading in what has been a very weird game of Counter-Strike. 13-5 map number one, Bet Boom, take away M80's pick of Anubis with ease. Then we head to Bet Boom's pick of Ancient, where M80 win it even easier, 13 to 1. So it's safe to say, heading into Mirage, I haven't got a clue what's going to happen. I don't even want to make a prediction, because this one feels all up in the air. <laughs> Who knows what we're going to get? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's a difficult call. I Honestly, I think M80... Uh, may well just be riding on a high. I think it might be a, a yeah. vibes situation, you know? Yep. Um, they really did look good after that first map. And just, yeah, when they finished, a lot of applause, a lot of let's go, boys. See, that's what we can mm. do. Great recovery, not allowing the first map to get to them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I got a bit of belief in M80. They're a yeah. plucky bunch. What is, what is it the Americans would say? I think they would say they're spunky. Yes, not a word used in the United States. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it's not. For uh, uh, there's a, yeah, less than a pound reasons. Right, <laughs> but they have they have uh, they have just really turned things around, and I think that um, they look good. Yeah. They look good. So I like the way things are panning out here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lean the way of M80 a little bit. All right, I'm sure that is uh, music to the ears. Some of the NA guys at home, they seem very happy on Twitter. Post a uh, feature there. No, Maui, Darth Mike, Paladin, the rest of them, all pretty happy. Uh, it's gone to a third. Let's see whether M80 could do them justice. Wreck for the first. Chiron going to answer back. Looking for a couple more fights. A swisher finds Zorte with the flames, the fire tickling the toes, burning them to a crisp, giving them the numbers as the bomb goes down and Slacks will double it down. But an answer back on towards Siren in this back and forth affair since sticks around the smoke. Yeah, these Julies as well. Man, they could just mow anybody down at the moment on the T side of things. Chiron, fast, fine swisher. That was one of the low HP players. It's Sin on this p250 he's got the hp and he of course is playing around the bomb just trying to work his way as far as possible it's all going to be down to wreck on the glock get the kill that might just be enough oh he stays alive somehow oh my god the crab survives to the 1v1 and buys just enough time to confirm the round m80 walking away with the first oh ladies and gents we're in for a game but there's a good one i can't guarantee that but uh we're in for one of them it is, uh, again, just a wild way to end that a pistol. Just tucking his head behind Tetris there is enough to keep him alive, buy him time. He gets the guy off the bomb, and the last man surviving just cannot find the kill in time to be able to double back and defuse himself. So, very close, very wacky. Siren, yes, it's good for his individual stats and maybe his confidence, but it isn't going to make a difference. Mr. Jump into his ladder. So just going to stay tucked there, Kyron. It is a force buy for Beppu. We got Siren on the M4, an MP9 for Chiron, and then a couple of greater pistols. Double Deagle, double, oh, Julie's, I guess. But M80, much better buy for them. Firepower's good, and they're going to slow things down. They just want to make sure they don't find their way in towards that gamble stack. It does look like confidence is at a bit of a high as well for M80. Of course, you would expect that off the back of that sort of a, a map they've just had. But the mid-round and late-round calling at a sim was something that we've really questioned off the back of uh, Anubis, and it looks considerably cleaner at the moment. Swisher. Looking for this kill will be heard with the uh, drop of the jump, but maybe that was part of his plan. Finds the entry here. Oh, it's not looking good, though. Sin goes down. Swish is low. The M4 is right around the corner. I don't like the way that this looks. Molotov not going to spread to Siren. Another Deagle kill coming round. Bomb plant being attempted desperately, and somehow Malz is going to get the bomb down, but that's all they're going to get. Bet boom, relentless. Frags left, right, and center. M80 with no answer. Force bite winning out is so important. 
And of course, with a bomb plant, and then the force by winning for Vet Boom, M80, you'd expect, are going to answer back with a force by of their own. How much they can bring to the table, I question. It might be a Tech 9 armor bite, bit of util, those sort of vibes, but essentially winning. That could really change the early part of this map. Really good stuff as well, but really poor from M80. A little bit kind of lost in transition. And just as I was calling upon the kind of the, the mid to late round, it's actually sort of molest them down to a degree. You do see a force come through for M80. They got one rifle. A Galil for Swisher. Oh, he gets tagged down to half. And a few pistols alongside it. What have they got? Well, not a good start. Nafani for one. Looking for two. Ooh, get it with the support of Magna. Yes. Now the bomb spotted as well. In a good position. Nafani, deeper Molotov. Even more control of this ramp area. Nade tickles him. But not enough. Not enough. Flash goes in. Uh, it gives the position away as well as a panicked spray from Wreck on the Tech 9. Exactly what Bet Boomer after, you know? Just gather some info, lay down the law, make them expend utility, and of course make them a bit nervous moving into this A site. So let's see, where to now? The side have plenty to work with, in all fairness. Still feels like a weird scenario where, in this 3v5, if they can't find a kill relatively early, you could even make arguments. I mean, maybe not to save, but at least for slacks to keep that galilla in play. Have something to work in the next round. The other two kind of have to die. Especially for the kill bonus carrying around the corner. One is crossing towards ladder. Sin. Gonna get his kill. Nade could see him off, should see him off, but he just about gets away in time. Good reactions. Nothing at range. Slack spots and drops. There's a chance opening up here, but time is ticking. 10 seconds, boys. That bomb will go down as well. So they can't deny that. Sin's making a lot of noise. And Slacks. As Sin baited them in, Slacks will find the kill. How are they making this round possible? On the swing through CT, Sarah will answer back. Hey, there's just absolutely no letting up in this round. The counter strike oh, is wow. everywhere. Wreck. Oh, nearly confirms it. Still looking good for Sin. But not great, you know. There's no kit for Siren. How lucky is that? He's so very low, and Sin just pre-fires around the corner to find the kill in the second round for M80. Oh, my God. Just after being reset. Oh, mate. This is absolute carnage. And it is absolutely what M80 are after. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> chaos. The chaos. I mean, it, it, honestly... It's what we want. In a game that has made zero sense, this is exactly what we want. Just continue going down the rabbit hole of insanity here. Okay, Magna is jumping on towards Shaw. Full blind, delete Swisher. For a preemptive shot, and he sticks around for more as well. Might be better for Nade and Malms will answer back. I mean, that's been the narrative, hasn't it, really? Magna is laying down the gauntlet and Malms responding in kind, and he doubles it down, in fact, with a second of his own. Beautiful work. Beautiful from him. I'm 80 in with a really clean chance at finding this. Slow encroachment. What's this a bomb site? The only thing Bet Boom have maybe got going for them is the flank from Naphany. But I mean, is it going to be in time? I don't know, Chief. I don't think so. An attempt made, unfortunately, overwhelmed by the numbers. It will just be the IGL from behind. Might be able to get one with this position. Don't see him really doing much more than that at the end of the day. He's going to confirm the location. Oh, of one. He spotted out. Decent find there. On to Sin. It's all about this Palace player at the moment, but he's got a read on that. Caught on the ladder, unfortunately. Third round in for M80. Some damage done at the end by Bet Boom. Ultimately, though, M80 looking good again. Lead starting to build. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about kind of consolations and stuff, but it is, you know, in this sort of situation where it was back and forth in terms of the force buys, 
now officially kind of losing and a bit of a consecutive round put on the board here by M80. This is a good start. And now we can say for Bet Boom, pressure kind of back on their shoulders again. They can't afford to force again in towards this one. So low buy of B250 and a 5 7 is all they've got to work with. And it's a full contact play here through ramp with one just holding a range from stairs for the elevated angle. The smoke top con. They can just walk all the way towards B and they're going to realize very quickly that nobody's home. Sin, a little chaotic, but he will get that first kill. Indeed, the B bomb site, easy pickings here. Might be able to drop this Mac 10 at the end of the day. M80 on for another. There's Bet Boom. Struggle. In the same way they struggled on Ancient, they are yet to get a rifle round off the ground in uh, a clean map and a half. That's a team kill from the USP as well. What's going on? <laughs> Chiron's got two. So it would actually be a three on three right now. Oh my goodness. The mob spray is a little rough. That one's cleaner. M82 get it. Still losing a couple, you know, is, is pretty decent. Both of them going on the same player as well. That's a lot of cash built. It's true. It's true. But one of those rounds where we're not really looking all too much to come from it. A couple of kills you're taking. The team kill, kind of funny. But, you know, thankfully, I guess it's not a full rifle round with a big investment and all the rest. We don't have to sit here and kind of... You know, slam them a little bit for, for the mistakes. We can say, ah, here's what it is. We should mid him. This is a big call. And Sin, well, after call from the grave, as he gets caught, slacks the radius answers back, jumping out on towards the beast side. The flak is all oh, beautiful. And Malb's just that bit better. Double from him. Ooh. But it's still a two versus two. Sorte, risky move across the window. Bomb going to go down here. Planted for short, interestingly enough. I think it's just kind of a, a desperate plant. Swisher can work with the smoke that came in from the CT side, though. To get himself into a decent post-plant position. Timing going to be everything on this one. He's not quite around the corner. Nafany drops him all down to Slacks. Immediate tap onto the bomb. Yeah, he can't all quite get in. And I don't think he realizes oh, no. he's spotted a player. That's a gun barrel. It does actually get him off of it, but ah, can't get the kill. Can't get round. And indeed, Bet Boom will finally get themselves on the board in, uh, yeah, a long, long time. Trying to do some maths here. Uh, 19 rounds yeah. it takes them to get a rifle on the board. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It is, uh, it is crazy as well that in that particular scenario, it's actually just the post plant that lets them down. It's, you know, in towards apartments. I don't know whether that's a miscom. You know, plant for sure, but the player playing through abs. I don't know whether he thought they were planting for abs, which I would have expected as you just popped out from that position. I don't know why they went for a short play. And, you know, they plant for short, and then Swisher dies going to clear it because they assume somebody's there. It's a, it's a weird one. I, I feel like that was very much cluttered comms. I let M80 down there. And bet boom. Lifeline giving their way as well. Bye. We'll be back here for M80, a reinvestment. But Sin can only bring a Tech 9 to the party. Slacks is his favorite AWP, and 8Ks alongside it should be enough. You'd hope. Big nade down below. Oh, clean find from Malbs. What an open. What an open. Let's see if they can keep it rolling here. Oh, the nade damage is massive onto Sin. He's got to be careful not to go down here. The nade's raining in somehow. He manages to survive, but it's baited Zorte into the fight. And he will fall. Advantage, M80. Where do they go from here? Well, the wrong way, apparently, because they're walking in towards Chiron. And, and Siren's got such an insane flank here. They might not expect it on this timing. Nafani backside. You are the last talisman towards this site. What have you got for us? Well, a kill. Not a bad start. And he's trying to avoid the potential of an AWP player in towards theirs. He can't do that. But the MP9, we spoke about this flank, and it pops up. Uh-oh. Slacks all alone with it all to do. 1v2 and all pulled out for him to try and pull off some magic. What have you got? First shot. Missed. Second shot. Getting pressured upon here and cleaned out by the USPS. Good round for Bet Boom, a chaotic one, and it all comes down to that flank through underpass.
Yeah, mental. Absolutely mental. But the Counter-Strike remains alive here. And this game just keeps on delivering. It is a brawl. Timeout coming in. Def getting vocal. As they try and work it out, what's been working, how a bet boom wanting to approach things. It's a tough round to stomach here because they have no money. Not much they can do. It'll be 4-4 before they can respond. Ah, uh, so the conversation to be had, but yeah, like you said, right? No buy here. So unfortunately for Def, he'll have to watch this round probably not amount to all too much. That boom, responding in kind and pretty effectively, at least we're getting a competitive map. It's been a bit of a rarity in this series as we come to our third, but we said on paper that this is the best opportunity to have a real kind of brawl, a real back and forth. And I mean, that is exactly what we are getting. Siren. Nade in hand. If you threw it now, he'd do a hell of a lot of damage. He might have just spotted the pixel. Good little chunk there. Good information as well off the sound cue. M80, if they get a bomb plant, that'd be lovely, but it, it does feel unlikely. Siren. Nice find. Need to keep it rolling here. Got Chiron in for support. Uh, close to brute forcing a plant, but not quite. Malbs, of course. Good for one. That's all she wrote for that round, though. Bet boom, evening things up quickly. This is what we were waiting for. Timeout has come round, of course, in the round prior. So M80, we're assuming, have got big plans for this one. So, yeah, like you said, this big gun round needs to really deliver quite emphatically. What have you got for us? What's your M80? Not a huge amount in terms of the pockets. No orb. Double Galil. They are prioritizing that utility, which I can respect. It's something that's been very, very key to giving them M80 space on towards sites. It's basically the, one of the main things that's facilitated them a lot of this space when it comes towards the bomb plants too. It's just the post plants that have primarily been letting them down. Molotov will come towards under. He'll slow Sin down. Now Swisher starts to make a move through short. He has the support of Malbs as well. This is good mid control being taken for a major. This has been a given. Most rounds, Zorta spots one. A little late on the shot, though, but that's a tough angle. The back away from M80 reduces the game back to the neutral. It really is a tense match here. You know, there's, there's a lot of yeah. high octane moments, but also. Quite a bit of slowdown, quite a bit of, ooh, I don't know if we want to go for this, you know, it's it's not working percentage-wise. Everybody playing very disciplined until it does indeed pop off. Daphne, up close here, could be big, traded instantly though. And that will cause the burst here on towards the A-bomb site, straight into the nade. Not looking good. There's still two remaining on the site itself, rotation coming round from Zorte in time. Pressure now from short as well, that'll be smoked off. But a difficult run into the site itself. Yeah, rotation's all too strong. Just Malbs that remains, and he is swiped out from the side. Bet Boom, take the lead. And for Bet Boom as well, this is really important. Tail end of this first half as well. Picking up form, making sure they can lock in or try to lock in this CT side. From that kind of back and forth, since we've seen Bet Boom claim a lead and claim a little bit of consistency, this is where everything's gone in their favor. You can see Def getting vocal once again. He knows how important this early to mid part of this first half is. And it, it's already starting to get a little dicey. Yesterday, a one round lead for Bet Boom, but it's just how important it can be. Looking a little further in. Getting proactive. Everybody keenly listening in here as well. They know if they can make this, at the very least, a tie game in this first half, we're working with something. If they go in at a deficit, especially the deficit that's you know on the card here, potentially for Bet Boom. I mean, with them having the opportunity to go 8-4, that could start to be the beginning of the end. Look a little bit similar 
to what we saw on Anubis. Two out of three timeouts called by Death already, though. He knows how important this is. Not expecting too much out from this. We do have something... Whoa, a bit faster. Yeah, and Siren panics ever so slightly as he sees the T's coming over the top. They'll all remain alive, at least for the time being. Swisher runs out of ammunition at the worst possible time. He might have had a flanking frag there. Not the case, unfortunately. Slack's left alone to do it all. Oh, no way. Oh, it's close. It is close. But he's denied at the very final hurdle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Imagine. Imagine. He guessed that third. The first two are just ridiculous. Hope we can see this again, man. They were quick. That was a scrappy round of Counter-Strike. And much, much closer than it should have been. Slacks his double. Unfortunately for him, not good enough. Six to four. M80, a buyout. And potentially could be their last of the half. The last true full buy. They can't once again get a bomb plant. Slacks doesn't take a shot. And that maybe get him in the kill. Sin will be tagged up at range. And Kyron going to keep going close here. I don't think Sin realizes how precarious his position he's in. He could get caught on the rotation away, but it just about get away in time. Slacks, clean find. Afani. Oh, yeah. They were ready for his aggression, man. It, it's super, super common. 5v3 in favor of M80. Could be a big round here. They have to convert it. Looks to be an A hit. Zorte's position could be known, but he responds and finds Malb's quick flick. Meanwhile, Chiron. Oh no, drops in front of Sin, who makes a meal of it, but no response was there. It's Siren in from Dark that could do the damage. Finds two, is it enough? Not quite sure here, Zorte. Two to find low HP. You don't fancy his chances. He's going to be heard. He's just barreling on in, not wasting any time at all. The wall bang lands on to Wreck. And he's got a read. He's got an idea. It's stairs. It's jungle. It's con. It's that side of the site. It absolutely has to be with a plant like this. Up through stairs goes Sin. It's risky, but it pays off. And M80 move within one. My God, that was so close. So close. And he had that right idea as well when he's holding stairs, but Sin just doesn't peek until he hears some sort of noise. Knows that with the AWP as well, that he basically has the advantage if he plays pace, and, and that's exactly what happens. But yeah, like you said, that was an inherent risk, though. That was a chance that it could have gone a little south. It doesn't. Not the end of the world. Oh, let me boost it up. And A comes over. It does a good about a chunk damage. Final round of the half. M80, get a 6 all. That's okay. It's, it, it's feasible. It's workable. It has to be said, if even if Bethlehem gets 7-5, to five, you've got to give them, you know, first of all, a lot of credit for how they've been playing, but also maybe a little cause for concern because of these pistols. Sin, great shot. Magnages just overplays his cards there, and he'll get caught. Speedy move here from M80, getting some short control. And they are indeed just holding W, like Def said, like Sin says. Oh my goodness, two quick kills coming around. And that might just be all that is needed here for this round. Nafany, great angle from him, but Slacks on the orb deals with him. Zorte alone again. Flashed off, Cross comes in. He's got a good idea of one or two, right? But all four, I doubt it. Another flash. Ineffective, but it's just going to slow him down, isn't it, really? Sin's on the backside... Kinda. Okay, he's not going to dedicate to moving in there. Not going to be needed as Wreck finds the final frag of the first half. And what better way for it to end after the first half? 6-2-6, six, six, all even. They have to break it apart in the second half.
Hello everybody, welcome back around. We are looking into the second half of this third and final map. Pretty explosive series. We figured, to be honest, it might have been over quickly, you know, and, and maybe we weren't the only ones out there that thought that. In all fairness, Bet Boom had a very clean first map, stole it away from M80, but M80, what an answer. What an answer it was, and now we move on to Mirage, and you can't split them. This pistol might do a good job of that. Looks to be a B burst from Bet Boom. Oh, hang on. Spotted. Bart's in. Stepping up close and stepping up and away, which is doing enough just to buy some time. It's Malbs who does all the damage, though. Four kills, and he made that five. Malbs has walked away with a nice little sneaky ace there. Sin was baiting all the attention, and Malbs tapping heads. An ace for him. Swisher got an ace on the jewelies to start off the day. My oh my, M80, love a pistol round. Certainly looks that way, sir. Certainly does look that way. Oh my goodness. We'll see here what Bet Boom can do to answer. They've actually looked pretty good in the uh, sort of secondary rounds, the mm. follow up rounds, as it were. So I'm curious if they've got anything in the back pocket for this one. Definitely going to need something. Tech pause. I saw a water bottle being handed over. Yeah. Is it a water break? It's like the Qatar World Cup. You know what I mean? I don't, you don't actually I have watch no football. I have no idea. So what that, you mean. That, yeah, you don't watch football. Yeah. I, you know, I've been. I mean, watching, with the British uh, classic there, mate, where you say something. Yeah, British classic. You know what I mean? Afterwards, like. Well, I was looking at it. <laughs> well, I was watching an American team, like, they'll understand either. Uh, but. I th I'm, I'm going to assume it's war break. Everyone's got the headphones on and stuff. There you go. Nice and quick. Nice and easy. Yeah. Back to business. 7 6 M80. Of course, them important getting that pistol around, giving them a little bit of an advantage. Bet boom, like you said, they love these forces. They're gonna go for it, and they've had pretty good success. And it might be another quick one here. But this time they're gonna be met with a Molotov. Or sin up close on the MP9. They're bursting in, but they're not ready for him. He takes two. He drops back. That's so well played. It allows his teammates to come into the fray. He does get traded out, but surely the defense, yeah, is going to be strong enough from here now that Slax is in the mixture. Daphne on the Tech 9, down he goes, and that will be number 8 for M80. Looking very good, shutting down the force by before it really got going. Making sure that one is, uh, well, no real question mark for us, right? No real conversation to be had flying into the fights, into the MP9. A consolation kill. You take it, but... Eight to six. Because that was a force as well. We're losing it in the fashion that they did for Bet Boom. No bomb plant or anything of the sort. Just that one solo kill. Not going to give them anything here. So M80 going to take a real chunk of a lead early. And on this CT side, that's very, very important. Crab tactic here in the underpass. A personal favorite. Yeah. Behind it, you know. Together we are strong. Swisher going to take out Naphany. And well, yeah, this looks like a pretty deadly setup now, doesn't it? There's a couple of them in con there. Swisher had the top middle. Not a chance. Doesn't work. Eboom getting shut down at every venture, man. This is a great start for M80 here. It is. It is everything they're trying at the moment. Is uh, it's coming up trumps. No, nothing is working for the side. M80 looked like the hopefully more conclusive roster. And maybe as well now, you have kind of a bit of a, a 2020 vision, bird's eye view about the whole thing. We can kind of just say, well, that map number one was a hiccup. They weren't really, you know, awake. Obviously, they traveled quite a long way. And they were, I think, you know, we, we kind of saw it when we were speaking to Def as well, right? Him saying... They were playing a qualifier all the way up until the day before they flew. So they've had, you know, very little time to kind of prepare themselves for this land environment. But after they've uh, shook off a bit of the land rust, they're looking pretty damn good. Nothing really going to get caught. No one towards B is a wild decision, though. He's actually given them the ability to just jump out on the side. They're playing full retake now. Slacks. What's he going to get done here? Not much. It's Sin, the next one up to bat. 
Oh my goodness, this is messy. This is very messy. And Sin taken on the edge of the smoke. Down to just two. Bomb goes down. Malbs. Ooh, he's not quick enough. He's not available enough for that final frag. It will be wreck. And I think he has just been heard with a bullet landing there. A little squish into the flesh. So the hunt is on for him. And down he will go. Magno Jez gets the catch. Bet boom. On the board with the rifle. So here we go. The game certainly still on. Bet boom. Looking good in that sense. I mean, it was the bonus, right? Bit of a risky move from M80, but they kind of have to down the middle. They should be able to put up a pretty good buy here. It's all about the response from that M80 side of things. I would predict they're going to go for something very straightforward. Maybe down middle. Yeah, it's, it's quite a common response here if that is indeed what they're going for. Maybe a crunch fire short as well with two players out on towards B, two towards mid. But like... I don't know. I think Bet Boom will be ready for a move like this. You can see Nafani definitely ready now that he spotted that shadow. Yeah, all too easy, all too predictable. Good response from Wreck, though. In through back, eh? but he gets caught. He actually gets spammed through ticket. Falls to the hands of Siren. He deletes him. Slacks has an opportunity, but I don't think he at least heard. Jumping on towards stairs. Doesn't matter, though. Gonna get his. Looks for a second as well. Around that corner, we better have a Molotov, and now he knows the stairs control is taken, but Sin can't respond to it, at least effectively. 1v2, and we call upon Slacks again. He pulled it down to 1v1 last time with a lovely warbang. What has he got? I'm ticking away. Nothing being shown here from Bet Boom. Have to get this one drop. Heard. The round may be secured off the back of it. He doesn't have a kit, so there's not really much that he can do with this smoke. He's going to tap onto the bomb, try and draw them out. But they are set up and very ready for him to move in from CT there. Brilliantly played in the end by Bet Boom. Very well disciplined, which is great to see. It started off as a very fast, aggressive round. You can sometimes see players fall into the trap of just keeping the fights coming, you know, keeping the oh, yeah. peaks coming, but they do well to uh, tone it down when it's needed. Oh, man, we've got a game on our hands here, man. Absolutely. At the moment, this is a really good little response out of Bet Boom and forcing M80s to use their third and final tack pause. Now, if this was to go to overtime, they would get one more. This is the last time we are going to see Def get on the mic. That itself is, uh, yeah, it might be a little damning. Then uh, all the pressure gets put onto the shoulders of Sin. Probably a little bit of a swisher as well. Uh, an important part of the leadership project of this M80 side. He's obviously been very crucial to them since this roster got put together. Yeah, that 9-8 M80 clinging onto a lead, but most likely expected to lose it here in round number 18. Quad stack towards B is the play. I think that five is... Sin will go and join them. Drops a bit of U-Tilt, so the ruse that there's a bit of presence towards A, but it's not going to be the case. And Bet Boom are falling for it. They're flying out. No one's here. And that'll be that. Nice little setups, nice little boosts over towards yeah, B. I'm, I like the idea. Not going to get any use. <laughs> yeah. Bring it into your, into your matchmaking, yeah, into yeah, your well, premieres. Hopefully, uh, well, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter in premiere, does it? Yeah. To be honest, so. what you do... There'll be some guy spinning around and <laughs> shooting you through a wall anyway. The Beyblade will come through and yeah. there's nothing you can do really. Or uh, just get double dinged, wall banged. You're like, all right, sound. Nice. Of it. New profile? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bet player has yet to set up their profile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder love, why. Love to <laughs> All right. M80 moving around, trying to do a bit of damage here, but not going to be allowed. Bet Boom mowing them down. M80 have quickly got to find themselves again. It started off very well into the second half, but uh, yeah, the T side's taken over. Yeah. And considering as well that it, it's slightly interesting in the sense that Def called for his final tack pause before a no buy, right? You'd assume in, in, in the majority of cases, a lot of teams like to call them prior to the buy. You know, to essentially kind of make a plan out of spawn and, uh, you know, plan B and C if things go south, right? But they call for a pause prior to a round with they're kind of guaranteed to lose anyway. 
It's a really interesting decision, but I guess also for Def, it's uh, partly about the vibes in the team too. Can he help them out? And so far, so good. Malps finds the first naff and he gets caught. Util in hand and the Util really just didn't do enough to even really warrant M80 being scared. Malps might get tested again. Another lurking in the smoke. Who spot two? Oh my God. Well, it's going to be the wreck in fact. Oh, Magno Jazz through the smoke, deleted. Oh my goodness, what is going on? This kills all <laughs> over. Bet Boom trying to walk their way out, I guess, uh, towards that A site and just get absolutely shut down. Some of these rounds, man, are just crazy. They are, man. <laughs> like, half of them don't make sense, and that's what I love. And they're so difficult to break down. Zolta, he's trying to save now as well. And, and again, you know, are you even given the luxury here? He's kind of playing. One of the more common angles to save from, but he got 40 seconds to kill. Yeah, he's, he's surely going to get checked. So much time. And it's not that M80 have a lot of money to work with, which they don't, but they can afford a couple of rifles lost in the hunt to save for this AWP or to find this saving AWP. Rex got the right idea. He's made a bit of noise as well, jumping up onto the ledge. They are starting to make a little move. You can kind of see. Slax is holding free. He doesn't want to lose his orb. Yeah, this last five seconds, they are actually going to give him the luxury. Yeah. I thought maybe they'd have a look in. Because it's the only place they don't check. That's all to keep out of the orb. Okay. Slow down a little. Mm. Towards the end there. But the replays will remind us that it was uh, quite intense. Really, really great stuff from M80, hitting that double digits first. Oh man, all to play for here. At the tail end of the day, M80. Good clean round. We're going to have to replicate it somehow. And a very simple B face here from Bet Boom. Down below, try and get some pressure going. But the main prong of the attack might be the B-site itself. Well, well. Magna just waiting behind a smoke. Bomb wants to go towards B, and it you know, at the moment would be the right decision. Only one man here seen anchoring alone. He's all he got is a smoke and a flash to the eye. They haven't committed the bomb yet, but it's very much in that direction. It does feel like they're setting up for a split. One through short and one to hold rotations through window, potentially. Sin, still not spotting anything just yet. Ooh. He's going to get caught by a contact play. Smart from Bet Boom. Really unorthodox yeah, really. and really is risky, but the window was there. You know, he laid down some utility. I think they might have heard him stepping a bit towards the short area. And unfortunately for M80, not really much that they could do from here. They're going to eco... Uh, sorry, they're going to save and take their weapons into the next round. Yeah. Same logic as ecoing, I suppose, but uh, <laughs> boom, we'll immediately even things up. You have to as well. I think it's just not enough uh, built up long term to basically facilitate even giving this a go. A contact play, like you said, just a, a little bit of a different sort of play out of bet boom where they are early to mid round very slow. And they just hope they can find a fight, and they do, and they, and they get it perfect. I mean, it's one of those things that a contact play which fails looks a little dumb at times, right? And it makes you uh, kind of question, you know, what, you know, why didn't they throw a Utah? But the contact play that works, you you got to give them credit. Part of it is a bit of fortune, a bit of favor. It just gives them, you know, smoke thrown towards short. Off the back of that, they know that. Well, if they pop on towards this guy anyway, there's going to be no smoke to deny him, kind of stopping them. Bet Boom going to call for a Sama of their own. Bring Railway, the coach, into the conversation. And if that is right, insane. Their first time out. But I guess it probably would be right. That's what he called all three of his. And of course, they can use them as well. So hasn't been a need for Railway to enter the fray. nafri has been doing most of the work himself in terms of the leadership department. But a 10 all, a very important time to take a breather if you are Bet Boom, who have just made this a real possibility. Oh. 
Replay uh, cut off a little bit, but Magno Jez <laughs> got the kill. Um, before, before, well, just after it cut off, I suppose. Zorte will open up. Immediate aggression. M80 have had a big part of their defense taken away. Slax is not at the top end of the scoreboard, but 16 kills on that AWP in particular. He's been having quite the effect. Sin will move around to retrieve the AWP, but they have to back off and lick their wounds here. All goes quiet. What right idea here, Zorte. A swisher. At the moment, not facing himself. As the molly comes over, he crosses. That's perfect timing. A2. Swisher. Really, really great little one two punch. One kill and a trade from Swisher. That round, early doors have done really well for him. Molotov comes over as he crosses. Nade breaks the smoke to give a potential of a kill. And he gets a trade too, but it still is a three versus three. 45 seconds left on the clock. This is such a risky move. Contacting up short, man. So many different angles where you could be attacked from, but no one on M80 is taking the peak. Oh, nearly for Swisher, but he just misses the timing on it. I believe he had a little look towards short there. Doesn't come his way. Sin, meanwhile, holding for the B push, but it's not going to be apps first. Oh, maybe it is. Goodness me. That's a risky, risky peak. Two Molotovs in, still... Sin, he sticks around to try and find this first frag on what is now a retake. Do they want to go for this, though? He's slowly backing away. Smoke comes in, and the call might just be to save with no opportunity presenting itself. No peaks round from Betboom. What is the move? They're half and half, but they're going in. Quick trade outside of window. Wreck got to do some heavy lifting here on this AK as he will be the vanguard in towards this B bomb site. Chiron finds good timing for a swing, leaving it all down to Sin, who does not want anything more to do with this one. 11 rounds for Bet Boom. Oh, well, Bet Boom. Tail end of the game. Coming alive and making this a conversation. I mean, Sin saving the orb, I guess, is a, a, a silver lining and a positive. It's just the fact that there's not a lot left in there. I mean, what, one gun round left to work with. And it started off so well. I thought that Swisher's antics at the start where he basically kind of gives them two kills. And if it was his own work, might have been enough. But Bepoom just don't panic in that situation. They respond well. Bring it back to a three versus three. And just play the age-old kind of, you know, trades benefit the T side type vibe. And that's what we've got. A buy-in play to M80. Now or never. This is all chips to the middle of the felt. Lose this. And Bepoom find themselves with a 12th in this round and probably a pretty lackluster buy out of M80 to hunt for their 13th. Now and ever, boys, what have you got? Pretty simple. They execute over the top, it looks like. They will go ahead of the smokes here, try and find that first frag. It's a trading of damage, but not much else. Magno Jez, oh, he's going to go through the smoke. Are you kidding? And this is uh, Carnage now out on the A-bomb site. Sin is around, trying to secure two... He's robbed of the opportunity. Two versus two. The kills go back and forth and back and forth. And now the bomb will pull away. What is the move here? It looks like they want to hit towards that B bomb site. Swisher, he's got a little idea, a little inkling. Oh, and he goes at the perfect time. He might just be able to get ahead of them here, even with the walk up through the underpass. How is the timing going to work, though? Is he going to run into them? Are they going to run past him? He hears them coming, and he's playing it safe. Siren goes in for a look, but he still goes down. It's Zorte for the round, and Swisher spams him out. Oh, my goodness. This guy has got the brains. Two of the biggest kills of the game so far. Oh, my God. That is so important. A lifeline extended off the back of... A bit of brilliance at the tail end. A weird round as well. Pushing the smoke and not clearing uh, Balg. Already feels a little weird. And these kind of back and forth moments for Swisher. Head in the swivel. The 180 is a beaut. And like you said, right? Such a smart guy. Such an important kill. Again, another time I'll call it at 11 all. And it is a buy to work with. Both ways. But neither side of stability. In terms of the long-term econ, the funds are running a little dry, and that is something leaving us on edge just a tad. 
This feels like a massive swing round. Win this, and it could be a two for one special. It could mean taking the map 13 to 11 in itself. It would be ridiculous. All for Slacks. One for Zorta as well. A little from Angler Jez for a very important player. He's put on a bit of a lesser weapon. A sacrifice being made. He's maybe not having the hottest performance here. A mirage. Oh, we're executing A again. We're executing A again, maybe. Mm. Yeah, a little different this time around, though. Much more forward facing, and it starts off well. Wreck puts down his own smoke to try and work around it. Swisher's got the right idea here. Oh, but he doesn't spot Naphany. He's checking different angles. Wreck, meanwhile, above the smoke or oh, the flash. Where's that come from? Oh, no. That could have been absolutely massive. He crept under not just one, but two crosshairs. 5v3, low HP bars dotted about, and surely M80 have to give this one up. I think they do. I, I think they have to save it. They cannot afford the risk. They cannot afford the chance of losing these weapons. Because it's basically all they're going to have heading in towards what is potentially the final round. Oh, man. How things are looking at the moment, it is not great. This could be Bat Boom just stealing away the map, the victory at the tail end, the final hurdle. It's been an insane series of, for kind of most of the wrong reasons. But this third map has delivered. It got exactly what we wanted, competitive from both sides, really delving deep into the strap book. But it does feel like at the tail end here. And it might have slipped away. Nafani, it's a, it's a crazy call to just go A again, right? Off the back of it, kind of basically not working last time, but maybe that's part of the genius. If it fails once, surely they're unexpected again. Yeah, I mean, you know, he goes back in for an A hit, um, but it's, it's slightly different. You know, not as fully fledged execute. It was just the uh, con smoke and a, and a flash. So I think what happens a little bit subconsciously is like you as a CT see that coming in and you're like, oh, it's an A hit again. I know what they did last time. So I can kind of play a bit similar. That was successful for me. And Naphany is trying to call around that. So and that's obviously yeah. the mind games, you know, maybe M80 have done that in their heads and said, yeah, I know, play it similar because it's an A execute again. Or maybe they're like, oh, it's slightly different. I've got to change something up, you know, and you get a little uh, uh, panicked, a little Whoa, rigid. Slack's going to take the tag. That's kind of mental to me. It looked like a flick upwards, you know, but somehow it's <laughs> landed in the leg. And he is looking for this kill. Not going to get the opportunity, though. Yeah, and just as he was tempted to creep around is when they fall away. It does look like they want to hit A again. And, you know, again, it's the right call. Wreck and an MP9 is all they've got here. Mitzvah are going to come through from Nafani. Four of them grouping up through A as Wreck playing in and around Balk. Oh my god, this could be itself. Slacks might find a kill here. Nafani's starting to move towards mid. Pop action come over. Slack's going to try and avoid it. Oh no! Turns away, tries to flick back, and it cost him his life. I mean, he was out in the open, dog. He was yeah. screwed for sure. Wreck. Oh, still alive. Just being a distraction here. Still a four versus three in favor of Bet Boom. The nade going in. Could finish. It does indeed. Sin, however, coming round the corner. Swisher. One HP to play with. Sin, they know vaguely where he's at, but he has crept a little under the radar. They'll cross in towards the site. Sin gets some decent damage. Whoa, he's getting giddy here. He's getting confident. Nade into the smoke. It goes down. That might just be it. Swisher has to somehow clutch this. 1v3, 1 HP. They know he's stairs with the spam attempts. And surely now, Bet Boom, do not mess this up. He's trying his best. Nothing coming off. Wide swing somehow survives that, but... <laughs> Yeah, they know exactly where he is. They can just play around the time and eventually he gets dropped. 13-11, 2-1 and heartbreak for M80. What a third map and what a series out from both those teams. You really have to do give credit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the first maps, the first two maps were um, just they were pretty rough, right? Neither side really on the losing side was able to show anything. There was no conversation to be had. It was a very weird sort of back and forth 
that map three delivered everything that we want in the series. Everything that we had to see out of Bet Boom, had to see out of M80, was delivered on Mirage in actually a really nice way. We got to see all the highlights, all the beautiful moments of what makes kind of this series, especially that map three, so interesting. But at the tail end, M80 just let it slip. You know, broken econ, broken mentality as well as Nathalie calls for three back to back to back A pops, and all three of them work. M80. It felt like maybe he's overthought the process a little bit, and that's what let them down. Entirely possible, sir. Entirely possible. But again, as we've talked about, those types of moments, those types of games, you cannot practice for. You have to live it, and you have to hope it works out for you. They just get slightly unlucky in the end, take their eye off the ball, unfortunately, and, and it does cost them. But I think... After that first map especially, they really turned things around. They really exceeded expectations and showed us what they are capable of, you know? It is a case now, I think, of, of just taking the, the lessons learned there and indeed in the lower bracket, but applying them to your follow-up games and, and hopefully, yeah, battling for a spot in playoffs. Yeah, exactly that. You know, for... for uh, Beppe was really important. I mean, he said that I'll take on Vitality, which would be pretty damn cool. An interesting game. Definitely, uh, once again, sort of one-sided. But we did see earlier there is gaps in that Vitality armor. So we'll have to wait and see how things pan out. Of course, Bet Boom will then take on Shark. Uh, sorry, M80 will take on Sharks, which is a bit of a slightly more regional, regional may I say, derby. So, yeah, you know, it's one of those for me where um, I think M80 will be kicking themselves with how that tail end of the map went. But fundamentally speaking, that was a good map out of them. Despite losing, we did see a lot of the real, you know, good moments. Slack looked pretty uh, crisp on the orb. We saw Malb stepping up in a big way. Sin had some really important calls, which gave them a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of space, right? He extended the lifeline for the side, but in the end, it wasn't good enough. Yeah, uh, listen, man, it, it's tough. When you've got Malbs looking that good, I think that you really do have to do something with that. You know what I mean? 22 sure. to 17 for him. Um, you really do have to be able to take it um, when you have sort of your star player playing up to standards. And yeah. it's tough. You can't really point any fingers like individually necessarily, but there are little bits missing. And, and I think that there is uh, work to do in that department. Again, still looking very, very good. And I think... Um, for me, playing a lot better than I was expecting in in places, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's some excuses you can make for M80 in other ways, a map and a series that they potentially should have been taking there. To be honest, I believe we do have an interview from the winning side of things as well, so we will uh, get into that shortly. Um, of course, there is a little bit of... Okay, there you go. The, the phone is ringing, okay. dude, so you know uh, <laughs> hello, hello. the interview is ready. We've got Naphany here joining us, um, so thank you very much for your time, sir. And uh, just to kind of highlight, as we have been a little bit, it may well have been fixed, but there's a slight delay on the questions and whatnot. So, uh, you know, apologies for that, but we'll just have to work around it. Um, with the way that that series has gone down for you guys, I'd like you to talk me through that second map, ultimately, Naphany. Um, what happens there for you guys, you know, because you started very well and then just checked out. Was it they were playing a way you didn't expect or potentially just the fact that you couldn't get off the ground? I would say it's more about the experience because it uh, seems like we have like a lot of good situations while ancient and uh, we just didn't realize it. And uh, I mean, that's it. It, it, it was not like 13-1, in my opinion, if we will talk not about the score, but about the game, because we had like a lot of, a lot of good situations for T side, but we just uh, throw it because of like different reasons. It happens, dude. It happens. I, I wanted to kind of uh, ask you about kind of the introduction of kind of Magnages to, to the roster, right? Being with you guys now for a month, obviously a monster prospect from the region. Very, very talented guy. A lot of people have been keeping their eyes on him. What's it been like working with him? What's it been like, you know, adding him to the team and, and how things have been, have been looking for Bet Boom since he's come in? Uh, first of all, uh, Magnus, Chess, it's more about not only about firepower, but it's also about like communication because this guy have really strong uh, communication skills, and uh, that's what we really need uh, in previous lineup. And uh, it wasn't like Danis' fault or something. It it was like. Uh, our fault in general, because, uh, uh, for example, 
if you have like me, I, I can like call a lot, but I can't uh, call like uh, like in different positions when I'm at A, for example, I can't call, call it B. So we, we just needed a guy who can uh, did it and he did it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair enough. He's definitely uh, delivering in places. We're pretty excited as, you know, sort of tier two guys through and through to see what uh, he's able to do. Um, tell me about M80 as an opponent then. What were you guys thinking coming into this series and how did they match up to those expectations? Actually, it was pretty hard to prepare for them because they could pick versus us a lot of different maps. So we wasn't surprised about Anubis because we was like, they can pick whatever they want. And it uh, seems like it's pretty comfortable opponent for us, but uh, they have really good uh, like individual skills in team. And also we need to mention that, uh, for example, Sin, a uh, pretty young in-game leader, he didn't have a lot of experience yet, but uh, he really promising in my opinion. And uh, I would say in like maybe one, maybe two years, he will be like really, really strong in-game leader. But for now, I guess they just need a bit more experience as a team, I would say. But again, it's uh, I'm, I'm not saying that like we are really experienced team. It seems like we both our teams uh, just have same uh, problems, in my opinion. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, final question from me as well. Uh, what's the vibes coming into to EPL looking like? Uh, obviously, you know, Pro League, it's quite a long event. It's one of those ones where it's very important in the calendar as well for you guys having a LAN early in the year. What, what, what does it mean for you guys coming in towards Pro League? And of course, you've got Vitality coming up next. What's the kind of the goals and aspirations for this event for you guys? We just want to show... Uh, our best game and uh, we will just try to do as far to try to go as far as we can and that's it love it brother he can't complain at all thank you very much for joining us mate it's a pleasure to have you on and, and best of luck going forward there we are here we go there All we right, go. Lovely there stuff. we go. The delay is funny, stuff. man. But yeah, at the same I mean, time, you know, <laughs> it still works. You still get your answers. You know, if you're exactly. here, if you're watching that, uh, yeah. you're after the answers, and there's a little bit of suspense. What is he going to say? <laughs> yeah, as we look uh, longingly into his eyes. Um, yeah, you, you're spot on. Uh, you know, really nice to hear as well. Talk about uh, talk about sin. He, you know, he's spot on, right? He's uh, you know, young IGL, not a huge amount of experience, but he speaks very highly of him. He is very promising, and I think somebody to keep an eye out for the future, considering we're in a position where there's not a lot of IGLs in the world, especially not young IGLs coming through. It's why people like Shuhei were such a you know a big drastic thing in the world of Counter Strike. Let's take a look at our MVP off the back of that series. There was a couple of different options as well, right? A couple of different people who stepped up in a really, really big way. But the aim high, US Air Force MVP for us is going to be Magnages. This kid had a really, really solid performance, but it was just the impact, right? I think that first map felt like it was one kind of quite comfortably off the back of him individually, and he really did step up across the series, showing what he's all about. Beth Boom, while, you know, a 1.08 rating doesn't look like the highest rating in the world, it was the highest on his team, and he was so important to them, just seeing off rounds. Yeah, there's certainly, you know, uh, Siren, I think, was a, a close second for me. It's very tough in a series like that when you have that second map in there, where it's 13-1, and it's just kind of a write-off. You know, so everyone's stats especially are going to be affected pretty negatively by that. But Siren wasn't really there necessarily uh, on the first map. Into the third, he did indeed pick it up and, and take the top spot, but Magna Jez was close behind him. So I think there's an argument to be made, to be fair, for both of them. Um, but Magna Jez, maybe as well being within the series, within the maps and watching it all, it felt like, and as you, you know, you touch on the rating, this is reflected in the rating a little bit, his impact was just a bit higher for me. Um, so I think that's kind of why we choose Magna Jez there over Siren. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, not bad to have in terms of 
kind of a, a debut in this tournament, being this young guy on, a, on an international land stage. He's not had a huge amount of experience playing international lands in comparison to you know a lot of the other people here. So for him, really good to see him look comfortable. That's all we ask, right? Comfortable in his roles, in his positions, in his mechanics. Let's take a look at the bracket to see where we are at in the grand scope of things. It's only day one, ladies and gents. We've had plenty of storylines, plenty of Counter-Strike action. We're only in day one. We've got three weeks of beautiful Pro League action. So we can take a look, see where we are at. Over into Group A as well. These where things panned out. And you know what? It actually quite a good day of Counter-Strike. Face Clan took down Imperial relatively cleanly. Astralis very cleanly beat Eternal Fire, which sets up that rematch that we absolutely love. Face Clans versus Astralis at the moment is a real spicy one. Fnatic upset Virtus Pro in a crazy game all the way going down to that third map as 3D Max beat Saw in a triple OT speciale. Indeed. Yes, indeed. It was uh, quite the long one there on, on the B stream side of things. But yeah, the Fnatic VP1 is the game that I think sticks out um, massively for me. Maybe Astralis Eternal Fire as well. A little easy in the end, uh, you might say, for Astralis. So that's kind of good to see because obviously I think after Chengdu, everyone's like, can they hit the same stride, hit the same form? Thus far, looking good in that uh, in that sense. Then we have the mid bracket, of course. This is where the format gets a little interesting. So you're going to have to kind of keep up um, with with how that works out. But we we have sort of something in the interim. Then there's a lower bracket or a last chance qualifier, as it were. So we're not quite in proper lower bracket just yet, but it is a yeah. lower bracket of sorts, of course, for these uh, teams there in Group A. So battling for um, solid playoff contention, as it were. Exactly, exactly that. Heading over towards a Group B as well. That's where we started our action as Team Vitality. Took down Sharks, but, you know, made to work for it, especially map number one. And of course, you've just seen Bet Boom taking down uh, M80, meaning setting up a Team Vitality versus Bet Boom game. Of course, Falcons, Mongols, Tyloo, G2. Those will be played out tomorrow. So there is, uh, we're starting to make some headway. We're getting some, uh, some storylines early doors as well. Um, and of course, with that lower bracket, it means that we do see Sharks taking on M80. Like I said, a bit, bit of a kind of a regional derby for the Americas. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully they'll have some decent experience against each other. And again, it should be a, a, a close enough game. Um, both M80 and Sharks showing us some deep capabilities uh, today yeah. that we really weren't expecting. Maybe M80 a little bit more, to be fair, but really, really solid, obviously, picking up a 13-1 there. Um, yeah, is, is very, very impressive in a LAN environment at Pro League when you've got all these teams going on. So yeah, very uh, solid stuff from those two teams. Hopefully they continue to deliver on the games. Yeah, we uh, got to give them a hell of a lot of credit. But like we said, this is only day one here of Pro League action. We've loved our time. We've had two best of threes today, of course, as we had one a little bit earlier on before we got on. Tomorrow, we'll be back, of course, again with some more B stream action. We'll be jumping on for the third and final best of three of the day. It's going to be a bit of a banger. We've got Imperial taking on Eternal Fire. So a bit of a spicy one over there. You do not want to miss it. But from myself, Neo Kai and Scriv, we're going to bid you all farewell. So thank you for joining us keeping us company on this quite crazy day of Counter-Strike. Until tomorrow, take care. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been using it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly We will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite, set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up the top and down, screaming we are, we are. Superman's kryptonite we are, we are. Blowing up dynamite Dynamite, set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up the top and down, screaming we are, we are. Superman's kryptonite Trouble day 
days, lonely nights, a lot of tears, a lot of fights, big dreams met with bigger lies, it ain't what it seems from the outside, on my downfall they pray, will I surrender or will I betray, given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins, I never complain, I'm lost up and do it, if there's a battle I'll find my way through it, if the wind blows I thank God that he blew it, cause what is a blessing depends how you view it, the fruits of my labor are in abundance, indispensable I'm not redundant, incomprehensible the way I've done it, when the struggle pushes me out, I'll shove it, I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous dynamite 